And welcome back to the break desk here in North Cyprus. Ali Najad alongside Brian Rass taking over the torch from Henry Kilbane and Randy Liu as we continue to bring you day one coverage of the first of several short deck events which will be rounding out our Triton Super High Roller Series. And Brian, today, 30K short deck Annie. We keep it a little business casual, obviously, as we ratchet our way up uh, through the buy-ins. And this is where the Far Eastern contingent tends to come in and do its damage. Obviously, the game tremendously popular in Macau, where Paul Fua, Richard Young and company popularized it. And a lot of the Americans got wind, came in, were playing tremendously big cash games. And that's when you were first exposed to the game, Brian. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I heard of short deck years ago. I, I never really played. Like, as somebody who plays all games, I mean, short deck hasn't really made its way to the American mixed game streets. Obviously, having a different number of cards in the deck being one of the biggest factors hampering it. But heard of the game, and my basic, biggest exposure has been here at Triton. Um, and since Triton, I actually did play the, I got third in the WSOP 10K, which was fun. Um, and I've played a couple tournaments. It's a beautiful game. It's fun. It's different. You know, we've been doing all No Limit Hold'em up till now. Um, but now I think the viewers at home are in store for a special treat. Absolutely. Don't you, Ali? Deuces, threes, fours, and fives all stripped out of the deck. The aces can play on the bottom end like they do in a wheel as a five. Uh, we'll get to the uh, leaderboard and the two feature tables that we've got momentarily. But... Uh, the other thing that I wanted to kind of talk to you about is the amount of computing power that's gone into long deck, into No Limit Hold'em. And these super high roller pros clearly very heavily invested in that as they look to get very technical. How much of that has made its way to short deck? My understanding is, is that it has as well. And because you're taking out 16 cards, it's actually a, a simpler game where, you know, the, the computations can be arrived at more accurately, more precisely, and quicker. So, I mean... It's a beautiful game, but from that perspective, yeah, there's there's still work that's been done. Guys have put in work and have been studying solvers with it. So, certainly. But so look for some. I, I stuff. have not. I have not been exposed to, to any, but that's my understanding. Having yeah. you know, talk to people. Ras is playing it close to the vest, guys. Don't buy it. Five thousand, ten thousand <laughs> are the blinds, and uh, as you know, it's a double ante. Uh, I should say 5,000, 10,000. It's, it's the antis. It's a double ante on the button, a single ante through the rest of the field. And let's take a quick peek here at our two featured tables. We've got Phil Ivy is there. And uh, that's probably the foremost from the uh, west side. And then on the east over here, we have uh, Tom Dwan. So clearly some names to watch from the western contingent as they look to sprinkle their way into the short deck streets. Here is a look at the chip counts at that first of our two featured tables. Looks like Webster has done very well for himself. 582,000 in front of him here in the early going. And Rui Kao, who didn't play any of the long deck events, here to do his work in short deck. Ivy and Badziakuski neck and neck. And then Waikin Yong rounding things out with just 100K. And the bullets also a concept that is unique to short deck rest. Yeah, sometimes also referred to as lamners, but essentially it divides your stack up into, you know, equal sections. And, and you only have to put the one section on at first. I believe you get two lamners behind, is it two? That's right. Yep, so essentially, you know, if you start with 300K, only 100K of it's on the table. The others are represented by your two lamners, and it's at your discretion uh, whether or not you want to put those on. Obviously, if you bust your original stack you do have to put it on at least one more at any point between hands you can add on and i believe at the end of the rebuy period usually you everybody then has to put on all their yeah. laminars you can't just hold the laminar indefinitely all the chips will be on the table yep. at that point in time we're certainly far removed from that moment as you see and Bill the app Ivy. actually shows you how many laminars somebody has as well it'll have their chip stack and then you know either that they have zero one or two laminars And what is this starting amount? I, I posited 100k, but that I'm not sure that that's it. Do you know? Do you know what it is? Good news. For whom? For the situation. I believe 300k would be the amount. 
Just effort and confirmation. Why can you just have starting chips or? Yep, that's fresh stack. That's not right. Got an update, Rast? Yes, sir. After some confirmation, it, it's, it is 100K. That, that was a correct guess by me, and each laminar is worth 100,000. So three 100K tranches, so to speak, for your starting stack. Bullets. And this should be a pretty exciting table here. I mean, Roy Cow, I mean, all of these players are very good short deck players and a lot of different styles. I mean, Roy Cow is splashy and aggressive and very good. Makita, slightly different style, a little more, little more solid than, say, Roy Cow. Also very good. I mean, Phil Ivey is a great short deck player. It's his favorite game to play now. Um, actually, uh, when we were in Madrid, heard Ivy say that. So Ivy called this all in, looks like, with Ace Queen. And he did, and Rui Cow has him covered. We ripped it in there for 275K with the Any just at 5K. Advantage Ivy, but as you can see here, the King 9 8 board puts Rui Cow in front. But as you can see, compared to Hold'em equities, you know, with two to come, Ivy only a three to one dog. You might be surprised, but it's so much easier to run out those those straights or hit the ace. But it doesn't come. No, not this time. Board pairs and then a clean seven on the end will cost Ivy a bullet as he will redeem and be replenished. What do you want? No, you have more. No, it's just I'm saying that you are drawing. That's good. There's a few players, Ras, that we have not seen so far in the No Limit Hold'em events. Kiat Lee. Probably Tom Dewan, right? Wei Xiang Yu, the top two in chips overall. Yep. And Lun Lun. Yeah. Yep. But these are all guys uh, we've seen at Triton before, or even earlier this year, but chose to come out just for the short deck portion. A little suited connector into the mock for Badzikuski as. Why Kin with the two jacks the is jamming. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the other jacks accounted for here behind him is Ivy's got queen jack suited. Oh, look how crazy this is in a three way pot. Queen jack suited is the favorite here. <laughs> a hand that you would think technically is dominated. Yeah. That's very wild. peculiar, isn't it? <laughs> that is wild. Something to think about as you begin to recognize just how different short deck is to its full deck counterpart and ivy's you're doing everything bullet. in your power to win it <laughs> you know it's it's almost like saying hey right jacks is very unlikely to hold only 19 percent the power of hitting that one over card the queen or the ace pretty high but then queen jack between the suitedness and the, how easy it is to make a straight in short deck, comparatively speaking, actually with that 40 to 37 percent equity edge over ace jack, which you would think, hey, it um it dominates. 
But, but just, yeah, fascinating equity breakdown there. And the river is a six per request, and Ivy's Queen Jack does hold true to form in terms of being the favorite. <laughs> so a nice pickup there for him after losing his previous bullet. Other thing worthy of note that we haven't touched on at all, Rast, is the fact that given there are four less of each suit in the deck, flushes being more difficult to make than full houses do beat them in terms of hand ranking. Sure. Which, yeah, for people coming from No Limit Hold'em comes as a bit of a surprise, but... This is Hot Limit? Dude, tomorrow. What? Really? Yeah. No. Tomorrow is Hot Limit. Really? Oh, wow. And a full stack as well. So it's going to be a deep Hot Limit. And Hot Limit pre-flop too? I mean, all the way? I think only pre-flop or? Only pre-flop, I think. Flop as well? I didn't know. I didn't know this either, but... Makita yeah, no has in informed yeah, Rui, I guess, who also didn't know, despite the fact that Rui is playing the tournament, that uh, apparently tomorrow it's going to pot, and for the rest of the tournament it will be pot limit pre-flop, no limit post-flop. Interesting. Which will change the bubble dynamics, especially where in this, in this game there's such a big ICM pressure because the hands are close and you force folds, but you can no longer shove which we see a lot playing up to the bubbles here. People would just monster all-ins for yeah. many antis. Ivy limping in with the suited connectors. Clubs are covered. Webster makes it 50 to go. Rikau flats with the 8-9 suited. Phil out of there. Would not have connected with this King Jack 8 board, which is all Webster. Top pair against bottom pair. Yeah, and a very, very weak flop for Roy, who might not even defend versus a C bet. Yeah, sure even, even for third pot, getting four to one. Tosses it right into the muck. Registration still wide open. Should see some other folks registering between now and the end of that period as we flip back over to our other feature table and Tom Duan's looking a touch jet lagged came in from Singapore actually caught him this morning on the way in he's got King 7 off suit Yeah, all this time in the booth paid off for me this year with short deck. It's, uh, you can learn a lot just just watching all these guys play. It's, it's pretty cool. Winford Yu, no stranger to the game, is King 10 suited. Broadway gutter, out of position against the boys, checks it. Coincidentally, it is the best hand. Yeah, and it, it's a flop that favors him a bit here with this UTG limp range, which, you know, he's he's really the only person that can have aces or even way more likely to have ace-queen or queens, although everybody can have queens, but the very ace-king, definitely. So a lot of the highest equity hands are hands Winfred has. And I expect versus the button, he, okay, he finds the fold and doesn't play back at Tom. The pair on board is a little bit problematic for those straight draws. Yeah, but I, th I think that's a spot you sometimes find people take their range advantage and, and attack in a spot where you have almost any equity at all. It's not obligatory, and, and Winfred passed it up, but I think you'll see some sometimes some bluffs coming from, from that versus Tom's button stab.
Spades again for Winfred. Takes a pass and two kings for Ivan Liao. Ivan really fits the sort of disposition that one presumes to attract or to be attracted to. Short deck. Liao with 6.6 .6 million in career. Triton earnings, 14 caches and two titles. Cashed his very first event during this series. 12th place finish in the 25K, eight max no limit for 59K and has gone over since. And Devoris. Omola. Jams here. And uh, as does Liao. He walked into the in trap. In response. And uh, Devoris's queen jack should perform even worse than the odds will indicate versus the kings on the virtue of another queen jack being dead. And even unfortunately for him, the nine and eight of clubs both also being two good cards for queen jack clubs. What is Dwan thinking about with only 10K invested? <laughs> the old triple up? He's thinking, uh, you yeah. know what? Nine, eight suited performs really well here against a very strong hand that Ivan obviously has and likely big cards of Dvoris. And it's early in this tournament. Maybe I want to gamble, try to run up a big stack. We're still in the rebuy period. And he, so uh, as you can see, he's 30%. So, I mean, basically it was a break even call. Um, and that doesn't include the fact that the queen jack off being taken out, which is probably slightly good for Tom. You can see the person here who, who really technically got it in bad is that queen jack of clubs. And that's not even counting the queen jack being dead. So Dwan will be all in for the main, a very modest side pot between Devoris and Liao at both stacks covered. And top two pair turns into a full house on the turn. And despite hitting that 10 on the river, Devoris' straight is no good against Duan. He will win the side, however, against Liao's Kings, which gets scooped here. Two, six, three, two. How much? Do I get? No, no, I... 60. No side pot. 84K Tom, was on the side, right? No, to, well, Tom had Divorce covered. Divorce only had 225K. The dealer just shipped all divorces chips. Oh, over to Tom. okay. So, so the, it was side the pop, other way around. Yeah, it was between Tom and and Ivan, but it didn't matter because Tom won. Yeah. Won everything. Okay. The short deck rust is showing. Tom rifles up into. Well, he's the chip lead in terms of chips on the table, but it. I think, actually, Kiat Lee technically has more, including the Lamner, uh, the bullets. bullets, because he has two bullets behind, and Tom only has one, which is all available for your viewing pleasure on the Triton Poker Plus app. Ace King for Rui Cal. Jamming. Is there any strategy, Ras, to maybe playing a little bit looser off of your first bullet, looking to spin up a stack, taking chances, pressing thin spots, and then maybe tightening up as you get to that second and third bullet? You could, you could definitely make an argument, especially if you think the ICM effects leading up to the bubble are more extreme in short deck, that there's added value in, in running up that stack, right? The, the flip side being that maybe that will be different in this tournament that's only pot limit tomorrow, so it'll be a little bit less advantageous to be the big stack. For the time being, it is not pot limit, which is why Rui Kao was able to jam 100K with Ace King, flops himself the joint, on the turn, Webster had the opportunity to chop in. Just like that, runner, runner, the nine and the ace. 
roll off. And the boys will carve one up. That's a little disappointing. It's interesting that on a flop he seems to be pretty dead. But like if the turn is a jack, he has 30, he would have 33% equity. Mm -hmm. yeah. You were <laughs> correct. That's Yakuski with some statistical observations there. Recal confirming. Was he talking about the Queen Jack? Yeah? Ace, he has 50% equity. Or no, I think he's talking <laughs> about this pot just oh, now where okay. as of the turn, Webster had some decent opportunities to chop. I believe. Give me back my hand. Could of course be wrong. Meanwhile, Webster going to find himself spinning once more. I'm not even, yeah. This time in considerably better shape as he is the dominant hand against Waikin Yang's king queen offsuit. Well, look at this dynamite flop top pair and the flush draw and the gutter for Webster. Pretty big stranglehold, but Waikin does have the open ender which comes in on the turn. But a big redraw for Webster. Now it might be hard to win it. Queen to chop, <laughs> ace or king, or a diamond. <laughs> and why can showers another bullet rast? Yeah. I mean, this bullet's just rifling in there now. But I mean, the ant the ante's 5K, the double ante 10K. So at this point, I mean, one bullet is, is starting to be not that much. Guy's just jamming one bullet, no problem. That is a feature of short deck, I would say. Far more so than we are accustomed to seeing it in No Limit Hold'em, in particular in the earlier phases of the tournament, where it would just be absurd to see the frequency of all-in and calls. Yeah, there's just more all-ins here. Equities are closer. You just, so you also end up seeing kind of these spin-ups happen, you know, much more frequently in short deck because of that as well. You know, guy like what Tom Dwan du just did, basically. I mean, he just went from having, you know, a buy-in to being one of the chip leaders. You know, win a three-way all-in. No problem. No cash, no credit, no problem. An Ivy flopping Broadway. Heads up versus the dealer button and why well, can't stick around. It's already had two bullets dusted off. Sticks around and now he's drawn dead. Yeah, and he's gonna think and reasonably so that this card usually picks him up some equity when he's behind. Might feel compelled to stick around versus this bet size. Can't feel too good about just a pair of aces being good here, especially in short deck against, but you know, Ivy can definitely have, have some bluffs, kind of tricky spot. Why can passes and uh, it's good always good to pull. lay down there. Yeah. Nice to fold when you're drying dead, huh? Ivy picking that one up. Why can spares himself? Well, chances are Phil Ivy is glancing down at the Triton Poker Plus app at the table, as so many players do to keep their finger on the pulse of all that is going on in real time for them or for those of you streaming at home on the delay. So as not to create any spoilers, simply go to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and download for your device today and soak up all of the incredible stats coverage available to you through the Triton Poker Plus app, including live streaming of the events. We certainly welcome those of you streaming us through the app. 
or on YouTube. Be sure if you're on the ladder to like and subscribe to the Triton channel. Oh, Makita with a little limp behind here, the Ace King. Another Ace King for Y Ken has jammed it. 75K. And you can see that should Jack 10 continue here, it'll have 50% three ways against two overlapping hands, but that's you know impossible to know your opponents both have the same hand. 10 9 off equally would have performed as well had I played it. As it stands, it is Badziakuski giving Wykin a spin, and Yang Red. should be able to chop. Flushes are so tough to pull Hi. off, but Yang has himself a free roll. No, no hard diamond. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he wants his heart. Wait the heart. a minute. Keep the heart. No blade okay. falls in heart. I don't right? mind losing this one. Actually, nice a light knock at the back team. door here. Oh, and but you wouldn't false alarm right? as yeah. players will chop it up. 10-9, making the seven good, card good, straight. Good, 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 good. Not worth more than a five card straight, but fun nevertheless. Also deemed not worth that 75K to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a it's very reasonable fold by Ivy. He might have played 10-9 suited for what it's worth, especially in the rebuy period. Winners but. button. Maybe there's something for a short deck. Winners button. 10 9 suited Why? actually being the hand that performs this. the best against I aces. Mean, I, I haven't played in a, any high Equity stakes. wise. Better than 10 jack? Yep. Because the aces That's are required to make Broadway. Rui Cal jamming a Jack-10 offsuit. 88, lucky number. Winner's button is really fun. Like, I mean, people should play more aggressive. Ivy with Ace-King jamming Eight, over the top. Has Rui Cal covered. I'm pretty sure. Wow, that, that's actually such an easy way to make like solvers less relevant because like you just cannot put the future game in me. Future game? For sure. Yeah, like the future game for the... the for there is, for sure there is. Okay. No, but for a post-flop, how would Flop is Jack-8-8. Eight, eight. I mean, no, looking to stave oh, yeah, off okay, elimination he here as he hops in front of the ace-king yeah, and stays in front of it on the turn. Still gonna make it more complicated. It means if you win this... Gotta fade the six outs. Your next hand... Your more and he's done it. It's like ICM too. You have this in ICM. The future game, yes, there is. But like, it doesn't calculate the post flop game. You mean post flop? You said? Yeah, like when you calculate the normal, you know, in Pio, you, could, you would no, not. No, I know, but it's fairly. You can Moving. approximate fairly easily. Not super okay. complex. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. yeah right? You right. can be. No, right. it's, it's, still, it's still, you know, some deviation, so. Yeah, but it's so tiny that I don't think it matters so much, you know. Sure. I mean, you should do like mystery. Yeah. You don't know what you're playing until the level, until you sit down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so where am I going? And Rast, we tried our best to dance hey, around MMA, it. Huh? Cool. <laughs> but conversation. <laughs> Huh? Rather interesting, driven by Mikidi Badzi Kuski there. Deuce to seven, triple draw. <laughs> yeah, Feel Mikita very happy talking about the power of solvers and maybe how it can be mitigated. <laughs> 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 it's still high-low. No, he's laughing. He's imagining the situation. Yeah. <laughs> Today is Toti <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, first look at Santi Jiang. Nah, you Still not participating. In, uh, it's three max. <laughs> yeah. oh. Just make more tables. 
Now two red kings for Ivy. Mm -hmm. And he comes with limp. There's a lot of that limp jam sort of stuff, or limp induced the jam behind you that we'll see. And he got it. And the man to do it is oh, wow. Rikau from the button. He'll have 30% equity. And still play a 400K pot. Yeah, being quite relevant, uh, Jack Tenoff actually does better against aces than kings. Kings make it harder to block the straight, which is part of the reason why 10-9 off is actually best. 10-9 can hit the Jack Queen King or the 6-7-8. None of those cards being blocked versus aces. Wow, okay. Little gutter, which you can see is actually uh, maintains his equity. 1% better than he was pre-flop from this point forward is Rui Kao. Turn card changes his prospects, however, down to 14%. Yeah, no Needs running an two eight. pair. And instead, it's an ace, as the two kings are able to hold for Phil Ivey, and they will leave Rui Kao with dust on his very last bullet. It's going to take a lot of spins. Yeah, and Rui might have been doing a little bit of what you were proposing there, which is like, hey, I'm down to my last bullet. Let's get this all in, try to double up, or just rebuy and get 300K soon. I would think on the first bullet is more so where people would want to do that as opposed to their last bullet, where maybe we realize that, well, I guess you're still in the reentry period. So. Yeah. We're in the reentry period. This is... Probably the smallest buy-in for short deck here at Triton. Roy, as we've seen in the past, is not a guy who likes short stacking it. He very much enjoys wielding the big stack. And when he does, it's fun to watch. Oh, certainly. Mike in. Jamming. 77K. I believe he, too, is on his last bullet. Cal takes a spin with ace nine. And you'll see here in short deck, interestingly enough, it's actually stone 50 50 basically versus king 10 off. Actually, technically, I guess 1% behind 50 49 despite having the higher card, but not anymore. No, top pair. For Rikau, make that trips as King-10 will draw dead. Flesh wound. For Y Kin, though obviously it is significant in relation to his remaining stack, which is very shallow and made shallower by losing that one. Tournament short deck played considerably different than cash, Rast? Yeah, I think so. I, I As you get down to the bubble and uh, into the, the paid ladder spots, I think it distorts play quite a bit. More, more than no limit hold'em, I believe. Ivy mulling it over up front with... 8-9 off. Oh. Actually not mulling, just unaware. Action was on him. That would have been a really a waste of a time egg there. Let's see if back-to-back -back <laughs> doubles are in the cards for Rui Kao. Asante Jang jamming behind his open jam. Does bring Y Kin as well, and there's kind of a flypaper effect when you get multiple guys jamming Rast in, in short deck. It incentivizes you even further to get involved. 
subpar. For, for sure, especially given how short all these stacks are. And this flop gives Santi Jang the gut shot straight draw. He has both of his opponents covered. Wai Kin currently with the best hand. Second pair. 126 in the middle. The 10 now making things quite interesting as Rui Kao picks up the gut shot. Wai Kin also with the straight draw, and it comes in on the end. Rui Kao. All out of bullets, leaving behind a modest package. Math gets done, and Kin will take a big bite out of Santi Jiang's stack, and he will be left with even less than Rui Cao had to start that pot moving forward. Hmm? Now we find <laughs> Ivan <laughs> and Winfred squaring off. Again. And those kings are behind on an ace high flop. Yeah, pretty poor flop for Ivan. Just okay. two outs one time and was not able to get there. And Ivan may not realize that he's going to have 5K left. Well, this is a little demoralizing. You'd almost rather be showered, Rast, if you know you're going to re-enter than be forced to play with 5K. It does feel that way, although from a theoretical EV standpoint, having that <laughs> basically just one ante is so powerful because you get the auto, you know, six up, six X if you win. But yeah, it's demoralizing to think, hey, I six X and still have to double two more times just to have one bullet. Ace nine off suit. The hand that Liao goes with. And Paul will place pressure on the field. And Tom's been continuing to spin that stack up over here. But now that he has a lot of chips, passes the 9-8 off. Also passes all others for the overall chip lead in the event. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and the all in from Paul clears all but the all in Ivan Liao is well covered and was left with just vapors. And you can see here a spot where Ivan actually getting four to one on that 10K can spin the 10 into 50. Flops himself a gut shot. Same story for Paul Fua, but he does not need to hit. A lot of chops now. <laughs> Notice Paul suggested he was drawn dead as it is not a chop. It is the clean nine that Ivan hits on the river. So Paul's 10K coupled with the Annie's shipped. And you talked about Duan spins almost one and a half million in front of him now. 292 blinds. There is 69 blinds at this table that aren't in Tom Duan's stack and 292 in his stack. I mean, he has like over four times as many chips as the rest of the table combined. I don't know if I've ever seen a chip disparity at a table like that other than like the end of a tournament. Yeah, at the, literally at the final table when someone 
and even that with five left is crazy. So, I mean, this is like somewhat insane, actually. <laughs> like, look at that Tower of Babel in front of him. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon while everybody else is like, you know, poor and destitute. Yeah, at this particular table, certainly. Yeah, it feels like when, you know, that guy in Monopoly and he has like four Monopolies with like houses and hotels and you, the, everybody else is just waiting to go broke. Although... <laughs> Although in short deck, having a short stack is quite powerful because you just get to move all in and realize your equity. And actually, as a big stack in these spots, you can be in kind of tougher spots when short stacks squeeze you. <laughs> Ivan with yet another big pair, this time aces, much stronger than kings in short deck. Much bigger difference between aces and kings in short deck as opposed to full deck. And Paul is ready to gamble with 9-7 suited here as he anticipates the three-way pot. We'll be giving him a little bit more of a lay. Leal's aces. 46% against these two other holdings and the king-king eight board rewarding Tom Dwan. This is three. Eight. Ooh. But the ace, not an out for Paul. Yeah, six on the turn did give Paul an open ender and some brief hope. The, Unfortunately the ace for being him. the bottom of the yep. open ender, which gives Ivan the boat. But Two pelts claimed at once by the chip vacuum that is Tom Dwan. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Send the chips directly to my stack. And do not sleep on the two guys that he managed to eliminate there. Both very tough to play against the latter stages of any short deck tournament. Right now it feels like it's Gamble City. For the most part, guys limping in with a wide variety of hands, looking for maybe a spot where they can call a raise and get multi-way. Yeah, 100%. I think guys are kind of gambling a little loose here early in the tournament, still in the re-entry. Seeing some kind of dusty is probably not the right word, but some weaker hands making their way in. Maybe later in the tournament we won't see the 9-7 offs of the world. Ace-8 turns into a double gutter here on the Jack-7-9 board. Any 6 and any 10 would do the job for Webster, who is out of position against Santi Jiang, who's got the gutter and middle pair and faces and flush draw. A bet of 25K. I mean, very nice little flop for 10 nine of hearts. Gut shot straight flush draw along with a pair. Bet of 25K gets flatted. He's still got just nines for the time being, which is more than we can say for Webster Limbs holding. Yeah, and the king improves nobody's hand. It does now give Santi a double gutter with the queen giving him a straight as well. Um, and it, so his equity improves as we can see, but Santi is obviously going to be a bit concerned. And this is a pot where should a total brick come on the river, Webster Lim very well might end up bluffing. He kind of has, I mean, it's pretty hard to have no pair. So he's on a board like this. So he's going to be very incentivized to bluff. Jiang, right now, basically deciding between jam or call. Yeah, that was the yeah. calculus. And jam's going to work out nice because he gets to pick up the pot and doesn't get bluffed on blank rivers. 
Nicely. 10 being a nice blocker, blocking queen 10. Yeah, 10 8, which is relevant, the two made straights. And credit to Stephen Chidwick's wife, Maureen, who forbade me from continuing to bludgeon everyone with the idea that the equities run close and short deck, and instead submitted that we should discuss the idea of card removal having a much greater impact in short deck, and that is exactly what you were bringing up in terms of that 10, the nice little blocker, yeah. and the value of that blocker going up so much for Santi. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice hand for him to make that play with because he has a lot of equity when called, really, against anything other than the straights and versus the, the 10 very relevant blocker against the straights. And even versus straights, obviously, has that flush draw, but those are the hands that you really don't want to call you there. I mean, it has a ton of equity with a double gutter and flush draw versus, like, two pairs and sets, so. Why can now? Finds himself all in against Santi Jiang, who's got him covered with ace-queen against the two nines. Pretty excited, Ali, to see this played pot limit. I don't think I've oh. seen that yet. Pot limit pre-flop tomorrow. Should really change things up and... Uh, be kind of exciting to see that wrinkle and also how the players feel about it i'm sure they'll discuss it from time to time santi flopping middle set and on the turn why can picking up the broadway gutty can't hit it on the river however and that is his third and final bullet which is being absorbed by the spaniard Short deck has no mercy. I mean, not that full deck no limit is particularly merciful, if we were to call it that, but you get it. I get it. I know where you're coming from. This is a game that it just feels, you just get, when you're running bad, you're losing all ends, they happen more in this game, so it just feels like you get whacked faster. Faster, harder. Kind of lonely out here at this feature table. Yes. Yeah. You'll see more re-entries in short deck because of that as well, despite the bullet system. I mean, like this tournament says right now 35 in the field, but there's only 23 unique, so that's 12 re-entries. That ratio, I think, might already be passing the No Limit tournaments, and we're not done yet. Action held up here. Unfair to force the table to play three-handed. Some rebalancing will take place. While it does, let's talk about the resumes out there. Webster Lim, almost 3.2 million in career Triton earnings. Does have one title under his belt, seven caches. Finished 14th in the 50K six max here. One for four thus far in terms of events. Knocking on the door of a million chips. Santi Jane, up to 91 annies. Phil Ivy with. 57, and he's have crept up to 6,000. And it looks like Elton Sang has joined the party. And welcomed with an ace king, and Santi Jiang's got the same kit behind him. And you see, these ace kings love to limp and induce. Minutes. 
on T. 4xing an ace queen for Ivy. The equities feel wrong here, Rast. Well, yeah, because it's for a, the, ace the outright kings victory. Chop so much. Yeah, yep. this is the outright victory equities. But you know, if you add that up, you got three, third, thirty-five. The sixty-five percent of the time, should it be a three-way all-in, which it probably will be, uh, the ace kings chop. So they chop sixty-five percent of the time, and these are the outright win percentages. Or actually, I guess out of that sixty-five percent of the time, there is a small amount of that is all three of them chop, which would be the six, seven, eight, nine, or the king, queen, jack, ten boards. Elton. Looked up at Ivy's jam, which is not in great shape, and he jams over the top of it. Santi sort of asked himself whether or not the aces and the kings might be out there. Hmm before deciding to get it all in. And the side pot will be 416K two ways, over Ivy. a million in the middle three ways. Ivy with a little smile there, and it's because, Which one's mine? as we can see, it's actually not performing that bad. Normally you'd think ace-queen still screwed, but just with how important card removal is, being up against ace-king twice, he's now basically just breaking even instead of getting it in bad. So, it, you know, kind of like a serendipitously lucky spot for a hand that you'd think would be in real bad shape. Meanwhile, Jack-9-6 gets paired on the turn as the ace-kings are sitting pretty Whoa. until that queen on the river, Phil Ivey, <laughs> manages <laughs> the improbable. And that, that, that grin is with good reason. I like that little right after it happened. He just the little slight push of the cards forward. Like, oh, here we go, ace, queen. That's, that's the winner. A little smile. Million in chips. So the ace, kings had Ivy covered. Neither will be eliminated. You know what I imagine there, Ali? You know that, like, meme with, the like, the world's most interesting guy with yeah, the white yeah, beard? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like... I don't get it all in very, uh, very often with the ace queen to ace king. But when I do, you best believe two opponents have the ace king. You know, and he's like <laughs> chewing on a cigar. Like, Just to put him in better shape. <laughs> like you think I get it all in bad? Not really, son. <clears throat> Rika with kings up on this flop in a four-way affair. Fires and Dewan hangs in there. Voris does not. Winford out of there as well. Now four to a straight on board. No bluff desires. Duan has queens unimproved. He's thinking about bluffing it, but he decides just a little too strong. I think maybe we get to see a 10-7 or 9-7 bluff river, but yeah, I queen maybe being a bit too good, and I like that decision. Still just 18 entries at present. You're in the first of multiple short deck events. Dwan trapping a bit here with the ace queen off limp. Going to be very happy to call versus Devoris's stack. And, uh, Gets exactly that. Almost two, basically two to one favorite. Wheel of Fortune for Daniel Devoris, who is 
smothered. Give it a spin. Oh, now. Possible Good. outright Ws with the jack. Good flop for Devorez. You can see it, his situation improved a bit. The jack giving him a win and the king. Not anymore. There it is, king. King, queen, wow. good. Bit of a Phil Ivey special there as the side card came through. Granted, there were more outs than just the king to giving Devoris a stay of execution. Not enough going on there. <laughs> Let's send it back. There's Ivy with his new chip stack. It's about a million. Only. Santi with a playable hand. He's just gonna just gonna open ship it. How much are these? Ooh. 195. Hmm. Oh, I think I think Paul probably goes with this. It. He has he has a little more, but not so much more that he needs to be too concerned. Probably think Jack's probably performed pretty well against the the jam range here, but it's I'm not I'm not certain he he will go go for it. I mean, Jack's actually isn't. You'd think against Queen Ten suited, it's a big favorite, but it's 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 a favorite, but it's not by a, a ton. Yeah, he, he goes for it. <laughs> and even when you have an under pair, Ooh. which is so catastrophic in no limit, you still have a lot of equity with those two jacks. Yes. Oh, wow. Now, tough spot for Ivy. So, because it's an interesting spot because he got a 300. Okay. How do I like my hand versus these two guys is one question. But then, you know, I'm exposing quite a lot here versus... Uh, Lim behind me, who, I mean, Lim almost, basically has almost a million himself. So Ivy could get in some troublesome spots here. Even if he, th if he thinks it's break even against these two, he shouldn't do it because he's risking versus Lim behind. He has to think there's some amount of plus EV enough to cover for the fact that if someone comes in behind him, it's almost certainly with a hand that has ace queen off in bad shape. I would say like ace king and then maybe even kings plus queens might even fold. Whoa. Yeah, so Ivy's calling with the idea that he folds to a limb jam, limb jam for uh, 900k. And limb's range there is probably kings, aces, and ace king. I don't even know if he plays queens. So we are off to the races. That ace-queen fared so well against not one but two ace-kings, but on this occasion, it's a little bit of a different proposition. He does have Santi Jang's queen smothered, but needs help against the two jacks, which turn into three jacks on a jack-9-6 board, where Santi Quite a bad flop for Ivy. open-ended. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Jack's full of nines for boss. And it's a good thing. 300. Yes. Both Ivy and Santi would hit a queen on the river. What happened? A scoop. Jack's? Yes. What did, what did Phil have? 15. What did he have? Queen 10. Queen 10? Queen 10. Queen 10. Queen 10, Jack's. Ace queen. Oh, hit a jack. <laughs> So a nice pickup there for the two jacks. Paul Pua will sit with 137 anties, good for sixth. <laughs> two hand lost it all. He had a big stack. <laughs> Almost there <laughs> myself. I'm just saying it's like, you know, short deck.
limp from 10-8 suited by Ivy now. And Webster does the same with pocket nines. And he's queen on the button for Paul. Some newly minted chips. And he's going to pop it up, but they're way too deep to jam here. And uh, he comes with 5x as yeah. his size. Upstairs we go. I think if Ivy calls, Lim probably calls. If Ivy folds, Lim probably folds would be my guess. Back over to Webster. We'll see just how dissuaded he is to continue with the absence of Ivy, leaving him all alone to contend with Paul. Decides to go for it anyway, heads up. Oh, and this Hello. is quite the flop. Yep, flopping a flush, wildly improbable. Webster, by the way, has the nine of clubs working. The eight of clubs will give him the straight flush. I mean, this could be end up being a big pot. I mean, Paul, obviously, just what a flop. Flopping the nut flush. Yes, you're losing to a straight flush. God bless if your opponent has it. Going to be happy to play for stacks. And Lim has a combo that he can decide to kind of turn into a bluff. Can play it a lot of different ways. This pot could get quite big. If Lim, I mean, because obviously if Lim decides to check raise here and Paul will be going nowhere. Lim just takes his immediate equity calls and sees a turn. Yeah, understandable. As Paul's 35K bet gets called, board pairs on the turn, non-issue for a flush, which is yeah. the second that's right now. Yeah, remember, the flush beats the full house. And that's... Not really a bad card for Lim either. He was already losing to a jack. If nines was ahead, it still might be ahead against hands like king, queen, ace, king, ace, queen. Which are all hands you can, like, you know, let's say Paul Foy has ace, king off with the ace of clubs. No, he might start water, barreling please. away. Have a mineral water. Mineral water. Sparkling. The it does bring a 10 as a counterfeit card Thanks. for Webster. Lim does check it, and now with 208 in the middle, Paul goes to work. Looks like he's coming with just under half, half pot. 90 into 208. Any argument in favor of just checking back here and trying to induce something on the river or allow that last club or? You, I mean, you, you certainly could find some reasons to do it, but Paul does have a lot of nat hands that will naturally want to bluff here in the what I suggested, the king, queen, ace, king, ace, queen. Straight so flush. value betting makes sense also. <laughs> Straight flush. <laughs> uh, yeah. We see anyway. Just show. Flush, flush, flush. <laughs> flush. I do you have Wow. So Paul, a little bit disappointed not to be getting more action there, but. Kind of bluffed everybody. <laughs> Nine's just deemed inadequate. Play cash game last night, open? Yeah. Good. Short deck. Webster with a nice little Good. fold. Could have, could have stuck around. <clears throat> Suss that one out. You play PLO? Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna have a? I can play that game. TV cash game day. Well, it's not easy. Well, let me know if it's available. Yeah. Maybe I'm, I'm going to be too tired tonight. They said no pros. I don't know if they consider you a pro or not. I'm not. <laughs> Business. <man. laughs> ne next year, I'm going to try to qualify. <laughs> me too, Phil. 
<laughs> Next Coin River Invitational. I'm a, hey, guys, I'm a commentary guy. Well, hey. I hope you guys do figure out a way to come in as a VIP slash businessman because that means... Oh, if they let they, me on that side. I'll see you later, Ali. Here, here's my 200K. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm playing on the businessman side. Just got to pass that vote. Two out of three. That's all I need, man. <laughs> the only business you should be involved in is corrupting the voting panel. As we see the monotone board here, so difficult, by the way, to, to see these sorts of textures. It is top pair for Webster. Facing a little sprinkle from Ivy with second pair. Makes the call. Now we do have a straight draw for Ivy. Whereas we might get a little bit more conservative in long deck in these spots with the monotone flops, we can fire a little bit more comfortably. Obviously not on the strength of the not on the strength of the eight per se, but more so just the line that Ivy is putting together here. Yeah, the ace figures to be a card that's better for his range. So he, he gets to bet it quite a bit in 8-7. A hand that has some equity when called, usually, and uh, likes to get some better hands out, like what we just saw, getting that king to fold. Well, playground bully action there. Thank you. Phil Ivy hashtag not a pro. Did you cash anything this <laughs> Zero. You? Same. Same? Welcome to the club. I don't like this club. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this club. I'm like, I'm gonna give up on tournaments. It's like <laughs> Oh my god. That's okay, we can make it up. Make uh -huh. it up any short deck event. <laughs> <laughs> Boss with King Jack off suit. Limped under the gun has Webster dominated, who in turn has Elton dominated on the pair two diamond board. All hits the Jack with 42,000 in the middle. I didn't Webster even make it like with the gutter. Tables. Huh? Four tables. I didn't even make it to like three tables left. I only had one time that I made it to day two. Yeah, I didn't make many day twos either. Boss fires. But the worst part was all the other times, I only last at like two levels normally. <laughs> Did you rebuy? <laughs> Fucking rebought like so many times. <laughs> <laughs> like two bullets, two bullets, two bullets, three bullets, every time. Minimum, minimum two. Phil and Elton in the, in the battle of yeah. who ran worse. <laughs> That's one of the first ones to bust. Not before me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, not before you, sorry. Paul's hand <laughs> has been raised, by the way. Uh, yeah, Webster taking that 10 of diamonds, very relevant blocker, and, and going for it. It's pr probably the best oh. blocker to have in the immediate gutter and Damn. making some moves, and it gets through. Gets King Jack to fold. Webster with some very sharp decision-making so far. Little nines fold, little bluff here. It's all working out. Two times I was going for like a barrel, barrel, barrel bluff with a flush draw. And both times I hit the flush on the river. And both times the other guy had a higher flush. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta play better hands. Uh-huh. Gotta play better starting <laughs> hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. We going to play three, four, five. Uh -huh. Now. Middle position. Elton with two black kings. <laughs> Elton telling his story, now getting needled. Uh, man, they just had bigger flushes than me. That's what you get for playing 4-3 of diamonds in middle yeah. position, yeah. son. Yeah, <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you. No, I was like, ah, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, Jax for Dwan, meanwhile, at the other table. 
limping. <laughs> we can see, very interestingly, these hands basically even in equity. Jacks, queen eight suited, king 10 off. It's a flip. And the king eight seven does give recal. Top pair, Winfred second pair and Duan the same hand he had coming in. 15K, the bet from Rui Cal. Well, if the button bet isn't isn't connected to the board. Obviously, these two jacks are going to be performing rather well, but the issue in short deck rest is so often virtually any two do connect to the board in some way, yeah. shape, or form. As Winford jams with queen eight after making trips. Tough spot for Rui here. He's got a king and a ten of diamonds. Also has Tom behind him. Winfred not particularly known as a blaster. But how much of a blast is this? Well, if he Which comes in, can't... Tom's folding the jacks, I think. And now Tom will be in a similar position that Roy folded, but with nobody behind him. Duan doesn't like it, but in the end, he is going to make the call here, perhaps recognizing that the flush is improbable and his jack of diamonds will work. And the jack of hearts gives him the boat on the river, so a nasty spot as you see Winfred Yu just shrugging his shoulders and wondering what just happened. Short deck, brah. Indeed. And the Tom Dwan chip vacuum cleaning service, hard at work. Is it just after registration closes that we're going to see things sort of tighten up? You call my hand? Do you think you call my hand? the sort of action that we're seeing right now is predicated on the specific <laughs> players? I'm not so scared of you. I can have a diamond. It's not off. I mean, I have a diamond in my hand. Make right, right. right. I have a king and a big diamond. I think yeah, I mean. always have a eight. No, okay. so. What's up? He's six, he's nine with eight diamonds. He's nine, nine. He's Winford. You don't think so? <laughs> you can have diamond, you're crazy or what? How can you have a How can you have a eight? Why not? Winford is usually full of a eight. I mean, he can have a... Yeah, we've been playing for Andy for a while. I'm sorry, I didn't know you're a short deck guy. Not really. I'm a no. businessman. You're a businessman. Good luck. Thank you. How much do you have? 300 to start. Start, start. Yeah. Okay. Oh, a little interesting combo there, I thought, Aliyah. Yeah, yeah. Tom was asking Rui if he called, and Rui basically said he wouldn't call with his hand. Some discussion about ranges, and Roy kind of said, it's Winfred. 
sort of backing up what I alluded diamonds. to earlier, that he's known as a bit of a solid and player, look, maybe when he puts the chips in. How can he have anything else? There is no 9 10 no. I thought about it and then, no, impossible. I think it's 9, it's 6, it's 11. I've been thinking too far. Dario San Martino announcing his arrival. Recal with a 10K sprinkle. Fucking weird. Like, what the fuck? It's Winford. Got shot straight draw for San Martino up against Bangs it out. second pair. And Presto, the eight of diamonds, does give him the best hand. Re picks up the queen high straight gutter. And the 10 high straight gutter, where San Martino already finds himself. A lot of draws on this board. I mean, I have wish on my phone anyway, so. Double flush draw, three possible straights, a lot of straight draws. Rui has that pair of nines, and the 10 is actually a double gutter, although a seven would chop, or actually a seven or a jack just chop for him because San Martino already has a straight. And Rui peels versus the pot size bet. And will he? Does not decide to bluff that river. No. The backdoor flushes really don't rate to be the sorts of things that people can represent yeah. all too plausibly. Especially with no with no uh, blocker yourself. <laughs> nice catch there, Ali. You've been uh, playing some short deck, my man. Don't don't <laughs> hide it. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly high-level analysis there as San Martino's 150K bet is being pondered by Rui Cao. Yeah. And listen, Rui Cao is the kind of guy that could just suddenly decide to himself, not on this occasion, but you know what? You don't got it. And just put the big calls out there. Oh, yeah. Rui Cao's really capable of everything. I mean, he's, um, I mean, we've seen it on the stream. The, the hand versus Tom. The real now famous do seven cash game hand. I mean, Roy is a creative, aggressive, uh, good player. So, hundred percent, Ali. We will certainly see more of him as this event and this second half of the Triton Super High Roller Series in <coughs> North Cyprus rolls on. Glad to have you with us here in the 30K opening event. For short deck. And he's up to 8K. Two sevens for Ivy. Limping in. I mean, is there any point at which I call this hand that Webster has 5 6 off suit? Just can't do it. I don't have the heart. But the A6s of the world are not particularly strong in, in short deck, Rast. No, he's he's basically taking a weak offsuit ace and kind of turning it into um, a bluff off the strength of the ace blocker. And kind of tough spot for two sevens here out of position. But Ivy's undeterred. Yeah, makes the investment. And we'll look up at a ace, eight, seven flop. This one's interesting as Webster's got top pair. And a gutter. And the gutter. Ivy has bottom set. Yeah, very good flop for Ivy. I mean, bottom set versus the top pair. Webster came with a big size pre, so already a lot of money out there. Very likely to keep betting at this. So Ivy has some decisions here about how to proceed. Sure does. I mean, they're pretty deep, like deep enough that, you know, I don't know. Do I really want to check raise and get it all in? <laughs> For at before that 60K, what, there was about 160. So that's 320, 640. It's almost nearly a five stack to pot ratio. 
That said, Webster Limb never has 6-9 for the flop straight. And realistically speaking, the only hand you're losing to is pocket aces. So that's one hand, which Webster could have. But uh, sometimes you just take your chances and say, well, if you got the aces, you got it. But and that's, that's what Ivy's doing. And then even against those kind of suited combo cards, that perhaps with some modest frequency, Webster is going to be raising pre. And here, after if Webster Ivy opens thinks the pot, he, that he Ivy's making a move here a lot, he might, you know, because he has a gutter to go with it in case he's wrong, right? It's not like, in some ways, this hand is better than ace-king because Ivy's kind of repping hands that can probably beat ace-king, ace-queen here, saying let's play for stacks. So he has a gutter to go with it. So Webster, if he says, hey, Ivy might make this play with like the eight, nine off, some, you know, check raise, just trying to get me to fold, take down the pot, goes with the ace six. I, I wouldn't be shocked to see it here. Play back at him. Yeah, but he pa passes it up. So Ivy will take it down on the flop with no further contest. And it is funny because psychologically when you hear he has a gutter to go with it, One. it's not nearly as exciting, so to speak, because in our minds we're thinking, well, it's a lot tougher to hit those gutters. But then in short deck, they come through. Yeah, it's not. It's not nearly as tough in short deck to hit gutters. Well, to hit bracelets is also one of those things that we know to be difficult, but the GG Poker, with so many chances, perhaps it's a little easier. 33 total being awarded as the 2022 World Series of Poker Online rolls on. And GG is also where you'll want to look out for future Triton Online Qualifier satellites that will let you get involved in a Triton event for as little as $25. on up to 2,500. Ivy limping nines this time. And Elton likes the look of this King-10 suited. Jams it, Ivan asking for a count. And they're pretty much level Neck no, and no, neck, no. and yes, what, 100, 200, 230, 239. For Liao, if he knows that Ivy's going to come along, it makes it a lot easier to get involved with this Jack 10 suited. Yes. Now you can see here, Sorry. there's been some previous pots with the three way equity where the dominating wasn't that big a deal. The reason why it's a bigger deal here is because in those other ones, there was like, say, a pair of jacks or queens out there. So when you hit the 10, King-10 was still losing just like the Jack-10 to a bigger pair. But this one, because the King-10 and Jack-10 are over the nines, the 10, you know, gives Elton the winning hand. So you saw King-10 have an equity advantage, and which is actually exactly what happens on this flop. Both players end up hitting the 10. Advantage Elton for the kicker, but then the eight rolls off on the turn. Both players with eights full. There are some clean winners on the river, but they don't show up. Hmm? Jack of the King, of course, would have canceled out that chop. Five-handed action, carries on. Liao will open limp. Is that king eight suited? 
Paul checks back and it's trip aces. Yeah, with just king high, but he's going to probe. Yeah, betting is range advantage here versus the dealer check back. And this spot here, as Liao is just to Paul's right, is basically small blind versus big blind, limp pre. A bit, he, a bit, Quads yes. now for Paul. So it's not, it's not a huge range advantage. Ivan Liao continuing, continuing to represent. He's all done telling a tale. Yeah, it's a waving the white flag. <laughs> I mean, busted diamonds, would they ever show up in this spot? Ivan seems to think so. Yeah, thinking it over with just king high. I've been digging real deep here. I mean, but the sorts of hands that he's going to have to find are the other, like the king jacks, the king tens. And then every now and again, busted diamonds as you see Paul flashing quads. Three of them. <laughs> the 25k, the 50k, and hopefully the 100k. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, looks like they just announced the prize pool, prize pool and Phil joking with Ivan, I'm sorry, with Elton that uh, they're gonna have to win all these short deck events to get even, as this one only got 38 entries you know, 30K, so much smaller than these No Limit Hold'em fields, which were pretty spectacular, just. They really were. We, we broke a record in event number one with 131 entries, the most Boom. ever in a Triton event. That certainly set the tone for what was a very successful front end of the program, as we see multiple limps in front of I mean, I also, I, I don't know if they keep track of this, but that 50K, I mean, it was like 117 people in a 50K. I mean, that might be a Triton record as well. I mean, that's a lot of people for a 50K tournament. In terms of entries, yeah. You saw Ivy, by the way, there jam it to 70,000. I say jam, pop it. And nobody wanted a piece. And it's considered sort of okay to try to slide in with the limps in short deck rast and then just fold when it gets raised. Sure. I mean, you're getting such a great price, yeah. right, with, you know, calling one ante more to limp. So, yeah, obviously you do it as traps sometimes, but most of the time it's not going to be a trap. You're just getting such a good price. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, totally reasonable. You know, you're getting six to one or more. So call, speculate, and yeah, if somebody pops it up big, you, you don't have to call. You usually, you're almost always out of position as well.
Now, a three-way affair where two ace-eights have flopped the joint on the 9-6-7 flop. Nine high straights for both Phil Ivey and Webster Lim. Kiatli does have the gutter along with the two overs as he and Ivey have checked it. Both Ivey and Webster with backdoor flush draws. Ace of hearts, super relevant. But then again, obviously in uh, short deck, it's very hard for those to come in. So that's less valuable than Hold'em. Thirty-six K bet sends Ace Queen into the muck. Ivy slow playing it. It's a nice card. It doesn't change the the nut nuttiness of the board texture. It's a it's also fills in some hands that uh, you could realistically think might keep firing, such as Jack Eight for for value here when you check it to your opponent. Like they fired the jack eight open ender on the flop and then hit the jack and now have more equity. The decision now for IV is whether or not to continue check calling or go ahead and put in a check raise, which will obviously look very strong. DK bet on the turn from Webster and Ivy still just flatting Rast. Sort of respecting the 10 8 possibilities from the button hand. Yeah, that's, that's part of the equation. Respecting 10 8, keeping hands that fold to a check raise that you have in real bad shape in there. Now, full houses are obviously a concern. That said, a straight, even, even, I mean, there's two straights, and this they both have the weaker one, but that's a very strong hand. Ooh, and Webster with an interesting check back. <laughs> so the boys are going to chop it up. Sort of interesting how cautiously players will navigate. Yeah, Webster's limb. Ah, this this uh, little feature here, bit of a Webster limb showcase. He's had a bunch of kind of tough and interesting decisions and so far has largely navigated them quite well folding the nines other there's another one I'm forgetting but where he he made the correct decision given their hands I believe it was with a value better a call and, and then this one a, a tough decision maybe he thought it's more likely that Ivy has him beat and obviously never folds, then Webster has the best hand and gets called value betting. Yeah, you right? do have to identify just sort of how many hands are out there that we're going to be able to get value from and how many hands are out there that are going to maybe put us in a really bad spot. Yeah. If we yeah, like one of get those after it. Spots where if Ace 8 isn't good, I, I'm pretty sure he always gets called either by 8, 10, or a full house. Yeah. I mean, with a full house, I think never folding. And then, um, you know, if eight, 10, ace eight is good, you're basically getting called by two pair, you know, trips. But I mean, your opponent never really has no. trips there, the, the six, six pairing. pairing. So, yeah. you know, you're trying to just get called by two pair and, and he's just like, well, you know, maybe I get called by two pair. Honestly, maybe three pair turns its hand into a bluff versus me, right? The two pair that gets counterfeited in some sense by the six takes those blockers and makes a bluff. So pretty, when you parse it down, a pretty reasonable check back that makes sense. Tend to agree. 
Rui Cao, meanwhile, ace 10 off suit. Trying to find out who's down to gamble. Mm. Santi Jang. Thank you. Might he be a customer with King Jack off suit? Roy just open jamming it for a decent amount of annies. Wow. What a nose for hand composition there is Rui Cal. Suspected Santi's hand was in the neighborhood of King 10. Just one card off. Dario San Martino with a little speculating with the 10 7 suited. This is his first Triton appearance. He, not his first tournament, but here at Cyprus. He played in the 100K main event, didn't cash, and now short deck. Given the timing of, his, of when he came, it seems like maybe he's here for the short deck. <laughs> Certainly haven't known him to be a short deck player to this point, but obviously things do change. Yeah, as Santi Jang jamming the two queens, Duan was ready for both the queens and the ace jack. And I know 16%. Doesn't seem high, but when you compare this to like the same spot in No Limit Hold'em, I mean, what is Ace Jack off in this in No Limit? It's like 6% or something crazy. If so that. it's way higher. Two sixes and a 10. Great flop for the Queens. Turn is an eight. And the river is the Jack. It is too little for. Danny Tang. That's it. Danny did he did beat Duan for the side. I I can't remember who had who covered in terms of Danny and Santi for that twenty four K on the side, but the fact that Tang is reaching for his mic. Not a good sign. When is the break? Hmm? Not interested. Not sure what the holdings are. As we now catch up to the action. No, because they're half hour levels and after level fall. So three. Or they're like 35 minute levels. Nice. So we play three. 110 or something like this, I think. And like 130 or something, I think. Is it 400 something behind? 410. Looks like the limp got punished there by San Martino's Jack 10 suited. Originally, that was the darling hand of short deck, but 9 10 suited has since. 
come along to sort of displace it in terms of favorability? I mean, it, it's close. Sometimes it's a can be a little bit splitting hairs, you know. Uh, they, they can both play similarly that way, and that they play good against, play well against ace king, aces and kings. Hands to attack when your opponent only continues with the very very top of their range. But yeah. It, in those spots, 10-9 Pursuited performs a little bit better, and so is Preferred. You know, it's like one of those things, I guess a good analogy would be in Hold'em, you know, it's like Ace-5, Ace-4, Ace-3 suited, right, are the ones with the blocker, and then plus you get the wheel draw to give you a little more equity. Um, but sometimes it's like you don't play all four of them super crazy for like the five bet rejam because then you're just doing it too often, so you pick the best one even though there's not a big difference between them with the ace five right so it, the solvers pick ace five it's pretty it's somewhat similar analogy here where yeah, yeah i mean if you can play crazy often enough there then you would do it with both but if you know it can only be x percent of that time and that time based on hand combos is small enough you would prefer 10 9 to jack 10 suited anyways moving on Meanwhile, fairly modest pot of 80K here with two clubs and two aces on board. San Martino finds himself heads up with Rui Cao, who makes a queen. Had the probably gut shot. San Martino, meanwhile, had flopped the king. Always held better. Able to take it on the end. Yeah, Dario's arrival, a bit of a surprise. I, I, I wasn't certain whether or not he was just going to play the main and then scoot out of here, but seeing him plunk down into the short deck does suggest that he's been putting some time into some other disciplines. I was up late having drinks with Dario last night. Okay. So... He, he was, we were getting after it a little bit. You guys over at the garden party? At the garden party, but then, you know, that shuts down at two. And walked, a group of us walked to the to bar, had a few more drinks. So, I mean, you know, this is pretty late. He probably slept in, might not have reg right away. In fact, I think he did late reg when he came up to this table. Two kings for San Martino, the Razor. After Santi tried to limp the ace jack and he just lets it go. Producer James doing a little bit of homework. In his downtime, is managed to be put to task by the chat that we're inquiring on YouTube. Why is Tom Dwan only now getting here? Obviously, we know him to be a prolific full deck player. Story is that he was tied up overseas and managed to make it here midway through, but he's pleased that he arrived when he did. Rasp, because he prefers short deck. Yeah, no surprise there. Boss, Paul Bois, co-founder of the Triton series. Tremendously experienced short deck player. Limping, allowing Webster Lim to do the same. Elton Sang on the button. Wakes up with the 
two black nines, which do not improve on the ace-queen seven board. The board gives Paul Broadway gut shot up against the top pair of Webster. Twenty-five K the bet. As Paul leads right out. Webster's going to make the call and Elton <laughs> balking there will allow them to proceed. Yeah, Paul with a nice hand to attack this pot. Ten of spades, super relevant. Um Immediate gutter, range advantage with the relative position, him being the first one in the pot. Now for Paul, with 122K in the middle and unimproved, the decision becomes whether or not he's going to turn this into a multi-barrel bluff. The answer thus far is no, as his check does open the door for Webster put some more out there, but it does feel as though Paul's balanced enough to where betting this type of texture on the end could lead to him putting you in the blender. Yeah, I mean, definitely a spot here where Webster would love to just see a fold. But he's in position, he rates to have the best hand a decent amount. You'd love to deny equity. And, uh, but yeah, with just top pair, kind of mediocre kicker, pretty happy to take it down. Possibly unexpected. Yet another good navigation by Webster. Paul yeah, limping out. again with yeah. King-10 offsuit this time. Ivan Liao wags his finger with a six. <laughs> and Paul's going to give him a spin. <laughs> spin the wheel, Ivan. Oh, yeah. wow. And Paul's going to be happy that he's a favorite. And there you see an example of why. The King High board putting him in the lead in this quarter million chip pot. Sixes are working for Ivan Liao. The nine. Easy, okay. Not a help to Ivan. <laughs> And the queen will seal his bullet. As a nice uptick for Paul Poix heading to the break. Yeah, and I think the rebuy period is over now because it appears that everybody's had to put their bullets in play. Tom is no longer the chip leader. 1.2, it's Wei Sang Yu. We have 38 total entries. And the blinds, we 10 and 20,000. Ivy and Paul Fua, the monster stacks, over a million each. That five-handed table as we are still in the early stages of day one of the 30K short deck, anti only. And this is going to be the last of the no limit short deck events in terms of pre-flop. Moving forward, we're going to make the change and play pot limit. That'll be a different wrinkle. So savor this one while you can, I suppose, would be the uh, the moral of this story. There is a lot more coverage still to come tonight. Rumor has it that we may also have a cash game brewing. Not absolutely positive whether or not we're going to be able to bring you coverage of that. But as you know, 
each and every night. That's what happens after the tournament draws to a close. Rast and I are going to step aside along with the players for this break, but we shall return to North Cyprus with more right after this. Seems like a good spot to just stop and go and put the rest of the chips in. Yeah, just 130k back, so it's not as though this bet is so big that it's going to clear all that many th hands. Yeah, it's it's very connected. A lot of guys would. Oh, he's going to check. I wonder if Malinowski bets out. Looks like he is going to just complete the hand. Yeah, and that's going to be enough to get Davies stack into the middle. A little bit of a time bank roll, but never folding. Maybe occasionally someone busts on another table, I guess, is what he's waiting for. And sure enough, Davies goes as deep into the shot clock as he can before making the call with top pair and the gut shot. It was never a function of thinking about whether or not he wanted to make this call, but rather, as you mentioned, Randy, seeing if he can get another confrontation to develop at the outer table. And developments here have grown grim for Davies, who now needs a 10, 9, or a 7 after Malinowski turned the ace clubless. <laughs> After the fourth one shows up on the river, Davies is showered in 10th place. $225,000 will be going his way to add to his over $3 million in career earnings. Sportsmanship. A lot of these other guys are just used to playing home games and they're like, you know, looking at him easily. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's 100 k but it still feels a little home gamey to me. Oh, fair play, certainly front and center. Horace King Nine offsuit, sitting on ten blinds. Pushes it in, going for it. 
trying. Man's got some gamble. Yeah, that's definitely a little bit okay. gamble. Sixes. Oh, six ninety. Considering he's got two million, he might think it's a decent spot because if he loses six hundred k, it's not so bad. Horus will jam any ace, I would think, in this spot. So ace five, ace four, ace three, ace douche dominate very well. Little cool. pocket pairs. Wow, makes the call. Well done. Malinowski, staying out of the way with that ace deuce suited, by the way. So Punsri will be the man that gives Horace Y a spin here early. Yeah, because, like, uh, you know, I don't look, but... Uh, Two overs for Horace. Can he connect with the king or the nine? The answer is no so far, as Punsri's set of sixes will leave Horace in need of running straight or flush cards. 1.35 million chip pot. And quad sixes will be overkill, as Horace Way draws dead. Think of the game. Punat Punsri giving us our first victim game, bro. Nice of room. the final table. Plenty yeah, of I mean, congratu yeah. congratulatory yeah. love being shown <laughs> to Horace, yeah. who was the yeah, short stack, and I his departure I mean, I didn't will come I with a $280,000 gift wrap payout and a pay jump of 86000 to the remainder of the field, 366000 We'll go to the players from this point forward. If you're gonna go down, go down against quads. If you're gonna go down, go down in that dope Louis Vuitton sweater. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. And we'll see if Horace does have a flush draw. Not the greatest one. It's, it is something, he's at queen high. What's important here is that Kuhn is playing off 1.1 million stack when I think Kuhn would jam almost all ace X's when Wayne limps the small blind with this stack size. So we can kind of throw that ace out of Jason Kuhn's range. And you can see Wayne may potentially throw in multiple barrels because of that. Targeting 80K, like a king or deuce. 80k bet does get called. Another 160 into the pot. Now a Broadway draw added to the fray for Wayne. Yeah, Wayne's got a lot of kind of weakish draws. But the thing is, we're playing very wide ranges. This limp pot. So Kuhn can have a lot of weak hands that doesn't want to continue, say, a deuce X. Or maybe he's got a spade. With, you know, that just can't really handle the heat. Like a queen. Eight, eight of spades, something like this. And wow, Wayne firing again. Small bet. Dreamy stuff for Kuhn, by the way. Yeah, Kuhn's not worried about his hand. It's the question is, how do I extract the most value? If I raise now, it does seem like he'd be very strong because he shouldn't logically be raising anything but a good, good hand. So that's why he's calling here. He thinks that he can extract most value by flatting and slow playing. Obviously some vulnerability to his hand in the event that another spade were to have come off. Not in reality, given that Hyung only has the five of spades, but in terms of board texture and Kuhn's flush being reduced to a one card eight. Meanwhile, 700,000 in the middle. Largely thanks to Wayne Hyung, who has barreled not once but twice after limping pre with this queen five. And he's got the chips to put the pressure on Jason here. Can't imagine he thinks he's got showdown value. I, it seems that he wants to put in more chips. King X would have a lot of trouble <coughs> calling. Like I said earlier, Jason, his best hand is like a random two pair that turned or river or King X. And these hands would have a lot of trouble calling down three barrels. We have a clear short stack across the table. That's important because Jason Kuhn can't call off as light because of that fact at this final table. See, it's kind of looking around. All in. So Wayne 
giving Jason Kuhn exactly what he was hoping for as a result of flatting the turn. Nine and 10. And that three barrel bluff will prove very costly for Wayne Hyung. Not only in terms of chips lost, but in terms of chips passed over to Jason Kuhn, always dangerous. And you can just kind of feel it, the excitement for Jason. This is exactly what he was hoping for. The early double, give me some breathing room, let me operate. He is so technically sound in these spots. Those four titles didn't come by accident. Yeah, and you know, he knows how to maneuver and that really does put him in a nice position. Here and, you know, per played perfectly by slow playing. See if it's 40k short, or 40k too much. Ace of spades and it, save not it, save enough. It do you want me to tank for a little bit while you figure it out? No, you're good. Oh. It'll still be like, no matter what. No. Don't sleep on what Henrik Eklund just offered to do, by the way, man. And this is... I, I mean, it really, uh, I'm not going to allege that like, oh, at any other poker tournament, you don't see this sort of behavior. But there are those who I think sort of feel at ease when they're here that, you know, everybody's on their best behavior. I wouldn't. And that's... And welcome back to the desk for continuing coverage of the $30,000 short deck anti-only event from North Cyprus, the Triton Super High Roller Series Festival, transitioning from No Limit to Short Deck. Ali Najad and Brian Rast here with you, and we have our prize pool set. It is 1.14 million in total. Champion here will be receiving $387,000. Sixth place will be 80K, so... Not exactly a massive ROI, but we're just getting warmed up. And there is a look on the right at the payouts. I'll click over to the leaders, and we get a look at Wei Xiang Yu, who has 138 entry antes, one of just four players who have over 1 million in chips. And among them, two Westerners in Tom Duan and Phil Ivey, possibly some of the most experienced Westernized uh, short deck players out there, Ras, spending a lot of time out in Macau playing the cash games. And the, the cash in the tournament experience sort of lend themselves nicely. Uh, you know, the transition is fairly easy. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. In short deck? Okay. You know, looking, well, I mean, listen, there's big differences in tournament short deck. It distorts it quite a bit. We'll see how that plays out when they go to pot limit. Um, you know, when you were pointing out those, uh, and if we want to go to the payouts so you can see, I, I, before we pass over, I just want to, that's a pretty big sixth place jump from zero to 80. Now I know it's not for Triton events, but this is a 30K buy-in, so right. that's nearly a, th a 3X. Something to keep an eye on so without question. that's a, you know, a decent bubble, so to speak. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then unlike when they paying out the 17 and it's flat, like you instantly are starting with jumps and, um, you know, there's not another 80K jump till third to second. So, you know, just pointing out some things about the price structure, but the bubble should, play uh I, I think we'll see some effects on the bubble there of guys just trying to make it in cash for yeah. 3x uh the buy-in a little snug the task at hand always to get on the right side of the bubble as we will have a new feature table that will include sam greenwood who with 89 antes will trail Wei Xiang yu lun lun under the malaysian flag ike haxton makita badziukuski michael zhang all joining the party. Zhang playing under the UK flag. His participation in Triton events dates back to London in 2019, where he went one for three, a sixth place cash in the 100K pound main event for 711,000 for him there. Sitting this pot out. As Greenwood with the pocket sevens decides to just lead out here.
And yeah, and this is a, a range play, again, kind of a pretty common theme. I feel like I've, I've said in many pots, both today and in previous short decks, where the player first in the pot is the one who hits these kind of like high card boards the strongest, and you'll see them betting a lot, even with hands that, you know, seem pretty weak and disconnected. Um, and you see it got Queen Jack, which has that hand just destroyed to fold. So these kind of range plays are effective, and then uh, these top flight players are aware in making them. So well played, Mr. Greenwood. Yeah, kind of something you wouldn't have expected out of two sevens there, but on display, perhaps that range advantage as a limper up front. Although we do see a wide variety of hands sort of entering pots from up front operating under the assumption that a decent percentage of the time things are going to get limped around behind them. Yeah, there I think it's I think there's a discrepancy. It's it's one of the areas where play differs more among these really good players. Like some guys are definitely much looser up front than others, you know? So, I mean, some people do play pretty tight up front and other people don't. And um, it's not clear based on the fact that you can have quite good players who, who take both approaches. There is yet another limp up front this time from Michael Zhang's Jack-10 offsuit. And you see Lun Lun contemplating with Ace-10 suited. He limps as well. And two kings for Badzi Akuski from the button. After Haxton comes along, Nikita will do a little math here. He's got 770 and everybody covered, so. Yeah, he's going to decide his size. I'm thinking probably like 5x. So that'd be like around 100. Yeah. And he tends to agree. Yeah, and realistically, the only hand that could continue there, the ace-10 of clubs doesn't, so he's going to take this one down. Pick up pick up some chips. How often does the button get frisky in those multi-way limp pots there, just looking at the opportunity to pick up a pot, but without a hand as strong as two kings? Oh, it happens. Yeah. There's some good good candidates, stuff like ace-9 off, like king-queen king, king queen off, etc., that we're, when you are called, you do have a little something to play with. You have good blocker effects going for you. And those are hands that are kind of easy folds for the limp jam versus the, the two 400 plus K stacks, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, I think those would be hands you, you might see him make that play with that are obviously significantly weaker than Kings. You know, Kings is calling a limp jam, but those two hands would not. That, the the you know, ace nine off, king queen off example. So right now, moving, uh, just taking a look at the app, it looks like there are 16 players left in this tournament. Uh, it pays six. So, you know, I mean, we're not near the bubble yet, but it's definitely something that's starting to enter the players' minds. Well, you kind of want to set yourself up in a way to be in a position to take advantage of what we would imagine the ICM considerations to be going to the bubble, and that is to say you want to build a stack. So this tournament is no limit. Do we know? Because is this tournament no limit the whole way through, but the next one is pot limit? Now, I hadn't heard about or, this. This was yeah. a rumor that was presented to you. I mean, I was just listening to the table chatter. I think Makita was talking about it. And our producer James is confirming. Okay. I believe our producer James said that this one is no limit and the, the ones after this are pot limit. Dynamite flop here for Batsy Akuski, by the way, who yeah. shares king eight, but has the benefit of a flush draw.
Well, that's exciting in the sense that we're going to get a good mixture of this is a multi-bullet, no limit. I think the next one might be one bullet, so not three bullets. It's just all on the table, but pot limit. And then the one after that might just be one bullet, but no limit. So all of them going to be a little different in terms of those variables. Nine on the turn, rolling off after Zhang checked back, and Bats flings 25K out there, just about a quarter pot. Zhang will make the call, and obviously if you're Batsy Kuski, barring the arrival of a club, you might be wondering whether or not you can barrel this river, but of course, with the stone nuts on the river here, Fancy Akuski has all options. Would seem, with Ford was straight out there as well, that maybe the time is right to also, fire into this 130. Also known as the Nizzles. Oh, there you go. Nuts wins. Bads. <laughs> Tried to do some trapping there. He close his good friend. With the smile like, I was just trying to trap you. You didn't fall into it. Well, speaking of traps, Rast, might have been extraordinarily tight. By that I mean my trapezius muscles. And so, your good buddy, Antonio S. Fandiari, once upon a Happy time, didn't have a 10. <laughs> during Happy I didn't World have a 10. Series of Poker main event coverage, pioneered the move of getting a massage whilst providing commentary. And I gotta say, as I am employing that move at present in the effort to relieve some tension and restore some consciousness, just kind of dozing off a little bit there. I'm two ice mochas in. The right side's been loosened up by the lovely Christina. And uh, I'm ready to go. And you're on the list, right? You're first Let's up. Let's go, Ali. Let's you're first do up, this. Rast, you we can go all night. Just I'm mochas, not... mochas and massages. Like, why yes. stop? Just keep throwing at us. Well, we you got this. Have a mocha we got cash and... games. Let's just bang out all the commentary. You want to have a mocha and massage last longer? Yeah, all nighter. Like all night. All just night see who commentary can have more party. mochas and and more massage. <laughs> it could get expensive, Rast. You got to do what you got to do, you know. Sometimes you just have to mm. bite the bullet. I'm telling you, this is wonderful. You know, there are other therapists available if you want to go dueling massages. No? I, I can see how exquisite your current massage looks, so I think I might just wait, you know? What do you mean by how exquisite my current massage I, looks? I, dude, Brad? you should see your smile, okay? <laughs> the old Ali was sitting there almost dying, oh. and the new guy is, well, look, even like moans of pleasure. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. no, no. It was the King 9 6 board that really <laughs> left me feeling riveted. As yes, it's connected sure. with so many of these hands. Yes. Four it's... way affair. Wei Xiang, the overall chip leader, has himself a pair of sixes. And that's out in front of the boys at present, though Lun Lun does have a gutter. Yeah. And Jack-10 going to go for it with, in some ways, really the only person who kind of connected with this board with the, with the gutter. And as you can see, everybody just super ready to move, move right on along to the next pot. Indeed. Lun Lun came upon us earlier this year at the Cypress Warm-Up Festival. Still has yet to cash in his first Triton event. Mm. Possibly going to break the seal here today. No shame in it, by the way, as we've touched on it multiple times. There are some snake bit folks out there and chief among them, Nick Petrangelo, of course, the 0 for 21 stretch and not harping on it as we know it is absolutely not a reflection of his tremendous talent. More so yeah, Lung his Lung is disproportionate run bad. Lun Loon, this is event number 15 for him. It would be the 15, no cash. Yeah, Nick at 21. I mean, I did look it up, though, as somebody the other day was saying, hey, I'm looking for a poker coach who's somebody 
And I was like, you know, I think Nick plays really well. No idea if he coaches, but maybe you should ask him. And I looked it up, and it, I think the guy's cashed for like 25 or 26 million. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, maybe he hasn't really got it done here at Triton, but he's gotten it done everywhere else. So, well, speaking of getting it hard done. Hard to feel too, too, too bad for him. Although I, I kind of do when I hear the streak, I'm, I'm pulling for him now. Every Triton, I am pulling for Nick Petrangelo to end that run. Yeah, I think we've earned the right yeah. to be homers if Nicky P's in the field. Haxton, open to 110,000 here. Bad Ziakuski flatted, hasn't pipped. Greenwood, though, with that very attractive... 10-9 suited that 10 we've been talking suited. about. Yeah, you know, I mean, it happens. And then all of a sudden, you have a good good run, and you're out. Like, I'll give an example. Seth Davies. Oh. It was like 16 or 18 or something like that, no cash. Well, I think it was 20. 20, no cash. And then he's cashed six of the last 11. Right. And I didn't do the math, but I'm pretty good at estimation. And my very brief estimation is that he's actually out of the hole with that six six for 11. The numbers that he's been winning, I think, add up more to the buy-ins that he's in for. So, you know what? It just All it takes is a good run. You just Sometimes you just got to stick with it. Obviously, we don't know how many re-entries were involved True. in that. Dry spell yeah. as we see Haxton jamming with aces up on this flop. Bads, backdoor diamonds, less of a consideration, but the gut shot, of course, certainly something to go with top pair. And we can see here, almost surprisingly, how well ace-jack performs against ace-10 equity-wise. I mean, it is a stone flip. Just off the, the immediate queen and jack out, king, queen, jack, all being out. You might be surprised to see that. 646,000 in the middle. <laughs> and on the turn, the Queen of Diamonds, it gets no better for Batsy Akuski as he has made Broadway flush draw to boot. And Haxton will hit the lockers after flopping aces up. Man, this game makes you so superstitious no matter how much uh, you want to say you're not. <laughs> I would just nice. want a Makita to call because if you pull the guy 10 9 with the back door, and I'm like, well, this sucks. That's. Puts him close to a million in chips. Like 150, yeah. I think it would be the call. Well, well, maybe he wins if he jumps. Maybe Ace Jack folds. <laughs> Kind of a tough spot with Ace Jack. Just trying to get value off you, Sam, with 110. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He succeeded. He succeeded. <laughs> Gave it straight to Makita. <laughs> and I stand corrected. The pickup there from Haxton actually vaulted Makita I from mean, fourth in chips at roughly a million to the overall chip match, lead you know? in front of Wei Xiang Yu. Fifteen left and six being paid. Michael Zhang moving all in. Queen Jack suited. I'll take it. Yep. <laughs> yes, you will, Michael. You will take it. <clears throat> you know... For most of his time here at the Triton Series, I believe Johan Gilbert had been employing the services of Christina, had kind of commandeered her exclusively. And as she begins to work other areas of my back, I'm beginning to understand the commitment that Johan had to utilizing her services, skillful hands, deep into the musculature of 
Well, that's a bit rich of a term with which to describe my back. <laughs> <laughs> All I can tell you is that sweet relief is upon me, Rast, and I have a second wind. Wei Shang. Our, our producer heard this Two and tens. now Bad news. asked Ali to do the cash game later, so yes, Greenwood. let's Don't go. Don't be silly. I'm going straight to bed. <laughs> 90. Upstairs we go, says Sam. Mm -hmm. And two okay hands behind, but ones that definitely don't want to get squeezed here by a limp re-raise. Wei, Shang, it's not very likely to limp re-raise two tens, I'd say. In fact, I'd almost just rule it out. He probably just calls, and we see three. Tens versus queens. I presume he would have preferred to be multi-way here and just kind of have a little bit more ease with which to release the tens unimproved on the flop. Now the water's a touch murkier without the upside of pot odds as the paired flop with a six dangler. Two hearts on board. Might make it challenging for Wei Xiang to escape further damage against these queens. All in all, a pretty good flop for queens. It's the type of board where it's much harder to make straights um, for your opponent because of the pair. You're blocking a lot of those king-queen combos, having two queens yourself. So Greenwood coming with 55k into 220, so that's less than quarter pot. A C bet that puts a lot of pressure on Ace X. A lot of those hands end up folding, and which is nice because you get that single over card to fold. Much more likely to hit in short deck with only 36 cards in the deck instead of 52. Nikita, you already left the country and come back. Have you already left the country and come back? Yeah. Okay. Easy? No problem? Yeah, that's like him. And for Greenwood, do we begin to consider pot control? The two-tone factor, not as much of a concern, although he does unblock. A couple hours there and 10 hours out of yeah. Both flush draws. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's got a decision here between bet and check for sure. I mean, better's never folding. That said, betting here like to deny right? equity yeah. to and flush draws, uh, or at least yeah. charge them you, should you they continue, right? no, I just definitely really, really nice. Oh, nice. nice. That's perfect. Maybe get value from a hand like 10s or 9s or Jack X. The tricky thing about betting is it's pretty gross when you get check raised. I'd imagine if he gets called here, he does not bet river unless a king or queen comes. And as you can even see, the one of the very one of the hands right below him on the on the value chart folds to a C bet there. So the bet there mostly designed to charge or deny equity to draws as opposed to really get value for queens. But that becomes like very relevant in this game, just like it is in PLO, where you're up against hands with a lot more equity regularly. So a look at the distribution at the table. Official chip counts here showing Michael Zhang neck and neck with Lun Lun. Rebuy period has ended. Sam Greenwood, dead middle, 98 bigs. I say bigs, we mean Annie's. And Wei Xiang Yu has seated the Overall chip lead in the event. He has slipped to fourth. Badzi Akuski had taken it over, but action elsewhere has produced a new winner in terms of big stack in Kiat Lee, who is a late arrival to the festival here to play the short decks. Tom Duan, second.
Now, this is a hand here, just like I discussed in the other time, that might consider making it like 100K, right? Kings, and you were like, what are other hands? Some of these like offsuit kind of wheelie aces, <clears throat> ace nine or ace 10 off being preferred to ace seven. So definitely something I'd imagine Zhang considered, but opted not to do. Definitely not obligatory. Queen nine seven, two clubs, the open ender for Badziakuski <laughs> as Wei Xiang checks the gut shot over to him. Yeah. There are sevens for Zhang as Bads checks as well, Rest. I was saying that that check uh, by Wei up front there, one I, I expect him to continue versus most reasonable action that comes behind him. Look at that, the 10 of clubs is the dream card for Wei Xiang after Zhang checked back the pair. He now has the king high straight with the second nut flush redraw. That's Yakuski facing the bet of 40,000, which is half pot. Has a pair of tens. Open ender, but no club in a three-way pot. Bit of a dicey spot here. Not surprised to see him pass. Some yeah. respect for Wei's bet. Not a fan of dicey spots, although he certainly is capable of navigating them, is Badziakuski. Navigated it quite well there with a fold. Definitely the best, um, if not theoretically, most certainly, versus King Jack with a club. Right. I do think if he ha has 10 Jack with a club there, He's, uh, that's probably just makes it a little, you know, that increase in his own equity with the club draw, plus now blocking flushes. He probably continues with that, but 10 jack, no club, moving right along, and uh, another good decision. Two nines for Lun Lun. He's a limper. One nine busy in Badziakuski's hand. Yeah, and Makita with similar idea here, but this time with one of the best Eight combos five. to do this attack and uh, takes the spot that I had discussed a couple times already with the ace nine off here. It's going to get it through the two people behind him. Now we see what Lun wants to do. Given his stack size, it is a spot where I kind of think it's in all three options on the table. Call, shove, or fold. Shove a little ambitious, but not ridiculous. Queen 10, six. Adds with just ace high. this he's just gonna take his little stab rest and two nines in a real no man's land and I mean that's a see. pretty good board for the razor there the only hands you're really doing well against with nines are if he raises something like ace nine ace eight off obviously you have those hands in trouble you have two nines yourself so you are blocking ace nine um, even some of the other weaker hands like king queen king jack even, you know, ace-jack, ace-ten, all hit that, mm -hmm. as well as the, the super strong hand. So not too many places to go with two nines and not too many ways to improve if, if you do call. Ace-queen. 
clean now for Bads, an upgrade from the Ace-9. His turn to limp. Suited and connected. Wei Xiang joins the party. Greenwood says run it. Comes up empty. Ace Jack nine board. Batsy Kuski. Top pair against bottom pair. And it was interesting three ways. Nine eight suited actually had the most equity here. Some of that being a function of like the ace queen being off suit and the queen taking away one of Makita's outs. And as Ali alluded to earlier, the card removal being that much more important in this game. And uh, certainly, Makita as the first one in, the ace jack nine off, flop, high cards, he has the range advantage, and this time, actually has the best hand, uh, bets and takes it down unopposed. 40K does the job. I feel like Makita should get some sunglasses that just like auto detect when he's entered the pot. He can leave them down and they'll kind of frost when he's in the pot, but then, you know, like the, whatever that electro glass is, then they'll just go clear when he's not in the pot. Just save him a little step. Maybe I'll have to develop that technology. Is Michael Zhang taking his own pulse? It, is there a, it would appear is there a cardiac way. event that he's monitoring? He's like, how do I feel about this limp under the gun by Bads? It's his third straight pot. He's conducting an experiment on himself. Right. He's like, I'm going to jam and see if my BPM goes up. No takers. What do you think that side card is, Rast? Another jack? Guaranteed? Ten of spades. Yeah, I like the ten of spades on the jam more than I like the other jack. Don't you? Yeah. Queen? Queen of spades? No? I think... I think he gets called by ace queen, but not ace ten. So I think I'd and you like the jack yeah, of I like ten the spades ten, right? ten of spades more. Two queens now, and the experiment continues. Yeah, he's gonna have a few missing data points there. Is I mean, you can't you can't put the chips in with the same hand you're checking your pulse with. You got to yeah, do it with the other one. Right, agreed. Big fish move there. <laughs> <laughs> Two sevens for Wei Xiang. Another pair entering the pot. One of those sevens busy. Now in the muck. Oh, and another pocket pair with another busy card. Lun with the decision here, basically, whether to jam or just call. Let's see what he comes with. Be nice to take this down, that 80k out there, but uh, don't really love getting called by one of those EP limpers who could be trapping. But sometimes you got to take chances. He's not gonna like getting called here by Zhang. Yeah, he's not, yeah, didn't limp to fold. Always popular limp jam move employed by Zhang. The sevens promptly find their way home into the muck, and Lun Lun's <coughs> just gonna have to shake his head here. But no, 26% equity. Really less. If we're taking into account cards, we saw get folded. Good point. Because there's that one of the two tens is gone. Oh, wait a minute. He's up against a set, but he's got two pulls at the straight draw. Kind of a good flop for him, actually, 
because he ups the number of outs with mm -hmm. the gutter. Oh, Gives him a chance to pull at something I'm other than a 10. I'd give you that board and, and you call. I but tell you that board, you call, right? <laughs> unfortunately for Lun Loon, the first cash won't be coming in this 30K short deck as the seal remains intact and not in a good way. For Michael Zhang, however, that pickup will continue to cushion his stack against erosion with these ever increasing blinds. Antes, rather. And 14 left, it would appear. No, 13 left. Roy Cat, Ivan Liao, oh. <clears throat> Chidwick, Tang, Ivan, Roy Cow, Ike, and now Lun Loon busted. So 13 left. The app with a couple updates mid sentence. So we are now starting to get a bit closer to the bubble. Still need seven players to bust to make the money. So that's in a 38 entry field, a decent number. But clearly something that will be on the mind of the players at this point. One more out and we go to two tables. Greenwood. Limps, Badziakuski accepting the invitation. Overall, chip lead still. Can afford to get involved in a multitude of pots and perhaps apply pressure. Zhang says run it and both he and Badziakuski and Greenwood have all hit the case 10. And you'll see, despite Queen-10 being the biggest, it really doesn't have that much more equity. And that's because, you know, I mean, it's pretty likely an ace or a king comes. And then they all play queens, I mean, sorry, 10s and 9s with an ace or king. And, you know, if an ace or king doesn't come, then there's actually a decent chance in those runouts that the jack or 10 improve. So... A function of taking all those cards out of the deck means in a lot of these spots where you'd think some of these hands just should have way lower equity, especially compared to Hold'em, they actually don't. A little 15k bet from Bads being respected by Zhang and now being deliberated upon by Greenwood. And we're going to take it upstairs here. And for Greenwood, how much 9x plus is associated with his opening range? Well, I mean, he I believe he limped to come in. Right. Right. And it's from the hijack, so, you know, he definitely can have some 9x hands. He's taking the 10. He's blocking 9-10 pocket 10s, as well as the jack, which blocks... Jack nine, as well as maybe, hey, are my opponents going to continue versus the check raise with Jack eight or Queen Jack as the best open ended straight draws? And uh, he turns his hand into a bluff. Very interesting and advanced play. Uh, and we could see it worked. Um, yeah. Got through not one, but two other tens. Impressive by Greenwood. Yeah. He seems quite comfortable playing short deck. Sam Greenwood, among the more accomplished Triton veterans, 8.6 million in career earnings on the tour, courtesy of 14 caches. He has already got two under his belt here in North Cyprus. Ninth in the 30K, six max, no limit, and then second place in the 75K that was the prelude to the Coin Rivet Invitational, which Michael Zhang played in. That cash and the 75K for Greenwood was a second place finish worth 1.2 million plus. So this actually 
is something that's showing a lot of discipline. Uh, and we've we've moved the ante up to 12k. Gut shot straight draw up front this time for Greenwood. It was the party starter. That's some meaningful connection to this board as Zhang's ace high is also a gut shot. Yeah, but Zhang, this bet makes makes a lot of sense. He's He has a draw, probably one of the players who has more nines given the relative given that he limped behind two players there. Might have the most 9x hands. Oh, Greenwood with an interesting decision here as to whether or not he continues. Decides he should be continuing his gutters like this and is actually in the kind of cool spot where if a seven comes, it gives him the better straight versus ace eight, which his opponent has. As well as, as we can see, the jack or queen come and give him open-ended straight draws. So he picks that up. How will he play it? Will he, will he lead or will he check? Comes with, comes with check here. And both players hit the eight, which leaves Zhang with the better kicker as he looks over at his opponent somewhat intently. I mean, Greenwood kind of has one of the worst hands he can have. So I wouldn't be shocked to see him bluff here. I mean, it's pretty hard for him to have worse than nines and eights. I mean, hands like eight, seven or eight, 10 being about as, as bad as it gets. I mean, maybe he can have ace eight. king. Eight. It's a good eight. Oh, happy to so hit it eight. Gets but, you know, down. some showdown with the eight. It's an interesting spot, and I, I wonder I eight, whether eight, or not seven. he bluffs yeah. or some other players would bluff there. I guess I'd rather hear you say two pair. I feel like if you say two pair, it's like a, a low card. Like a six suited. Yeah. yeah, I guess he can have a six time? suited. No, it's like five minutes ago. Potentially. Probably will miss it. I don't yeah. think we played the hand. Seven. That definitely wasn't. There was no time banks used at all. Yeah. Could be five minutes though. I guess we just missed it. Could be four minutes. Pretty pretty long hand. Yeah. Yeah. Ace king, ace queen with a diamond. So maybe there's enough weaker hands that he doesn't want to go as high up as an eight to bluff. Well, as high up as ace king is within the limp range for Batsy Akuski. This level's too hard. Too much math. Greenwood joking about how difficult it is to just count the pot at a 12, 24K level, <laughs> which I, I don't disagree with. Bads with two overs, the Broadway gutty. Greenwood is pink top pair, highly coordinated wet board. Check being taken under advisement by Greenwood. 24. 24K the bet. Just looking to get a little clarity on Makita's holding.
And Bads takes his time before flicking in the call. Ooh. Binky, the queen on the turn, hits Bads Yakuski and the board texture deteriorating for Greenwood's purposes. Yeah, I mean, given the pre-flop action, kind of seems like this is a very good card for Makita, the under-the-gun limp and flop check call. I mean, he's like really the only player that can have ace-king in an unraised pot, which is the nuts. So, I mean, he just gets to bet that card a lot. I mean, Greenwood can't even raise him. So he has the nuts that time, but yeah, I think you see a lot of bets there. Yeah, once Bad's peeled, that's the kind of card that just draws the curtain on Jack Six all day. Well, in addition to the lovely Triton trophies and those amazing payouts, we shower our champions with the finest in jewels. Shambhala jewels to be specific. Handcrafters of our Triton bracelets, diamonds, precious stones, 18 karat gold. Only the best for our winners, Rast. Only the best. Only Shambhala. I can't remember what Shambhala means. Someone, first off, it means the best. You, does it? No, it doesn't. You just say it's some sort of Buddhist concept, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody was telling me about it the other day. We didn't get the uh, the corporate rundown as we see Greenwood with the gut shot straight draw and flush draw. Just the gutter for Bad Zikuski, but his ace high is at present through non-attachment. Best hand. You become the best. Ah, uh, you drawing upon your, your recognition of Buddhist wisdom? Yes, and my... Channeling your inner Siddhartha? Unabashed bullshit ability. Because I, no, I do not know what the translation of Shambhala is, so just going to let that be aware. Well, but listen, there's this thing called the Internet, Rast. You want to take the reins real quick? I'll figure <laughs> it out. All right, here we go. Both players with straight draws. The King of Diamonds, though, a pretty nice little flush draw. And he, pretty nice little turn card the King of Spades is for Greenwood as the King High becomes top pair of kings. So a hand which would probably do some bluffing, bluffy McBlufferson, now has some value. So Greenwood's approach to this pot likely to change. He leads it, and Makita really doesn't have very much, so nowhere to go except into the muck. Producer James has beat me to the punch as I am on the Wikipedia page, but yeah. I was having trouble stumbling upon a simple explanation for what Shambhala is, which is a place of peace and tranquility, and truth be told, Christina is taking me to Shambhala right now. <laughs> Delivering Shambhala to my tense pressure points. I'm telling you, Rast, you gotta get on board with this massage situation. I may never let her go. Well, I'm, I'm theoretically going after you. And right, I'm pretty I mean, sure I can make that happen by just not lending you more money to Oh for no! <laughs> you get cut, my, cut off yeah, my credit, credit limit, cut off the credit. Yeah, you know we might go there if you keep. I've only got up. fifty minutes. Hey, have worth. you worked out uh, an advert? You know, a discount advertisement deal at this point with Christina? Because I feel like I mean, all these shout outs you're getting, I, her, I, her business actually, numbers might go out. Up that's a lot. true. With each shout out, <laughs> I should. I mean, just the marketing value of this promotion alone should be good for some credits. Yeah, I mean the thousands of people 
listening at home who might hire. <laughs> Guys, make your way out to North Cyprus. Ask for Christina. Uh, Thank you. Ace Queen 10 here as two Queen 9s square off and are outflopped by Greenwood. Who's shown a lot of willingness to just open pots here. Content to just limp and. 42. Look at this. Two limpers behind them. Granted, the button is one of them, so that's any two. It's really bad to Akuski's range that is the one that Greenwood. Yeah, he's got is the ace blocker, he's got the range advantage. So he's, he's going to pound away. I mean, this is something I, I think you see even stronger effects here where, you know, kind of the, the range advantages on different kind of boards end up meaning that certain players in short deck just much more indiscriminately fire at pots and multi-way pots it, compared to similar situations in No Limit Hold'em. Examples being these high boards and whoever's the first limper, who that's like, you know, all the sets and top two pairs, really. Um, the other example being, you know, kind of low boards such as six, seven, nine. Now the under the gun limper, <laughs> very rarely betting that, and uh, or you know six six nine, and oftentimes in a limp pot the dealer who has hundred percent hands, you know minus the very best ones, maybe aces kings ace king whatever that he would raise, but has way more six x for trips. And so there's a lot of times that those get auto checked to the dealer who just bets. So yeah, a lot of like just range dictated decisions that don't have too much to do oftentimes with the actual whole cards. And again, Greenwood opening for a limp. That's following suit. Ace nine suited on the button for Wei Xiang. And he's aware of the value of this sort of hand when looking to maybe take one uncontested. Yeah, he's going to shoot it up. Greenwood doesn't make a meal out of it. Certainly the King Nine. Not interested in plunking down an additional investment. nice stacks deep enough on this table where we're not just getting a shove game. These players are forced to make raise preflop open raises and play a lot post flop. So that's always, I, I think it's a little more fun than the jam fest that short deck can sometimes become. Not that there isn't skill in that or, you know, dynamic situations, but these hands are a little more complicated, a little little more fun in my opinion, so now. Nothing too complicated about waking up to two aces on the button if we're Greenwood, loving the side of three limpers in front of them, all of which are legitimate holdings, but will any of them be able to take the pressure that he is about to apply? Yep, five X here would be 125. A lot of deep stacks. Maybe he goes a little bigger than that. I doubt he... 120. Go. Yeah, and we'll see how many of these hands want to continue here. Eight says no. Jack-10 off, no, but King-10 suited? No. Sam Greenwood with another pickup. And it is four-handed, ladies and gentlemen, because we are at 13 players. So two.
two four-handed tables, one five-handed table until the next player busts, and then they will go down to two tables each six-handed, of course. Seven, six? Yeah. Xiang now with King Jack off suit. Happy to follow suit with the eight nine. Pats the Akuski in there as well. Zhang will close the action with the queen nine. Hands below the rail. Such a common appearance there. Players looking to center themselves, not necessarily give away anything in the way of live tells. 7-7-6 so yeah. seven, seven, board here. Open ender for Greenwood, Rast. So yeah, here a spot where Wei Shang's going to check range as opposed to betting a lot under the gun. And I think you're going to see, despite Queen 9 off really being nothing, Zhang, you know, it's not obliged, and he, he might not, but he might actually bet at this. Yeah, so, you know, really like no pair, no draw, but really just range betting here. Not going to get through Greenwood, who definitely knows what's going on, and, and while he's got to be worried about Zhang having three sevens, uh, I think folding nine eight here just like much too tight against somebody who's gonna just bet a lot of garbage as well. Decides to respond with call. And this is an interesting card because Zhang now goes from nothing to a queen high, which has zero showdown value versus the check call, um, but an open ender. So he, I, I think he's quite likely to double barrel this. Well, as the button, he could just have any two in this spot. and Yeah, th this is a hand that makes a lot of sense as, as a double barrel. And when you consider the number of people who Let's limped in, perhaps we remove cards that are not sevens, and that maybe increases the likelihood that Zhang can represent the seven successfully? Yeah, sure. I mean, he's clearly repping at least a seven here and, you know, has a hand with, with that eight turn, almost like one of the best hands to double barrel on the bluff side, up here, you know, open ender, uh, but only queen high, so zero showdown. You know, nine of clubs as well, so potentially blocking club draws, which might continue. And Greenwood sticks around with a call and uh, fills up here, courtesy yeah. of that third seven and saying, not interested in trying to rep quads. Would have been a little bit nerve wracking. You can see Greenwood's expression there suggesting he's not sure how he would have approached that additional barrel. Yeah, another nice pop by Sam Greenwood, who's played quite well in this last hour that we've been covering his table. Yeah. No doubt. And there he is, 106 antes, still behind Makita Badziakuski, who is your overall chip leader. Greenwood currently in sixth. The average stack is 954,000, and we are down to just 12 players here. We welcome you back to the desk in North Cyprus. Ali Najad alongside Brian Rast. And uh, with that redraw, we're going to take a quick break, Rasty, and uh, be back 
with more coverage. We'll keep it short and sweet now, and then we'll catch you guys on the back side of the break. Don't go anywhere. And welcome back to the desk at the Merritt Royal Diamond Resort and Spa here in North Cyprus where the 30K short deck is underway. Day one action, Ali Nishad, Brian Rast, pleased to be bringing you the coverage wherever you may be streaming us from right now in whatever time zone on this blue marble you may be in. Uh, currently coming up on the late hours here in North Cyprus where we find Makita Badziakuski, your overall chip leader as we take a look at the Triton Poker Plus app. Sam Greenwood officially second in chips overall. I mentioned he was six. We hadn't yet calculated his last pot where he took one off of Michael Zhang and the redraw is coming in right now. You can see to the left of the screen the brand new collection of six players will include Wei Shang Yu, Chinwei Lim, Tom Duan, Santi Jang, Dario Sammartino, and Dan Devoris. And then as we flip back over, we will find Mikita Batsukuski and Sam Greenwood both at the same table. So we could see some big confrontations happening there. Michael Zhang, Paul Pua, Kiatli, and Phil Ivey join them. And Kiatli in particular is a guy that I want to zero in on here, Rast, as he has 840000 in career Triton earnings, has come up empty in the last series, Ofer in Madrid, but his only cash came in a 75K short deck event for $840,000. And he has flown out here for the second half of this Super High Roller Series, specifically to play the short deck events. And we'll see how he is able to perform from this point forward, currently sitting with a little over a million in chips with 954K, the average stack. Sure, and we, there's 12 players oh. left. We cash at one, six, six, one, six, but six, uh, number one, seven, one, as you seven. just said, Kiat Lee and Chips has Ooh. over a million. So it could, because there aren't a lot of short stacks and uh, you need somebody with at least a million now to go out in order to just get to six players, could take a little while. No. <laughs> Two kings for San Martino. Just getting it in there against Wei Xiang. And so far so good. But of course, in short deck, you always got to hold your breath and you see why. 
the ace of clubs sliding right off onto the turn and then the king binky binky not a lot of duds left in the stub rast and san martino <laughs> making kings full yeah the high drama run out yeah picking up the 492k pot Jong taking a bit of a blow to his stack. So that. just know that looking at all the player stacks, it's the white chips that are really worth a lot. They're 25K. The green chips, 5K, and the reds, 1K. Webster Lim, under the gun, ace, queen, limping. And Elton, who was on the feature table a little earlier, went out 13th to get this redraw. So um, Phil Ivey's still in. So, you know, based on their conversation of not having cashed or even come close so far this Triton series it looks like Elton will have to wait one more tournament and but uh Ivy's still in there Ivy did pick up a short deck title if I recall correctly here in North Cyprus I believe during that's the warm-up event and the, the the first Triton of the year that was the uh yeah, that was a 75K short deck where he won 1.17, and it was a good stop for him as he cashed fourth and fifth in a couple of 50K No Limit events as well as we see Santi Jiang joining San Martino and Chin Wei Lim, Webster as we call him, with the limps. But Duan wags his finger at the boys from the button, shooting it up to 150K. Is the ace-queen offsuit the sort of hand that wants to limp jam? Yeah, they're pretty deep for limp jam here with ace queen off. Uh, so I'm, I'm not surprised he responds with call. And, and Santi here with the decision, as he's much shorter as to whether or not he wants to call or jam, feel like reasonable arguments could have been made for either play, but he decides call and... All in all, a pretty good flop for Jax. I wonder if he doesn't just go all in right here, deny equity all the overcard hands. Well, we take a decent amount of 6x, 9x out of the ranges of players who would be willing to proceed for 150,000. And if we're able to do that, and additionally, we have Jack Jack for blocker value. Yeah, sure. Including with a club, suddenly we recognize just how good a spot it is. And that would explain why Santi Jang methodically pushed forward the remainder of his gaming tokens here for 532,000. And boy, that texture is just not so hot for Tom Dwan. Yeah, you can see it's not a comfy spot for him because yeah, the 532, but he puts that in and he, then he's putting his whole stack at risk against Chin Wei Lim, who could have him out flopped there, checking it over. So that this bet puts Tom in a lot of pressure. And Tom is the kind of person who has like the aces, the kings, the queens, and then hands like ace, king, ace, queen, oh, ace, nine. Oh, and he's going to jam over the top to make yeah. sure he can dispatch Webster and, and not complicate. And very happy to see Webster fold. Yeah. Yeah. Like very happy. <laughs> Let's put it that way. That's what Tom is sweating. He's got that sweat when he puts it in of not getting snapped off by Webster and just being like close to dead. Even happier, by the way, to see that Santi Jiang has two jacks against these two kings as Duan is in good shape with now one to come after the 10 pairs. And he will ultimately 
Land on kings full of tens as we have yet another casualty here. I have ten eight. Wish you were in there. Jane will finish in twelfth place as we continue to march toward the bubble. Still plenty of time left between now and then. In terms of Annie's, what is the short stack equivalent of what we consider to be like the 10 big blinds and below range in no limit, where we expect to see a lot of that just get it in type of behavior? Is 40 Annie's there? Is yeah. 20 Annie's? So like... What's the threshold? In, It's like a POTS conversion is the way I, I've... I think it's best to explain. So in no limit, the big blind, the big blind and the small blind is a pot, two and a half. That's like two and a half blinds. So that's, you know, four pots would, would be it because that's four pots would be 10 big blinds. Four times two and a half is 10. And so here, you know, you have, it kind of depends on how many players are at the table, right? But you might have uh, at a six handed table, you have seven annies. So seven times four, it'd be about 30 annies would be about the equivalent of 10 blinds. Okay. But that, you know, that number actually goes down as less players because there's less annies in the middle, oh, that's like a which yeah. does not happen in no limit where no matter what, even three handed, you still have, you know, two right. and a half blinds. It's in a there. static calculation yeah. there. 10 jack queen. Coordinated texture here, Wei Xiang. Up front, middle pair, open ender. Same exact story for San Martino, although the lesser straight draw. And again, as the first player in, he has almost all the ace kings. You know, maybe San Martino could have ace king, but almost certainly not Duan or Chin Wei Lim. So, um,. He gets to bet at the pot a lot. And some players with decent hands behind coming along for the ride. All right, and great card for Tom, who turns the nuts with Broadway, although not in any way disguised. What a card it is, too, because it does give San Martino the straight as well as a flush draw. So kings and jacks and a king high straight have both checked in front of Duan. And it's nice being in position. You know, this just it's checked to me. You just make sure you go ahead and bet when you want to get money in the pot with the best hand. Juan is going to apply max pressure to the boys. Has them both covered. And for Wei Xiang, 822,000 to call all of his chips. And now 423 to call for San Martino. And for him, it's a little bit tougher to get away, is it not, Rast? Yeah, because with the nine, he's beating bluffs. Well, okay, so Tom is only doing this for value with an ace, but with the nine, he's actually ahead of bluffs, and if Tom has an ace with the flush draw, he's not like stone dead. So, you know, it's worth considering, but then you have to ask yourself, like, how often is Tom doing this with bluffs? Is it is it enough for me to call, you know, and he comes up with no, which seems pretty damn reasonable and uh, even we can see Tom had the ace so begrudging fold there from San Martino but recognizes that the spot is often one in which he's going to need to improve an ace for a chop and then the heart for the win so nine Jack goes into the muck
First opportunity to really talk about Daniel Devoris here. Six point three million in career Triton earnings. Thirteen caches yet to cash so far here at this festival. I don't think he's been here the whole time, though. He was over at Tim Adams' wedding. That would explain why Tim Adams has also not been here. He is a fellow Canadian and Triton regular. King 9-7 board draws a couple of checks. Now the board pairs on the turn. Coincidentally, Ben Heath, who was here, has since checked out because he's getting married. Love is in the air. It is. When the moon hits your eyes like a big pizza pie, that's amore. Oh, so you know about the fact that Henry took some time to further his love life during the break. Is that, <laughs> is that correct? You know, I, I wouldn't want to spread rumors. I'll allow Henry to talk about what he does on the break on his own, but I do believe that love could be in the air. Lust could also be in the air, though, Rasta. The odor is quite similar. <laughs> well, when Henry replaces you in a little bit, we'll have to find out. It may be a permanent replacement if I keep up these sort of unsavory disclosures. <laughs> So both players did flop a pair. Advantage Dvoris with the Kings, who now gets busy on the turn betting 50K. This is a kind of tough continue here in a four-way pot. I, I wonder if he's actually, I mean, call seems dicey. I wonder if he was considering turning it into a bluff with a check raise. I guess we'll never know how he would continue if he did, because he comes with fold. And Devoris able to pick that one up in position as we march onward. With 11 remaining and six getting paid. Here at event number 10. Ten off suit. Webster limping. Wei Xiang, Queen six off a dusty one. Yeah, just the uh, the do seven of short deck being jack six off. So. You know, this is right in that wheelhouse. And this is a pair of sixes on the all heart ace nine six board. Webster will check. Twenty-five k the bet from Wei Xiang there. Is, that one's not going to make any highlight reels. Anti now fifteen k. San Martino's shirt is making me crave one of those popsicles. I used to get it as a kid. Astro Pop. Something like that. Obviously, I know the international audiences may not necessarily be familiar. Remember those things? The big stick, whatever it was. That's All right, Rass looking at me with a blank stare. Maybe, although I don't know if I ever had one, but I, maybe I remember those. They're like multicolored, blue and orange pop. I don't even know if I ever had one, but I. Were you like one of those kids that wasn't allowed sugar cereal growing up? Oh no, I. My my mom had soda and we had cereal and. Is 
There was no question I was not denied sugar cereal. I mean, you <laughs> can just put the read on me. <laughs> Is that a not sure? But. Huh. I don't know who you're saying to ask. Wei Xiang's ace jack. Jam, yeah, saying, take who it. Do I no soda for my kids, though. Sugary cereal, okay. Yeah? Yeah, but soda, no. That's a habit. That's a habit I won't abide. My what about I. zero sugar soda? No. I mean, all those. I mean, so, yeah, it's not full of sugar, but they're full of chemicals. Those chemical aspartame artificial sweeteners, which are quite bad for you as well. A6 suited. Better for you than soda. Devorah limps. Jack seven suited for Dario, and he'll join the party. Now Duan on the button. Little ace ten off here. Could get to attacking. You sure could. San Martino's limp in the cutoff, despite having a stack. Hey, I make it 150K. I kind of have to call versus San Martino, but he's not strong too often considering he can just jam himself. He's short enough, but uh, Tom passes up the spot. But definitely one he was thinking about. I almost feel like that sideways glance of his is kind of like, yeah, he it's kinda almost looks like a communication. Like, I know, I could be raising this, but I'm not, okay. Ends up flopping a Broadway gutty as Sam Martino flops middle pair. Devoris's bet manages to clear what was the best hand, and what a wet card this is. The Queen of Diamonds fills in Dwan's Broadway, but gives Devoris a draw to Broadway and the flush draw with 300K in the middle. Oh, yeah. And Devoris has an interesting combo here. To, I mean, it seems like a pretty decent bluff combo. You're blocking ace 10. You don't have a pair and you're drawing to the nuts. So Devoris seems to feel that way and comes with bet. 250k into 300 and if we're Tom Dwan, we're sitting on the nuts. And we've got our man covered. Do we look for some equity denial in this spot? Especially given the vulnerability of a made hand like a straight, which cannot improve from this point forward? Tom certainly seems to think so. Yeah. Asking for the rest of Devoris's chips. And now, is the proposition worthy of the call? That is the question that Daniel is asking himself. comes up with no as the answer and not entirely dissimilar to the yeah. jack nine of hearts laying it down prior yeah i mean a pretty obligatory double barrel there considering he led the flop with a six of diamonds i mean the the queen of diamonds being you're, you're basically the best card you can hope for you can easily have ace 10 there yourself so with a hand with zero showdown and that much draw equity, it's, it's a 
pretty obligatory follow through, but you know, you, you run into the one of the hands you're repping, tends not to work out well when you're bluffing. So Tom Dwan picking up some Devoris bucks and he is an overwhelming chip leader right now, not just at this table, but with 10 players now remaining. Boss Stack, followed by Mikita Badziakuski, who is over at the other table. Sam Greenwood in third, Paul Foix in fourth. Average stack, 1.1 million. Good for 76 antes. Now with 15K per ante. And then there were 10. Five-handed on both tables. Tom Dwan starting to run away with the chip lead here. 2,643,000 on the app, which is exactly 1 million more than Makita in second. So, Makita's even on the other table, along with Sam Greenwood in third, Paul Foy in fourth, Kiat Lee in fifth. So, as we can see here, Tom first place is with only with the shorter stacks in the tournament. Chin, Chin Wei Lim in sixth, also here at this table. Only 910,000. So Tom has not only a, starting to run away with the chip lead in the tournament, but this is amplified given the table draw. We saw Wei Xiang try to open the pot, sneak to the flop with King Queen. Duan wagging his finger. Ooh. San Martino dynamite board here. As the departure of Wei Xiang Yu's King Queen left him to call. And close the action against this ace jack, which is top pair. All in. Against an all in with a pair of eights and a club draw. For Tom Dwan, 200,000 into a pot of 550, basically. Kind of an interesting decision for San Martino to lead there. I, I think I probably come with the check shove, just hoping maybe Tom takes some. Listen, if Tom has an ace, he's not folding, given how short San Martino was for the pot. Even if Tom had the ace nine or ace seven, he's gonna call. I mean, those have gutters as well as top pair and San Martino is like a 60% stack to pot ratio. That said, let's say Tom has the queen jack off or something. He checks, Tom bets the, the 80K and then you just get to move all in. I mean, those hands are folding, I, I think. So I, I, I don't know how much the jam accomplishes. Like maybe, yeah, are you trying to get jacks to fold? Whereas Jax checks back, kind of maybe the only thing, it, but does Tom fold Jax there? Thinking if San Martino had an ace or better, like he just checks that. So I think I'm probably playing that as pure check as Dario. But, um, you know, interesting decision. It wouldn't have mattered. They were both going to get that all in on the flop, whether he checks or bets. Right. Just interesting to speculate on that. So in the end, Duan somewhat furnishing the advantages associated with that big overall chip lead. Might it be on display once more? Eight, nine off. Limp opens the door for Dvoris to perhaps do something with King-7 off suit. There's something strangely polarizing about the limps, though, isn't there, Rast? Like, uh, depending on what position they come from, obviously, the earlier ones can just be trying to see a flop cheap, and other times they are 
looking for somebody to have a misstep. Six, eight, nine on the six, nine. Or the nine, eight, rather. Yeah, and this should be an interesting one. Again, this board texture one that hits the dealer more. And uh, Dvorez comes with check, deciding that despite the fact that he probably bets that a decent amount versus the hijack limp, King-7 specifically is a hand he likes to have in his checking range. And here we have a, a spicy turn. Yeah. Fills in some draws. And it specifically gives Dvorez even more outs. King of clubs working, as is the open ender. But Duan is all done with the checking. And a little all three options here for Dvorez, although I don't think he comes with fold, um, although it's not unimaginable. But I think he's kind of deciding between call and raise. Why not raise? We got the king of clubs blocker. Why not raise when you can call? And I think we're going to see... Div like Tom doesn't have a hand that loves bluffing, I would guess. He'd love to show down two pair. And Dvoris does have a hand that loves bluffing. It's really hard for Dvoris to have a worse hand than a pair of sevens on this run out. He has the nice king of clubs blocker. So I will be, I will go ahead and stake a claim that I'm going to be surprised if he doesn't bluff this. He certainly can't imagine a world in which one pair of sevens with a king kicker would be a winner at showdown. So <laughs> yeah. there is a sense that he is going to need to barrel. The question he has is the size. And it looks like he's going with 120, oh, 150, so three quarters pot. And... Not fun, two pair snap became a bluff catcher. And now Tom asking, do I have good cards to bluff catch with? And the bluff gets through, Daniel Devoris. Nice hand, sir. Sure does. I mean, I think it's an obligatory bluff spot. I uh, I know Daniel Devoris is a much better short deck player than me, but I would have had to really think about things if he didn't bluff that river. Well, instead he does. And... Tom Duan didn't feel like he needed to think about things in the end. His eights and nines deemed inadequate. Suit from Duan, the opener. King 10 has him dominated for Webster. Creeps along and now yet another 10. This one belonging to Devoris in the cutoff. So, four players to the King Jack 7 board. Top pair and middle pair both out there. A gut shot for Devoris and nothing to speak of for Wei Xiang. Yeah, nobody really flops big here. Um, Tom with a probe. I think, so taking aside everybody's hand cards here, I think Tom more likely to bet than normal, not because of his hand, but because of the tournament situation where he can apply some pressure. We're, you know, now nine left. We're getting close to the bubble. So Tom's going to be more aggressive, massive chip lead. And uh, I think that's more the motivation of his bet here rather than, you know, some kind of range advantage or, or him really even having a hand that likes betting a ton on this. He's just going to start putting more pressure, play a bit more loose aggressive and and ramp up, ramp up the aggression. And uh, Chin Wei Lim, I think, deciding King 10 off with the 10 of spades too strong to let go. Indeed.
Ford has paired on the turn here. That does improve Dwan's kicker. And Tom, digging deep into his bag of tricks here, kind of has one of those hands you'd think maybe he gives up a bunch because he probably has draws with a lot more equity to semi-bluff with, and he definitely has... <laughs> I doubt he expects jacks up to be good here uh, very often, unless, of course, Chin Wei Lim has a draw. And then even that 10 of hearts, not so good because it's blocking the queen 10s and 10 nines of the world that, that might be draws. But uh, again, Tom, with a lot of incentive to keep up the pressure, does so. And woo, Chin Wei Lim just not ready to go anywhere. Nice little call. My man, and let's see what happens on the river. This pot, oh my goodness. And if Tom wanted to three barrel, this is a, not a bad card to do it with. The 10 blocker now blocking queen 10. Very obviously, jacks up has no showdown. He's blocking pocket jacks. This could be the spot. Tom goes for the third barrel. And this would be a surprising call by king 10 here. If Tom does fire big, pretty tough call by King-10. Yeah, Tom. Earn those stripes, my man. Pretty sick hand here by Tom, three-barreling, Jack-10 off. And, I mean, Chin Wei Lim hasn't mucked his hand yet. It's a big pot. He's going to take his time. This would be... This would be like one of those, like, in the chess notations with the exclamation mark. This already by Tom is a is kind of a wild hand. Call here with King-10 would be something special. I mean, I, I don't think it's gonna happen, but you, you never know. Well, yeah. the 10 kicker was already <laughs> not playing, and then you wanna say it improves, but the ace was a trouble card. When do we get more time breaks? And Dwan will take it down. How many is Seven? Tom Dwan with the hero barrel. Let's go. <laughs> chin has got those moves in him as well. Just Dwan beat him to the punch. And obviously the players are all factoring in those ICM considerations. Hence the sort of dearth of the words all in and call being yelled across the room by the dealers who were in that situation. I mean, I think Tom is at a four-handed table in, uh, with nine left where he is number one in chips by a lot, more than double second now, starting to push towards triple. And he's with Chip stacks seven, eight, and nine. And at the other table are chip stacks two, three, four, five, and six that are actually all in between 1.3 and a million. So that other table is has a extremely high amount of chip parity versus this table, which is the runaway chip leader with the three shortest stacks, which should create in some pretty interesting bubble dynamics. Dwan continuing to cobble away here. Still some runway between now and the bubble, but obviously players are keeping an eye on that, trying to set themselves up for that stage in a favorable manner. Yes, sir. Leave it to Dwan, by the way. I mean, the man was getting out of his car from the airport this morning as I was coming back from breakfast. It's fresh off a flight, and I use the, the term fresh very liberally. I mean, looked like he hadn't slept well. The flight was taking its toll on him. And my first glance at him when he was at this table, he looked pretty darn tired. But he has come alive. And now here he is just attacking Webster. 
who will concede with really nothing of note with which to fight. Yeah, and doing this, yeah, having all those chips might just wake you up on the bubble. It, doing the uh, the pots calculation, here there's, they're five-handed, so that's, sorry, four-handed, so that's five annies. Five times 15, 75K, so that's one pot. And the, the stacks are around, the shortest stack there, 600,000. So that's eight pots, so that's, it's about 18. So, so this stack, it's, they're playing about the equivalent of 20 big blinds. Some 20-ish big blind stacks, if you want to do a rough conversion to hold them, playing with Tom with seemingly infinite big blinds. Boy, a lot of chips heading in that direction, aren't there? Yes, sir. Four-handed action. And you touched on that concept, Rast, with respect to the expression of stack depth in terms of pots and then the fewer players you have at your table, the fewer antis are in the pot, which actually creates more depth in terms of that expression, but at the same time applies a little bit more pressure as the double NT comes around that much more frequently. And really, it's it's so relentless because you don't get any hands off in terms of your stack just getting whittled away at. Oh, yeah. yeah you can see the effects of it. As Tom is loving because that means it's just less likely he runs into the really strong hands that just lay down the hammer preflop, like mm -hmm. ace, king, all in, etc. cetera. And... Uh, I mean, something for everybody on this flop. Overcards got shot, flush draw, pair and gutter. And quite the card for Wei Shang, who yeah. now has the uncounterfeitable best hand. Full house will not be his flush. And Tom does improve to two pair here, but with the four liner on board against the button. Which could be any two. He checks and Wei Shang checking back, looking to induce a bet on the river. Yeah, he and the block bet. Which is uh, going to get raised for value. The questions at the moment are how much will he raise? And uh, will Tom call? Well, call would seem just such a stretch. Just 100K more on request. Well, this is the second pot where Tom's had two pair with 9-8. And the other one, Devorez did successfully bluff him. He folded. This one, oh wow, and this one he flicks in the call. A little surprised to see Tom do that, aren't you, Rast? You know, I think he's thinking, you know, there's some one pair, maybe some one pair hands, such as like 10-jack, 9-jack, um, 8-jack, maybe Eve, maybe that decide to turn into a bluffs versus a block size. Maybe his thoughts. Maybe these guys have history, Wei Shang. 
bluff some on the river versus blocks. Who knows? I definitely assume these guys have played together before. It is a bit of an ambitious call, but, you know, had he made that same ambitious call previously versus Devores in a spot that looked pretty dicey, it would have been right. So, I am, I am a little surprised he called. I, I am too. I, I'm trying to get my head around exactly as played, what the sorts of hands are that eights and nines performs well against. In that specific spot. Yeah, some one pair hands that were checking back, trying to get the showdown that don't think they can beat even a block bet, value betting range. Like I suggested, like 10X, 9X, 8X. The cyber attack thing was crazy, right? I only saw the news, but it's not a good. Sorry, I forgot. Every time I saw you, you were Montenegro. Oh, yeah? For holiday? Football? Yeah. Oh, yeah? You're on TV, you know. <laughs> That part. Duan limping with a couple of sixes. Here's Webster with King Jack. And he jams, which will promptly put the sixes into the muck. Webster is the short stack with sub 40 innies. Let's go. Now north of 40 with that pickup. A seven suited will be greeting Wei Xiang. You think he's got that call on hold? <laughs> it's like, hang tight. I'm up front. I'm going to play this one. Hold my Wa beer. Watch the stream. Duan with the jack six suited. I think you mentioned that's basically the seven deuce of short deck. Pretty sure there's no bounty in tournaments. That King Nine Nine giving him trips. Webster, the only. Other real relation, you know, is that theory I just said enough so that Jack six suited can profitably limp the high Jack? I don't know, but Tom seems to think the answer is yes. And we can see again pedal to the metal, constant aggression. So it, this fits in line with, hey, I'm going to be playing more hands and just trying to take pots down. Now, you know, in a four-way pot, somebody happens to have a nine. So it's going to be pretty hard, even in short deck, for Jack-6 to to win this. But pretty much see, down to runner, runner, flush, or running Jacks. Duan just able to flick a quarter out there and really, you know, inform himself accordingly. Because nobody's looking to tussle with the Reaper. Sure. And he just snap gives this one up here.
Devoris doesn't have to bet this turn. I mean, his range on the dealer is going to comprise mostly of kings and nines or trip nines. He's obviously on the higher end of that. So, you know, it is nice to get value. Yeah, that said, you can check back and trap as well. Although, Try to like, induce. How often is Tom, who's giving up some here, really going to just decide to fire the river because you check back? Like, oh, you checked back, so you probably have kings up. Let me try to bluff you off it. So I, I don't know. It's um, There's definitely arguments for both plays. It's nice to have the 10 as the side card in that spot on the paired flop because if one of those inside straight draws in the form of the queen jack fills in, so do you. Yes, sir. Now, King Those are the suited. thoughts of a poker player, Ollie. Every now and again... They magically enter my zeitgeist. Even a broken clock is right twice a day, Rast. Is that what they say? Well, yeah, that was a, twice sounds about right. That was a refreshing swig of the iced mocha that you took there. <laughs> you know, I think you need to just really fully experience the relaxation. I saw you doing that with the massage, and I thought maybe I can replicate it just with drinking an iced mocha. Since... So this tournament ending soon, but I believe we're going to keep going with a cash game. Myself and... Uh, Henry Thor Kilbane. Oh, don't don't start with that. <laughs> Ace Queen Six board with a couple of clubs here. Devoris with the flush draw. Does not connect on the turn. Wei Xiang has the gut shot. Nobody has two pair. But yeah, we have a gut shot, we have a flush draw. And Tom, actually, with the best hand with king high, but pretty unlikely to continue in a three-way pot versus a bet. So. Okay. Maybe not. He's, he's considering it. He is getting four to one on a call. And I guess what he's thinking here is as the under-the-gun limper, like I have the most ace-x, even in a pot that got checked, like maybe I'm going to rep a stronger hand. But after mulling it over, he decides to just let it go and move on to the next one. And, you know, there's fewer clean cards for those king highs to enjoy on the river, even if they're up against those semi-bluff type of hands. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, but that was definitely an all three option spot. Yeah. Like I think Tom was thinking about raising there. In fact, probably more than call, but... We will never know. It's only the shadow that knows. Closing in on the end of play for the day. Here in event number 10, the 30K short deck. Six pay, nine play. Here we At go. Present. We got some two playable hands here in the cutoff dealer button spot. Way coming with call, which, uh, I mean, uh, Tom will likely just raise this up in position for value, and I believe Way likely defends this. Oh, wow, he checks it back. Part Pretty of a balanced diet? Pretty tight check. Maybe he just thought it was extra likely Way was like limp jamming and he doesn't want to call off the ace jack suited versus the limp jam at these depths, but are missing out on a lot of value, not raising a hand this strong. So interesting decision. But uh you know, I mean not shocking. It, it makes sense. And Duan able to Put the chips he might have otherwise been raising with 
and a far more, more modest sum to work in position on that paired two diamond board, which will draw the curtain on play for the day. As we don't quite make it down to a final table, but we do make it down to nine players with six spots paying. And Tom Dewan, the runaway chip leader here, better than two to one lead over Sam Greenwood and the overall chip counts. And of course, massive advantage over DeForest, you and Lim. 15K ante as we bring it back to the desk now. Alina Jad alongside Brian Rast. And Rasty, any final thoughts kind of on what we're going to come back to tomorrow? It's got to be the Tom Dwan show that deep, right? To 161 antes? Yeah, it's, it's the tale of two tables here because the one table is the chip leader, Tom Dwan, with, you know, like 2.5x uh, second. Here's the other table, by the, the way. the three shortest stacks, if you scroll down, seven, eight, and nine, um, all with him. And the other table uh, having stacks two through six, so, you know, six cash. So that, that other table, all full of middling stacks, all would like to make it. And, you know, the other table just shorties with Tom. So I, I think that's a pretty interesting configuration. And um, given how deep they are, this bubble could take a little while. You know, uh, you can see that it's going to take players with, you know, seventh place right now, which seven players don't make it, only six cash. Sure. Seventh place is 900,000. So, um, yeah, I, I don't expect this to just be like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, into the money final table uh, when we start up. There's still some play left. Yeah, it'll be interesting also to see how players approach the bubble. Clearly, short deck has its nuances and some of the hand values that people are willing to go with, not go with. We'll uh, put a pin in that thought, though, because now it's time to turn our attention to the cash game streets. A little bit of a teaser to what we're going to have coming up on the backside of this break. It will be 501,000, the blinds here. I'm being told it's PLO to oh, start. goody. Santosh and... Uh, Ashkon, Patrick Antonius, Elton Zang, Rui Kao, Rob Yong, all going to be in the fray. And not too often you get to feast your eyes on a haphazardly assembled 501K. Uh, so we're not going to go with, with that table. Okay, just getting word now from, oh, no. from uh, producer James. It will be 501K, but we're going to go with the no limit lineup. Uh, the PLO already in the books, uh, apparently. So Horace Way, Tice, uh, Saladin Badir, Elias... Jungle Man, Chris Brewer. So that ought to be... Brian Rast? Oh, no. Oh. I don't have a seat. I'm oh, no. sorry. No, I you guess don't. I'm actually doing the commentary for it. So. You do have a seat. You have a seat right <laughs> here at the desk, and it will be alongside Henry Kilbane, who is going to... Put me in, fill, coach. ...fill in for me as uh, I am cooked for the night. I'm going to go get a night, night's sleep, come back, and uh, help us bring it home for the short deck day two as we work our way to the final table and a champion there. But in the interim, I say good night and... Uh, Tell you to stay close because we've got more coverage from the cash game side of the Triton operation right after this break. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a bit.
queen, ace jack, king jack. That's like a seven, a six. Coin Rope Invitational. We'll see you guys shortly. Hey everyone, I'm here with the founder of Triton Poker, Paul Fa. Paul. Hi. So we've seen Hello. many new faces in this uh, Cyprus set, uh, series. And you have any suggestion for the new players in the Triton family? Uh, I mean, uh, we are very happy to have so many new players in this Invitational Coin River event. The series is growing. You know, we see many new players. We hope the new players will enjoy the experience. You know, and recreational players will learn from the experience and improve their poker skills. And as we all know that you have catched the first three events in Triton Series Cyprus, and you pair up with uh, Phil Ivy for the Coin River Invitation, and he was happened to be the first player to get eliminated yesterday. So, do we get maybe another new decision? Who is the pro and who is the businessman in your team? First, uh, about my caches, I've been running really really good for the past okay, year you know you, you need to have a lot of luck to even catch not to say to win the tournament you know so for Ivy's invite you know, uh, I was very surprised you know we were so deep and he, I think he busted within the first few hands but that's poker you know sometimes you just have a codec Ivy is a great player, you know, uh, there's no regrets inviting him. Let's hope he runs better. So today is the second day, so we mix up with the pros and the VIPs since for, uh, today, day two. But yesterday is the day one that we separated all pros and VIPs. So if you got to choose, choose again, who will be the pro and play, play in the pros field? And will you be the pro and or send Ivy to the businessman side? No, I think I will always be a businessman that, you know, I don't play poker for a living, just for fun, you know, and, you know, the, this concept uh, separation of uh, pro and businessman during the first uh, levels is, according to feedback, oh, the businessmen like it a lot, you know, you get to play the first day among businessmen, you can socialize a bit. You know, we can network a bit, make new friends. You know, I think it's a pretty good idea. I'm sure that your first winning will definitely encourage more and more players to join the Triton family. And so far, good luck for the tournaments, and we want to see you maybe cash in the fifth event. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lulu. sitting with Kale and then Patrick joined with a friend and, and then Phil Sternheimer came and uh, Patrick actually talked about that hand. That hand bothered him for a while. Mm -hmm. he really had a feeling he should have put his money in but just didn't do it. And then he was, that just, when he found out that, that uh, Victor was bluffing, it just ravaged him for a little while mentally. So, you know, I, I love Patrick, he's a good guy. Yeah, we've but, all uh, been there. Yeah. We've all been put in the blender and then found out later on that. Victor's kind of the blender specialist. He really is. Especially for a pro. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, he's a... Uh, 
Uh, I'm kind of excited he's on the feature. I like, ooh, what a, what a card for two sevens. And, yeah, I mean, the jack, kind of a good bluff card, but having a nine, definitely a hand you want to get to showdown. I mean, this is, he's probably going to check it. Makita's going to bet, and... <laughs> You know, with one of your kind of best showdowns that becomes a bluff catcher, the question is what he's going to do versus the bet here. I think it's one of those all three options are on the table kind of deal. Well, is there ever a spot, Brian, where this bluff catcher turns into a potential bluff combo? Yeah, yeah exactly. Blocking 10-9 suited. Exactly. Queen Jack. Yep. Jack's, uh, okay, Makita's under the gun, so we can't have Jack 7, but just... But yeah, no, I, I, I think so. And versus 45K, I mean, the nine is pure bluff catching, right? So the, he definitely, I mean, one of the things I think modern solver theory has shown is that in some of these spots, it's best to turn some of your strongest bluff catchers into bluffs. So I'm sure, you know, Victor was thinking about that as well, but. Uh, he was, you hear what he said? He said, I'm gonna fold before I do something stupid. Yeah, exactly. Swift to have him do. And when he found it out later, he was like, exactly. See, that's why I say, fuck your gut. Yeah. But then, you know, a guy like Patrick, it was more like, hey, you know, my, my gut was telling me I should go with it. And he ended up not. And that's why he was super kicking himself. So, you know, everyone has a different theory on that, you know, as far as what they should do based on their gut. But uh, I will say this. Patrick's gut has been right on so far this tournament. I mean, that, you know, bottom pair call was like pretty epic. Right. You you were in the booth for that, I right? Because yeah. I wasn't, but yeah. I Caught the triple with bottom pair. So we jump back into the action here, Brian. Both Heath and Leon flopping flush draws. Atahi opened the king, queen of diamonds from plus one flopping top pair and backdoor diamonds. There are a couple of cards in the deck where Heath could potentially win a huge pot. The ace of hearts, ten of hearts come to mind. Yeah, I mean, I think he just calls here, you know, getting a great price in position to draw to our flush. Probably want Leon in this pot. You know, don't really want to raise. Indeed. Now, Brian received news that the payouts for event number 6200k coin rivet invitational have come through. First place is going to be walking away with five. Point five million dollars. Top 17 places being paid with a mint cash of just shy of two buy-ins. Mm -hmm. 380,000. Hello. Total of 115 entries. 5.5 million. Someone out there is going to be walking away with 5.5 .5 mil. <coughs> Pretty nice for 200k. Man, my biggest cash... 7.5 and up to 500k buy-in. 5.5 for a 200k. I mean, yeah, that's just a function of them getting 115 entries. I mean, holy smokes, ladies and gentlemen. It's not every day you get to play a 100 runner field with 5.5 .5 million for first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <coughs> There are a few people out there in the field who have had bigger caches, but not many. It's all right, man. We're just no doing commentary. It's cool. Yeah? Yeah. Is the FOMO kicking in now? That bro? FOMO kicked in really hard <laughs> when the prize pool got busted. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you just, are you calculating in USD or in Bitcoin, though? That's, that's what no, I would well, You know, I don't even know. I am not need to be any bigger. I'm just excited to watch these guys play. 5.5 right? mil up top. Chris Brewer opening things up from plus one. Just with the half pot sizing on the Queen Jack 9 rainbow. Let's see if Chidwick sticks around with gut shot and backdoor hearts. Definitely might. And I think it's just one of those all three options on the table spot. Although that said, 
check raise. I mean, this board is much stronger for Brewers range, so I don't think Chidwick has many check raises here. Yeah. So yeah, he, he comes with fold, and I think that's a function of having to just give respect for the uh, range and equity advantage Brewer has on this flop. So you know, can't you can't fight too hard in that spot with weak holdings. Lifting things up from plus one. Beautiful looking ace king of spades. Jason Kuhn looks interested on the hijack. He's gonna lock in the call with nine eight of diamonds. To buckle down. They're no there for a long day of play. Gonna gonna play down to the money today. Yeah, that's true. Could be that. That adrenaline that you kind of have at the start of the day. Everyone now dialed in the task at hand. Five point five million for first. Range of eighty thousand dollar min cash here. Making a very solid day, starting from 100k. Yeah, <laughs> very good. You need some Jason chance. Cohn, very likely to yeah, defend his big blinds here against Terra. Yeah, oh, cool. you're on the stream. Right? Sorry, Eric, fresh from break after doing what 15 20 push ups. You see him over there? I didn't. You didn't? No, he was, uh, took a quick power nap. Woke up about three minutes before he was set to resume and just banged out 15, 20 push ups yeah, and jumped back in. You asked what? Shots. On the button. Yeah, just get the juices flowing, you know? That's a man really trying to maximize his break time. Power nap followed by some oh, pump. In this, yeah. yeah. In this day? Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. a strong strap. I didn't know that. Ooh, and War checks back the Ace-10-3 rainbow, which has to have Kuhn a little suspicious here. And yeah, Kuhn just snap folding the third pair of nines. Like, nah, you're not going to catch me with that one, buddy. I've seen that before. I'm going to check back a boy that favors you that strong. Must have it. Bye bye, thank you. Thank you. Sus, eh? Okay. Very sus. Jason Kuhn. Both a Triton and GG Poker ambassador. Talking to GG, could qualify for future Triton events. We did run satellites through the month of August, had three qualifiers into that 25K. We'll be running satellites into future Triton. Faded in popularity, I tried it out for a little bit. Kudanov on the spin, ripping in his last six bigs with King day, 10 yeah. suited. Johan uh, calling from a couple of seats uh, over. It might what? be surprising. Ali Reza, who's also going to call. Aces, 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 aces. And another ace out there. Uh, Eric. Oh, sorry. Ooh. I thought it was a perfect. What will you do with 9 8 of hearts here? 
big blind 40k more, getting a pretty good price. You know, dry side pot, someone's all in. Maybe you nope. get to realize your equity oh, some. Disciplined. He goes, he says, nah. All right. Call one. Now, if you win this one, yeah. you're back in the game. Chance to come back. Both his cards are live. Ooh, it's going to be tough. tough. The ace, eight, three, and with Ali Reza just calling, <laughs> by the way. Brian, Johan could potentially be hitting the showers alongside Kudanov. 164,000 in the middle with just two, three, eight behind. Curious to see what Johan comes with here. So he decides to bet. Betting here is a little tricky with Ace Jack because it's not like you there's there's very little protection value on a board this dry. Your kicker's not very good. Somebody overcalled behind you. Realistically, how many worse Ace Xs does he have? You're gonna build the pot. Maybe you get a check check versus the Ace Queen. Maybe not. It's tough. Definitely like sizing down here. Which he does. Tricky decision you know, for Johan. Box. And uh, as this pot goes forward, it should just get trickier. So we'll see how he navigates this. Ooh. And we can see that Kudnov probably thinks that gives him out, but uh, he's actually drawing dead because. <laughs> he is. Yeah. Not the spot you want to be in on the turn. 164 in the main pot, 74,000 in the side pot. So SPR less than one for Johan, who's drawn to just two outs. Ace Queen here, no Fatih's a VIP. I, I really don't want to see him bet big. It's hard if he bets like half pot or more for work. Felt like Elton. Gonna get creative on the river there. Have a new chip leader. He's here at this table. Elias Talvitier up to just shy of 1.6 million. And at least briefly the chip leader. The uh, VIP Elias. VIP Elias. You know who else is not gonna be winning the 200k Coin River Invitational, Brian. Phil Ivey? Don't say Phil Ivey. The reigning world champion, Espen ah. Jorstad, okay. has been eliminated. Rejammed King Ten of Diamonds. After Laszlo opened from the cutoff. So I guess he just doesn't get to win the two biggest tournaments of the year. True. Only just only one. You know, only one of like fifty. Only the biggest tournament. Only the biggest year. one. Yeah, yeah you know, not the second. Eight thousand six hundred runner, ten thousand x ROI. You know, just like yeah. Plus all the the glory that comes with it. But hey, it's just generous like that. You know, so leaving it for someone else. I know. What a guy. <laughs> brother I, I got like 130th in the main had never gone so deep what what an experience it's like that itself was like five or six days of play i don't even remember it's intense intense things of so i get a little bit more intense here as players have quietened down I'll tell you what else is intense wearing one of those bad boys which i got to do yesterday when you and ali tagged us out, headed over to the... Uh, yeah, you mean when the B team came in? When the A like, team came in. <laughs> the B went team over came to, in to uh, replace the A team last night. The Jacob and Co stand and met with some of the, the watchmakers and representatives. The official time pe as timekeeper of the Triton Poker Series. And wow, going to get to see those showcased in the coming days as we head into our first main event of the series starting tomorrow. We've already seen some of them showcased at the tables. KT comes to mind, I believe he's been rocking their Astronomia Casino watch. 
with the functioning roulette inside. If, and I'm speculating, you know, you know this is a, a strong if. If Jason Kuhn were to take this down for 5.5 million, he would move up to fourth. Just Sorry, no, he'd move up to fifth, overtaking David Peters and Eric Seidel and just behind Stephen Chidwick on the all-time money list. There's a lot of stake here, pal. We're not just talking 5.5 million, we're talking legacy and everything that comes with it. I mean, Kuhn has had a really impressive career, no doubt about it. Ooh, top set. Hand that sometimes gets checked back. Finds a very small bet here, 10K into 55K. Uh, encourages Greenwood to continue. I don't think we'll see Greenwood continue here to third pot on the turn. Yeah, pretty easy fold. Leader Brian. Oh my goodness, you're right. His name is Linus Love. Linus oh, Olliger. Wow. He whacked Kale in a pot. He did. Kale kind of value owning himself a bit. Just took a look at the hand history. The Phil Ivy assassin. Oh yeah, but I mean, bet the river really small. Like down bet the river. He Yes, and it didn't didn't get raised. But yeah, kind of tough tough spot it looks. Yeah, excited to watch minus love operate with a lot of chips here. Especially in this tournament where they're probably going to be deeper, longer than most. I feel like that's more Linus's wheelhouse. I mean, you know, for those that don't know, Linus is just one of the best cash game players. Just crushes the no limit cash streets and, you know, usually plays pretty deep. I do think, especially having done commentary there sometimes with short stacks and ICM in these tournaments, I feel not that he's not good in those spots, but that maybe there are some players that are a bit more experienced than him in those. I, I have seen a few hands where I, I think maybe he didn't make the right decision. But um, when it comes to deep stack play here, we're talking 60, 80, 100 big blinds plus. I, he's got to be one of the very best in this field uh, among a group of, of great world-class players, right? So, I mean, that's his, that's his wheelhouse as a cash game player. So, um, you know, him getting a lot of chips in this is dangerous. It that really is, is. for sure. Yeah. I'm just reading. Fisher wasn't like an all-in pre-flop. Uh, actually, just looking at it now. Down to 62. They're just flying out of here. Which is exciting because it... 
deepens the uh, the average stack in the field. Average stack currently 56 bigs. I, I like I I love that feeling though when you're like in a tournament and you just you just playing just playing a couple hands. <laughs> 20 minutes later, look up, boom, the numbers dropping. Great, no problem. Other people out. Let's go. Until it's you, of course. And there are days when it never is you. Yeah. You win the tournament. And well, I mean, those rare that days. doesn't happen that often. But no, there are days not. where it ends and you bag up. You know, that happens quite frequently. Yeah. The days where it, you're just the last one with all the chips, I mean, you know. Winning tournaments is hard. <laughs> it's no, no matter who you are, how good you are, it doesn't really happen that often. Definitely, if you're really good, it happens a little bit more often than if you're not, but that's only a little bit more often. Yes, the leaderboard, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> it is the Triton Poker Plus app again. Must download. If you are following this without using the app, you are a stone cold sucker. You look around the room and who's the sucker? It's you, you don't have the app. Get your shit together, download the app, must use. I'm sorry, just turn off the stream right now if you don't have the app, I just don't even want you to listen to me, I can't take it anymore. This app is too good. The players themselves are like, this app is the best thing that's ever happened to tournament poker, we have to use it. We're using it in the commentary booth and you have access to the exact same thing we're using. Like, why wouldn't you use it? I don't understand. I got to stop because my autistic brain is literally exploding at the thought of you not using the app at home. Back to the action. Oh, man. I see you take a sip of coffee. <laughs> what, what did they put in there, Brian? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Something. Something in the coffee. Uh, yeah, before, before this coffee, I had a little bit less energy, but <laughs> I'm ready to run a marathon right now. Let's go. He's strapped in for the rest of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Triton Poker Plus is the app. All right. Artistic brain chat. Artistic. A-R-T-I-S-T-I-C. Here we are, Laszlo Boitas. We haven't seen too much of him so far in the 200K, but for those that don't know, this man is a straight-up PLO cash game killer Pairs in the coin ribbon invitational and competition the hands are on. All pairs on a 15 minute break. That's all pairs in the coin ribbon invitational. 15 minute break and competition the hands are on. Remind all pairs to sell off your 500 chips before you leave for your break, please. So, what about the 30% there on the turn? Yes. Trying to fold out exactly these types of hands, but Patahi going nowhere with the ace king. Players prepare for break. Five of spades. Leon misses his flush draw. Stone bottom of range with just six high. Is reaching for chips. 160k out there. I think. I feel like this is going to work.
ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome back to the Merit Royal Hotel and Casino. A little treat for you Triton fans out there in the form of a 501k high stakes cash game with this lineup. And my name is Henry Kilbane, joined by none other than a bit of a cash game specialist himself, Mr. Brian Rust, in this fine hour. Pleasure to be here with you, Henry. This is, uh, this is a bit of a treat, not just for the viewers at home, but for us as well to dissect some 200 big blind, 150 big blind cash game hands. Oh yeah, uh, definitely nice to mix it up. I think this is actually the first time I've done a cash game with Triton. It's been only tournaments so far, so kind of cool. <laughs> I think it <laughs> looks like every basically we're 100 big blinds deep, at least for now. Everybody bought in 100k sans one player who has 150k, which, of course, that extra 50k, at least for the time being, not going to play versus anyone. And Makita goes with the 6x 2k 12k, 3 bet sizing. Yeah, out the small. You'll see now that they're deep, a lot, a lot of kind of larger sizings and spots like that, as opposed to the tournament stuff you're used to. Thank you. And this hand most likely going to be over and done with, although Hanavia does have two overs in the Ten of Hearts. Yeah, Ten of Hearts, Ace of Diamonds, and versus a bet this small, I think it finds a continue. and just bangs out that 10, no problem. 41,000 in the middle already. Vance with the black ace king. Yeah, and it's just kind of a dicey spot here. It's pretty tricky to navigate because, I mean, you have the nut no pair, and, you know, yeah, if your opponent flopped a pair, you're behind. The 10 can hit some of your opponent's range, but not a ton. But, you know, not only is there the flop flush draw, but the backdoor flush draw came in. So, you know, you're ahead of a lot of draws now. So it's tricky to navigate because, you know, obviously I think it would be a pretty easy call here, honestly, with Ace King High if the hand was over when you called, which doesn't make a ton of sense because you know, then semi-bluffs wouldn't be semi-bluffing. But, um, you know, when you call here, you have to factor in the fact that, hey, you know, if if my opponent can't be ace high on the river, he very well might bluff. If my opponent has a good hand, he might be value betting. And it makes, you know, so you're not just calling this 22K and getting to showdown. There, there's that threat of a river bet, which, you know, you call, there's 85K in the middle. You're talking about calling another 58k on the river. Kita thinking things through with the ace king height. As Brian has oh, reverse engineered a lot of his thought process. That's the decision here, right, Brian? Yeah. A cool turn. Have to call an additional 58 on the river with just ace high. Yeah, if my opponent is drawing, I, I won't know exactly which one. Again, two flush draws. So it's one of those spots where it hurts a little bit to lay it down, knowing that kind of immediately you're probably getting the right price. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's kind of like you're putting in 80 there because you really got to count the river quite a bit. I mean, there will be sometimes you get a check back and occasionally you have the best hand pretty often. Your opponent might check back a weak value hand. They feel like they can't get a third street of value from. So the lineup for this 501k. Boris Way, Boss Man, Paul Poit. Hanavia, who we just saw, Saladin Badir, Elias, who ran deep in the 200k. Jungleman is set to join as well, if not 
already in the mix. Chris Brewer and Makita. We'll see if Jungle shows up. And Badir, the one guy who bought in for more than 100k, we can see it, that 150k uh, starting stack. Yeah, I honestly don't know much about him. I, I've seen him a, a few times, not only here in Cyprus at the Triton Super High Roller Series, but just in a bunch of high rollers around the world. Like I've seen him run deep. I believe he built beat Phil Helmuth heads up for a bracelet oh, really? in Rosvedov in like a 50k high roller. And yeah, it just seems to be very consistently involved in some of the higher stakes, at least from what I've seen, but don't know much of him outside of that. Ah, oh, we have a 2K straddle here. Once you call, is it so easy? Yeah, sure. That's what we do the last two pressure. Batsy Akowski here, in in my opinion, Excuse deciding soda, um, between double. call and, and three bet, and comes with three bet, S makes a lot of sense. It type of spot where he puts pressure, does pretty well against some hands that might call, such as Brewers. Probably folds to the four bet jam, I would imagine. Lower that stack to pot ratio, just pretty much try to flop top pair, get the rest oh, in. Uh -huh. We have a stack of 100. Right? 100 yeah. Back to back three bet pots involving that man. Peter Batsiakowski. Both players flopping a gut shot. Brewer with backdoor spades. Bats with running hearts. <laughs> What's the sizing here, Brian? <laughs> SPR, like what? Maybe. Sub two? Yeah, I don't. The bad Ziakowski, if he bets, will not fold. <laughs> right, because he actually performs very well against some draws, like King Jack, Queen Jack. <laughs> um, and, you know, he's doing fine against 10x hands that right. don't, don't dominate him. So, you know, his de he's kind of deciding now, like, you know, if I bet what size. But it, it's a spot, yeah. If, if he's betting, he's not folding. So he's down betting here. I think he maybe feels that down oh, bets can get some ace yeah. of X hands still to fold. I will. Right? Like, well, what if Brewer yeah, has, like, the one, ace right? eight of diamonds or, you know, ace five of clubs? Still put some pressure on those. Maybe entice a check raise from a queen jack. A little yeah, bit yeah, multi-purpose. Huh? Yeah, no Makes more, sense yeah. with his range, perhaps, he feels well, yeah, 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 to down yeah, bet. Yeah, no and well, Brewer turning the straight. That's Yakowski turning top pair. The king high flush draw. 57.5 in the middle, 53k behind. Interesting spot for Bads here. He is ahead of Queen Jack, behind King Jack. The queen now, he beating all flopped pairs. He's got the king of hearts, very relevant card. And he definitely has some hands like ace king and ace jack, which would love to semi bluff here. You know, so what do you balance out your range with by betting for value? Do those hands that are worse than you call, though, like the 9x, the 10x? Blocking Queen Jack of Spades. These types of holdings. That's deciding that his hand can play multiple streets. Coming with another small barrel on the turn. Yeah, perhaps feeling that it's nice to do this because you can, like, bet fold the Ace King or Ace Jack with no heart, right? So this is a size that makes is really good for those hands in terms of um, when you're bluffing or semi-bluffing. The 
Brewer deciding between Holland. just call or jam. Comes with jam. How much is it? Ah. <laughs> not getting away. Yeah, like, I'm not pushing this shit far. What a disaster. 63. What is it? 63. Should be 73. 73? Yeah, which he doesn't even yeah. have. He only has 33. Yeah, we've been playing like one. Oh, yeah. 36 days. Maybe he has more than 33k yeah, behind. It's hard. Flashes, no flashes, set. Yeah, that's a good point, bro. Maybe maybe he added on like yeah. 50 that we just didn't know about. In as long as I'm not gonna fold. Get shown the king jack. See, he's live. They're gonna run it twice. Hmm? You better flop. Yeah, 10k. Flop because. Run the queen of hearts. Uh, are we allowed to run it twice? Uh, yeah, twice. Yeah, twice. Yeah, twice. Yeah, yeah, twice. Sure. twice. Okay. Boss man saying it's fine. Run it twice, chaps. Jack. Not asking for much. There we go. Calling for a chop. We're going to win at least half the pot. First all-in of this cash game session, and he's going to scoop. Four of spades, ten of spades. Yeah, and I think the graphic is wrong in yeah. terms of the minus 80 plus 83.5 because it looks like Makita could could pay off the full 73k on the river. So yeah, you have 17 pre, 10. Yeah, 100k. Yeah, 100k. 200k yeah, pot, I believe. So 200k yeah. pot. And I'm taking 100k more. What a start. <laughs> What a turn. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Are you amazing the worst turn? Oh. oh, strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like those blues are 5k. That's what I thought, yeah. Maybe the reds are 1k <laughs> and the, the <laughs> white, <laughs> yellow <laughs> chips are 500. <laughs> right. Like, I, all of a sudden, I woke up on a flop, and there's already, like, 40k in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do? Two and a half. Eleven? And Talvidi did well in the... 200k coin rivet invitational on the vip side uh, is actually yeah. quite the experienced cash I'm game player had gotten in on the <laughs> vip side because he essentially has no tournament experience but we should maybe see him no. right at home here no. in his uh, usual streets playing a cash game Damn. that's hikowski brian involved in three three bet pots in a row even Fine. announced he's trying to chase his money back And we're going small, folks. Ooh. And is the FOMO kicked in yet, Brian? Oh yeah, I mean the no, FOMO was biggest. Yeah, FOMO was years. biggest during the uh, coin rivet oh. invitation, <laughs> for sure. You live in Tokyo? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. What are you doing there? Uh, my wife is from uh, Diapak. Yes. Yeah. We are very close to city with your wife. I'm really? from Mardin. 
Mardin, oh yeah. wow, it's so nice place. Yeah, I've been wanting to visit. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. You, you been? Sorry? You been before? It's a bit re less uh, uh, rambunctious no, than last time we played I together. Really it's right? a bit uh, less uh, rambunctious than last time from, we played uh, together. Oh, yeah, yeah, you. How's Turkish? Call in jungle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What did you do? Tom's drunk. That was not really awesome. Oh, no, perfect. <laughs> We're going to move to Istanbul. So. Good, Istanbul is better. Where else? Uh, What's your I name? don't know. Elias. Elias. Nice. Probably some better value, yes, but yeah. Me too, bro. I had fun, so. Friends being made. It's 501k. Seeing a lot of love in the chat for this cash game. If you are enjoying this coverage, obviously, go ahead and share it to social media, don't forget to tag us, let us know who your favourite player at the table is, who you're rooting for. That did make it a little bit off. I thought there was a real chance, I was just going to walk at one hand. Yeah, I quite like it. Didn't you get that at one hand? I didn't get, nah. I didn't get any. Bossman coming with the check on the King 5-5. Five five. Yeah, pretty impressive that Carlton managed to shoot 2 million up in 30 million or something. Yeah, that was, he, did, he did it. Decent one. Yeah, yeah, I, uh... I've actually got the whiskey ball with him before this. He's playing short deck right now for the first time. Wonderlawn. Starting the hand off for 120 bigs effective. Oh, sorry, 100 big blinds effective. I do apologize. All coming with three bet okay. under the gun V plus one. Straight up, is it? No. 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 <laughs> New style. Chris. <laughs> Tournament player. Paul looked offended at the min race. <laughs> Probably wouldn't happen if I was not sitting here. Running a little shooty G range today. That's currently down 100k. Six hands in after turning top pair against Brewers. Turn straight. Horace, a pretty speculative cutoff open here. 6 5 offsuits. Wide. This one, ah, uh, 5,000. Can I get another piece, please? If he doesn't have enough credit, you're I'll late credit, is it? Yeah, right. No, no, I'm not, I'm not in trouble. Up number. to five, okay. okay. Enough, five, right? <laughs> Mr. Poe, if I need, may I take us? <laughs> <laughs> so, Badzi Akowski oh, just oh. asking Paul if it's okay. <laughs> My old bankroll here. <laughs> Be careful, guys. 
You ever played in a game like that, Brian? Where <laughs> I was playing on, sure on stream. Hey, pal, I only have 100k on me. Some guy just walks in and just goes, you guys look like you have money. Credit. Can I have any? <laughs> oh, you mean a game where somebody <laughs> lost and asked for them? credit? No. Yeah. Sure. I, I've looked seen at like, what? Before. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't I played in too many private games, but it, it's happened even at the <laughs> yeah, casino. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Cash games, which have, have been more of my bread and butter for <laughs> sure in my career than tournaments. Uh, they stress some slightly different skills, I feel like. Like... It's a little bit less extreme with this nowadays, with the modern tournaments, with the re-entries, but especially before when they used to not have re-entries. But even with re-entries, it's still, it's like, you have limited losses to some extent within tournament. This mm. goes quick. When you run bad enough, you're out. You play every hit. But in a cash game, <laughs> theoretically speaking, you can just lose <laughs> all the money you have. Yeah. So you can buy in, you can buy in again, buy in again, buy in again, and, uh, you know, a player's ability to deal with running bad, playing bad, whatever, whatever happens, just losing, becomes very important. And uh, I think much more so than tournaments. I mean, tournaments, the type of thing, it's almost like the most important time of the tournament is late. And usually to get late, you've, you've almost certainly ran well. Things have worked out. Mm. So it's like playing your A game when you're confident is stressed a little bit. Whereas in a cash game, there's nothing that makes you stop other than quitting. So it very much stresses your tilt control in a way like way, way more than tournaments, even with re-entries. Awesome. It's like a massive difference. And I think some of the like most successful cash game players almost uniformly have, that's like an A part of their game, like tilt, tilt or steam control, where you don't, you don't tilt, or when you do, you know about it and you take a break or quit etc so and that differentiates from you know i actually think you can find some very successful tournament players who are tilters but you just like never really see that with the top cash game players yeah so really solid point being made i mean you see so many people just tilt it all off for, for a few reasons you know C convince yourself that you're just running bad and you're in a great game and you just you're never going to quit because you're going to get it back eventually kind of somewhat Delusional to the fact that you're playing your B minus C game by this point after losing multiple buy-ins I've certainly been guilty of that myself where just refuse to quit and fast forward 10 hours You just look back earlier on into the session. and You're like, maybe I should have walked away a few hours ago I mean, it's about knowing yourself right because everybody's different to that to a certain extent But it, it's about having an accurate real Like self-knowledge and analysis with it. I know for me personally the way I operate um, in those situations is if I'm in a cash game that's like regular, like it's not special. Mm. If I start losing and I'm getting annoyed, usually I'll just quit because it's like, okay, I'm annoyed. I don't really want to be here. This losing, it sucks. And it's just, okay, well, this is like the same game that'll run tomorrow. Mm. So like, I'll just quit, take my night off, yeah. not be in the state where I'm annoyed sitting here and come back tomorrow. But if it's different, let's say you're, you are sitting in what you just said, the good game, then I know, like, personally, I'm willing to kind of buckle up and be like, okay, man, listen, this is a good game. This game won't be here tomorrow. Right. You got to stay in and just tr try to play your best. And, like, you know, I would say yeah, in my career, I'm a better cash game player than tournament player, and I've had a bunch of, like, big get outs. But it comes from having st steam control, knowing yourself, and, you know, I don't know, being able to manage that. But I, that thing you'll consistently find with the greatest cash game players. And, you know, you look at guys who have done Thank really you. well in Thank cash you. games over the years. And Thank yeah, you. How much do you think you sleep that, on that's average? That's a bigger part of their game. Series. I feel like you just play, like, to, like, 5 a.m. every day. Yeah, and then when I go back, I can't sleep until 7 a.m. <laughs> and then Same. wake up and play again. <laughs> that was very stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can never sleep after. It always takes me like two or three hours yes. after playing. Me too. a beer. <laughs> now, my Mofua, by the way, great cash game player. Mm. Another guy with 
really good steam control yeah, for what it it's seems, worth. Seems to, to yeah. be the case. My, my follow-up question to that, Brian, is how early on or maybe even like late into your career or how many times did you have to make that mistake before you realized that, hey, hang on a minute, like this is something that is actually in my control. I just need to have the self-discipline to walk away. And what you just mentioned there for me was like to kind of really hone in on it is this game's going to be here tomorrow. I don't need to win it all now. Like how long did it take you to kind of become that disciplined? Yeah, I think pretty early I had good steam control, right? But yeah, but learning to walk away, that was more, you know, as I got older and one of the things I realized, especially like say mid WSOP where you're just playing poker every day, mm. you want to avoid the situations where you're unhappy when you're doing it, right? Right, And, and, and you know, l losing, running bad in a tough game you know, that's average or below average, just seems like one of those spots where you, I kind of learned, you know, and I would say it wasn't super early in my career, you know, more like in the last 10 years. Mm. That's probably more likely early in my career to just want to battle my way out of I'm like all games. <laughs> definitely but it wasn't that. necessarily because I was a tilter. You know, I think I, I learned pretty good steam control relatively early, Ooh. you know. I. Uh, hey, 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 ones. But, hey. but then with time, it's almost like the wisdom of them, like, hey, it, it might still not be worth just battling out of, like, just being stuck in kind of miserable in a bad game. Yeah. Like, we'll just give this one up and come back tomorrow. See, boss man taking down a small pot, ace eight against nines. 20,000 going his way. So it looks like Hanavir is straddling. I'm not sure yeah. about the other players just yet. Please. Yeah, he's <laughs> always a welcome addition to the game. The guy that's just willing to straddle every time without being like, hey guys, round of straddles, which is also fine, but even better, the guy who just does it every time anyway. He's the type of guy who always gets invited back. Yeah, those are some of the soft skills that I feel like uh, quite a lot of pros struggle with. So just giving up a little bit of EV to make sure you have the, the seat year-round kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Another another one that used, that has served me well a couple times is... Oh, yo, yo. <laughs> I think, like back when I used to play in Macau, I used to go out of my way a little bit to play some pots and give action to the to the real VIPs in oh, the yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. One time it even got me invited to a private game. So I it was actually with Paul. It was we were playing at the win. And I remember I, you saying, I was, yeah, yeah. I just was giving action and just like tr like I was in position on this guy who was uh, bad, and you know I was just coming in all kinds of pots with him. And so he would just see me show down these bad hands <laughs> and stuff, and I, I, and he just. You know, got so he also he had a lot of exploitive stuff that I was trying to take advantage of with kind of goofy plays. And um, it turned out like the next day he got invited to go play in the Star World game. And he like <laughs> told them, hey, like, I'm going to come play, but you got to invite this I'll guy. He's bad. And like when Paul and Richard heard who it was, who they had, like super respected my game. They like laughed and invited me. I got to play, but uh, it, it was pretty cool. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, they think you're bad. No, like, I don't. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's like, it's not only is it to get future action, though, but like one of the things I think you got to realize is players get so caught up in like, hey, let me make the GTO play. And obviously playing certain hands, it's, it's not GTO. That said, if like, you know, you can like win a lot exploiting a weak player, especially like 300 big blinds deep in a cash game, you know, if other players at the table are going to let you get away with it, you can do a lot we'll of funky stuff that's like way off chart and have it even be immediately profitable. Forget about the fact that the VIP then wants to play with you because you're giving a ton of action. So it's not even just that it, it has to be future profitable. It can be immediately so. Talking of action, we're going to pick it up on the turn. Paul 
defending the straddle with the 9 6 of spades. Horace Wade didn't see bet flop. Paul Probe turn 5k into 13 and a half. And see if he slides this one over and decides to value bet his 9. Comes with value. And the straddle seems to be live, Brian. How long until. Uh, Antis involved, seven deuce game involved. I would I would call that some some kind of thin value there from the nine six. Interest interesting bet. <laughs> you get a lot of love, Brian. Oh, a lot of people enjoy. It. Tuning in to yeah, okay, we get we get to kind of dissect some of the questions that are asked of top tier pros such as yourself. Byron Rash just gets to come in and drop some nuggets of wisdom in these cash games. So we jump into this hand. Paul Pryor just kind of fold. Doesn't look like this shadow is live, by the way. It looks like it's uh, basically up to the players Perfect. at the moment. Everyone will have try, huh? you think in a short deck main event? 26,000. Uh -huh. What, uh, 100k? Or? Yeah. How many, how many did they get? Like 40? Mm -hmm. So they got like 40? I don't think so. Today it's the 38, rest? 38 yeah. and just got one. Yep, 38 is correct. It's probably gonna get like 20 or 25 though. Five. Right. Jason didn't play. Five. Yeah, I was surprised at that. I think it's a bit sick or something. You didn't play too, did if I get? Nah, I don't think I'm gonna play any short deck this time. Short deck, I work. Rusty? What? You're rusty? Yeah, I'm like just 4, uh, going home soon and trying to be a little bit less gambly. <laughs> well, this game is sort of like something <laughs> gambly. <laughs> a little bit less. Yeah. Short deck, you know, there's the uh, one poem that I won here, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, another skill that Cash games can sometimes stress, although probably not this game because I doubt it is, but like the the vampire marathon-ness, you know? You get those cash games that go for like one or two or three days. Actually, that <laughs> happened a bunch in Macau. But like, I mean, you know, it, a lot of guys like, you know, you can play good for eight hours or 10 hours, but hour 12, hour 15. Yep, yep. The toughness starts falling off. The yeah, they start playing pretty basic. Did you guys make it to the money? And then all of a sudden, hour so twenty, you're just did you guys make it to the money? In there, play? firing away, no. stealing pots. It's so it's fine. Something good. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Palm is all the chips. Yeah. That's good. Tomorrow we're just gonna wait. Until, <laughs> until Tom takes care of everyone. <laughs> there will be all of us. <laughs> Tom must be a hell of a cheap leader, huh? He would be like crashing a lot. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> last time I played a short deck tournament with him, I was like chip leading on the, my table, and he just looks at me and he goes, 
I promise you, I'll make a bad call. And I had no <laughs> doubt he was telling the truth. <laughs> Always to the ace high flop. It's Elias flopping best with bottom pair, so we're going to miss for everyone else. Ooh. Okay. Nice little turn card for Talvidi. Unfortunately for him, he's going to have a hard time getting action from this motley crew of hands out there. Note the probe size, Brian comes close to pot. Yeah, he, he wants to get max value from an ace, but uh, no dice. Feels like an incredibly under bluff spot and a difficult spot to kind of balance with that sizing, but hey. Yeah. Who cares about balance at 3 a.m. in Northern Cyprus? And we just heard Brewer and Makita talking about Tom Dwan, chipped leading the first short deck event. <laughs> he really is. It's kind of a runaway chip lead as well. He's got like over three million in seconds, like 1.2 or something. That's pretty wild. Can go from zero Triton trophies to three in the space of two series. Yeah. Brewer with the straddle. I won with the straddle. <laughs> easy. <laughs> that was easy. Easy game. I love it. The man, is, he's going to pass up the short deck tournaments because he doesn't want to gamble too much, but he is straddling under the gun and no one will hold him. Yeah, I know it's been a, a rough stretch. For Brewer, Stone bubbled the 200k in for two yeah. bullets. Yeah, and had the misfortune of uh, kind of misclicking a hand where he, I guess, he didn't realize the action when it got to him and he did something different than he would have. I think he just didn't see that someone had opened and then ended up continuing with a hand. He probably folds versus the open rejam. Right. Yeah, like he had oh, like that's... ace jack or something, and and oh, is that what went It was down? like a thin call, I guess, versus just an open jam as it is. But versus a min raise open jam, it's like I think he would have folded. So he was like extra tilted after he lost that, and then went on to bubble. I think it was a uh, yeah, yeah. That's pretty yeah. grim. Ran ace king into ace queen, like ten off the money in the main as well. Yeah, against uh, Alto Martyrosian for like a. Average stack, average, yeah. Average stack pot, I believe. All right. Look at this, by the way. Let's just, let's just dissect this hand right here, Brian. It's gone UTG open, boss man pull is flat from the hijack with king queen suit and it's Horace way with six four of hearts. I mean, ace king is gonna come with a four bet. And uh, I mean, I don't think UTG or hijack will continue and um, you know, Horace gets to decide whether or not he wants to gamble. I mean, it's a dicey call, but, uh, you know, they're deep enough that... Brian, we don't three bet the 6-4 from the small <laughs> to fold. You know, there's a saying the back bet. home, in for 18,000, in for 45,000. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure he would like to be a little bit deeper than he is to call like it'd be nice to at least have as many chips as brewer here to call that 27k but uh you know sometimes we gamble so let's see wh how what horse feels like here no oh, it does let go a nice little 24k pickup for brewer cruising at the moment it's 501k but like you have queens no queens. No kings? No <laughs> queens, no kings. No aces. Okay. Let's check. So no, some okay. no, this is check. All right, guys, let's guess every Jack, hand Jack. at the top of the game tree and see when he says yes. Okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
I say give it an hour and a half, Brian, and the, the 6 4 suited's in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, an hour and a half from now, that's called getting called. Yeah, too, too early. We're, we're only like 15 hands in. Yeah, and also either they're, they're going to be 200k deep or, you know, maybe Horace will be stuck. So. Here we go. He's adding on. I think he decided, man, maybe I would call this if I had 200,000. There we go. But I'm folding. So let's put 200,000 on. <laughs> I love it. Uh, it. These games are much more fun when people are deep anyway. I mean, you know, it's so it's fun to see the two, 300 big blind deep pots. 100 bigs is... I mean, it's all right. We need to get Jungle in here. Where is Jungle Man? He's he's meant to be in. He is meant to be in. But you know what Jungle's like. He yeah. Jungle his his brain doesn't work the same way as everyone else. Like Jungle will just disappear into the night. He's kind of like the Batman of the poker world. <laughs> he's just out there doing jungle things and then he'll rock up at seven thirty AM and do yoga you know, out by the pool at the Royal. Yeah. All right, here we go. A little small blind three bet. All things considered, Nines has to be pretty happy with this flop. His opponent bets quarter pot. And we're just going to call and see a turn card. We're in position. Just keep a low dealer. And it's not low. It's a big one. These spots always start to get tricky for the mid-pairs. Oh, wow. And he checks the king-queen, which is a kind of an interesting development. And now you have to think king-queen after check-check. Thinks his hand is good here almost always. And got to try to get value for it. You know, what do you, what do you bet? Peculiar turn check. Yes. In my opinion. Feels like a, a card that we would naturally double barrel some of our bluffs with. Still plenty of value to be had from these middling pairs, as you already mentioned, but just for the old bet check bet line. And it doesn't work in this instance. Yeah. Back into the action we go, seven-handed. Nikita currently stuck around 120. It's Chris Brewer off to a strong start here. I don't want to call it an exclusive cash game, but it wasn't planned. Let's put it that way. The Hold'em event yeah, yeah, so. on the Hold'em main finish today. It's and 1K ante. Some of the guys got chatting. So 500, 1K, 1K ante. Hey, should we play some cash? Yeah, sure. Let's do it after the short deck. Here we are. Telvidi decides to fold the king 10 off. Looks like that was six max under the gun, but uh, there's no ante in this game, right? It's just 501k no ante. Oh, so yeah, that's right. Range is tighten up a little bit. Kind of, yeah, with the min open on the button. Paul flops top two, turns the nuts. Sure. 
Ooh. Oh, he slides it on over a third time. Figures his man has Asex here a ton. And uh, we'll bet Ace is up for value, so he gets the check raise, which is exactly how this went. Gets paid off, Paul Poit. Getting max value from Hennebier. Someone text jungle. Seats open. Brewer's heater continues. Well, maybe not. Maybe I spoke too soon, Brian. I was thinking the exact same thing. Didn't say it. Oh, it looks like he's getting some action here by uh, the King 7 off. Now, Brewer might check this back. Aces is a hand that does check back some because there are no over cards but not always he comes with bet it's more likely to check on like queen seven three right rather than queen eight tray I, so I protect think, yeah protect against some of those jack nine jack ten ten nine type hands or at least charge them at I least charge I mean, them, they're yeah. not folding for for sure 20 percent I mean, my, my guess is that is, I don't know, a solver would mix there. So, it kind of doesn't, I don't think it matters too much what you do for it, like with aces, whereas, you know, like kings probably gets bet, like, mostly. Like, you could probably just bet kings every time. It's fine. Looks like the ante has now been thrown in. Oh, there's an ante. There we go. Let's get this game out of the muck. Horace flopping top two after defending the straddle. I'm He's Someone. under the gun. Oh, yeah. he straddled, yeah. And Hen and Bear C bets this, and on a board texture like this, Horace might decide to go ahead and just pop it up right away. And uh, this is the type of action I don't really think Ace King can take this heat, even with a heart. I mean. Three and a half X does just fold. Yeah, Horace didn't come here to add on a hundred K and just check call with top two, Brian. He's in there looking to build pots. Biggest part yes. of the night so far going sure. Chris Brewer's way. Turning the nut straight against Makita's turn top pair. For 200k.
currently playing 500 1k with a 1k big blind ante and an optional 2k straddle. For some reason it's showing 8,500 in the pot already. Flats a small blind here with four three suited. It's a battle of the low hands and on a medium flop. Do you like a short deck on a limit tournaments battle? Okay. Do you like playing short deck on a limit tournaments battle? Uh, definitely short deck. Yeah, I think short deck tournaments. Short deck tournaments more fun. Like you always involved, you know. I agree. Like the bub. The bubble's a little lame, but it's still more fun. Well, let's see how the bubble would go with a pot limit. It might be a very interesting format. Yeah. We did a, a one tournament last time. It uh, it went a lot quicker. The one what? <laughs> it went very quick. <laughs> it was 20 minute structure? That, and it just, it was just, I the bubble went like cashed it, right? Yeah. Or you even... Yeah, I, I max late edged. Yeah. One like one hand and then been cashed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember. It's sweet. Short deck tournaments have like tons of limping and a lot of multi way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Always multi way. You're just playing like two thirds of the hands, pretty much every hand, like from, like every position. So you just end up in tons of like three or four way pots. So you're like at least doing something. Yeah, you're constantly involved. Yeah. And like occasionally you just get to flip for all of it, which is kind of fun. Less fun later on. <laughs> so they're changing it to pot limit. I have thought. Is yep. that right? I wonder yep. if the board system could be used for no limit at all. Sure, deck is like going to be stalled with like 25 lines before the get like the two revi bullets or something. Um, they did it once for the 300k Super Bowl. Yeah. In Vegas. Didn't really go well. They made you guys start really deep, anyways, though, right? Wasn't it like a hundred blinds with like rebuy or something? Yeah, yeah. three bullets of hundred. Playing a three bet pot button v, or oh, sorry, big blind v button, end up being a three betting with the fives from the big and. Well, Brian, we are. Gonna see a turn. Horace betting 8k wants check to. So you with start the king three bullets of like let's say 25 bigs, but the blinds go up very slowly. Yeah. Before the stacks are getting deeper. Yeah, I thought something like that maybe. Could be a fun. Like we can just gamble it up in the beginning, but right. you like it'll be a little bit more play at the end. Yeah, you do like. Owl long levels, but you stole with twenty. With, <laughs> like owl long levels, but you stole with thirty bigs. You got Seven here with when we were drawing for seats like so many pros King High. <laughs> None of them show Makes up. a lot of sense. One of them wanted yeah. to play. Especially <laughs> no clubs. So you were waiting for too long. 
Where's the Victor, for example, if you want to see? He went to bed, I hold. Yeah. He probably didn't sleep. He's flying tomorrow. I mean, like Victor I, is the last person in the world who would care about flying if there is a, you know, poker game. Yeah. Like, he probably already fell asleep because, like, I mean... He probably just hadn't slept for, like, seven days because there was poker games. Yeah. <laughs> He's, like, ready to wake up for any poker game. It doesn't matter how long, how many minutes he slept, he could wake up, like, for... He might enjoy playing poker more than anyone. Malinowski? Yeah. Yeah. Just always in, always in there, <laughs> waiting in lobby, any action. Let's yeah. go. Never sick of it. There you go. Victor Malinowski. L truly loves the game. Will wake up at any time, regardless of the amount of sleep he's had. To battle. I'd love to see Limitless in this game. Yeah. I feel like he'd certainly come and spice things up. See open, pal. He's uh yeah, he's there. fun to watch here in the booth because he's he's creative. Gets in there and, and uh makes some interesting decisions. So it's it's not as easy to just predict and kinda know what he's gonna do. Just because you see the whole cards, which uh is selfishly a bit fun. Multi-way three-bet pot. Brewers ace Jack O against the two pairs. Oh, well. Hello. Ooh. How about that for a flop? For Tau VTA. Casual top bow. Sure. 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 And Brewer has to decide how to proceed. He is going to go with sort of give up ish. And now Hennebear has to think there's a decent chance he has the best hand. I mean, Talvidi, as the original opener, can have a lot of weaker hands, you know, like Queen Jack or like Queen Tens, Queen Nine suited, etc., that he's just closing the action with three ways. So nines could easily be good. This this bet makes a lot of sense, and uh, I think forty-five. This 45. is kind of a weird, weird raise to me in the sense of Hennebear isn't really that deep. Strikes me like you can call and get it all on the. 45. I mean, he's gonna get it all versus nines probably here. But you can call and probably get it all on the river. Be nice to let Brewer wow. behind you. But yeah. You just sat there with top boat. You've checked. Well, so you've raised your opponent on the turn and they come back over the top and but jam. I guess when you can get it all in. Hundred ninety thousand pot going to VTA's way. Like they just ran it once. Uh, go play game. Sounded like Hannah BSA is going to go and play another game. What game do you think that is, Brian? If you had to speculate. He's going to go play another game right now? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, the only other game I can imagine would be one in that the the room over at the other casino, the private room at Short Deck. Maybe does he play Short maybe. Deck? Yeah, potentially. I'm not sure if he plays Short Deck. Could also be a few spins of the wheel. Yeah, it could just be a <laughs> casino game. Yeah, we are within walking distance. Of the casino. It's like, well, now that that 100k <laughs> is gone or whatever, I'm, I'm just gonna go try to get even or even be a bigger loser and give the casino some action. Wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the first time somebody's done that. You ever done that? 
I have actually. I have. I feel like I learned a lesson very early in my career Same here. not to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, really, like, I was one, like of 18. The, one of the first times I did it, basically, I'm like, I'm going to go. I'm just going to, like, Martingale. And sure enough, I just lost four in a row the first time. No wins. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Lost, uh, I don't know. This was, like, super early. I mean, I maybe lost, like, 15K playing poker. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to Martingale starting at like 1k or 2k and sure enough i lost like 20k or something doing that uh and just I, i'm like well i guess i'm never doing this again yeah and i ended up at the time it was like the 15 plus the 20 whatever 30 i think i i didn't even have a 300k bankroll so i went over my like 10 percent rule so that i had super early in my career pretty tilted got wasted with actually my buddy was visiting Vegas, a uh, high school buddy of mine, Mark, and uh, he was playing poker as well. We got wasted after that. Yeah. Did some drinking. Lessons learned. Yeah, man. Like, I, I remember very early in my career. I mean, we're talking back, like, when I was 18. Could just never book a losing session, man. Like, I would be oh. the last one to, like, I, I wouldn't leave the game down at my local. And we're talking, like, a 1-2-5 game. Like, most of the time, it was, like, a 1-2. I've got like, I don't know, like a 10K roll. Literally lost like 50 pounds. I'm like, okay, roulette time. Go get that money back, you know, and just end up losing like half the roll. It's just, yeah. just insane. How, how like there are just so many things you can be good at in poker, but then there are soft skills. There are, there are emotional skills that you just haven't mastered or you just were never taught as a kid. Yeah. And then you suddenly have money from poker and you just... You don't know how to manage it, man. And yeah, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely burnt myself a few times. Fault. Somebody in one of the chats asking for you to tell your Romania or Shoot Bulgaria it. story or something. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's a banger. Which, what is uh? Uh, there are a couple. There are certainly a couple of bangers i'm not sure if the one that i assume they're talking about is yeah he means bulgaria <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> don't know if this is the time or place though just go okay <laughs> how we run right, no problem there are you some there's some podcasts good? out there on youtube uh, no no All right, here we go. I went deep in the Ace king suited. <laughs> oh, seven eight Perfect. suited. Yeah. Also no, gonna get played. Three, two. Comes with three bet. And now yeah, Jack ten suited out to the side. I mean, what do we do here? Yes. Yeah, but it was super Let's high. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Like and Makita not going to let this go. 50, you have to remember, with the straddle, actually, these these I, stacks, which 1. would 6, be, think, total, yeah. you know, this would be 160 blinds. Yeah. It's actually more like 80 blinds because so of the 2K this straddle. This 25K also. <laughs> this <three. laughs> So, yeah, maybe Makita four bets it's here. Uh, 13. 13. Yeah. 13. 1, 3, yeah. 13. South E.T. feeling a bit frisky after flopping top boat. Big pot to Bulgaria, guys. S9, King 5, River 5, uh, King. 48k, and I actually think versus Ooh, this size, seconds, big one. Oh, I think 7-8 suited Osmano. should continue. It's kind of, you in some second. ways, one of the better hands you can have here because it's not just dominated by the value range of queens, kings, aces, ace, king. Although, it's a dicey spot. Out position. He, he decides to let it go, which is also reasonable. A couple of pots, Brian, that I was kind of looking forward to seeing a flop with the 6-4 suited and the 8-7 I mean, that one, that one was a good fold. 
Yeah. The, this one though, I I, I actually think I like calling seven eight suited there. It's kind of like actually a pretty good hand to have. Now I mean, you're not really that deep, which is the, the part that makes yeah. it dicey. But I think I still continue with it through. versus that really that is. size from Makita. Mm -hmm. Bloodsworth. Makita <clears throat> currently stuck around the hundred k. So having yeah. <laughs> Lose a hundred and see open. The, the Danish man the went to play another game. Oh, yeah, right. Hope you're all enjoying this bonus coverage from Cyprus, 3 a.m. local time. They're all 500, 1k, 1k. For all of you. Makita, Brewer, Bossman, Paul. With the seat open, I mean, we've heard through the grapevine that Jungle's on the list, a couple of other big names. Happy to take a seat. Well, there is a seat open, so whoever's first on the list, I guess, gets in. Would I play if there was a Triton mix game? Yes. <laughs> I would. I mean, there aren't even really mixed players out here. It would I'll just be a massacre. That's, that's like asking a five-year-old, do you want to go to McDonald's <laughs> for, for yeah. tea? Yeah, you know, like, the I like to play mixed wrong. games with a bunch of really great no-limit players <laughs> playing games that I'm like light years better than them. Yes, sign me up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you want to go for... Uh, I, I, I <laughs> hey, Timmy, McDonald's yeah, after school? Yeah. 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 Let's go. Right. Uh, I don't uh, have any cash. I, so. I, I can't do anything for you, Victor. <laughs> That's some expensive champagne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makita with a nice little holding tense. He's consistently come with a 2.5 to open. That's his size. Ooh, the deer. Passing the suited one gapper. Some some wouldn't, I think. Something to note. And Brewer defends the six two well, suited. Congratulations, bro. It's good. Perfect. Wow, Makita. Yeah, you also. Just <laughs> smashes Hello, this. I mean, what a flop with tens. Even on, you know, even not even top set, which is actually better because you unblock your opponent from having top pair, which can put in multiple streets. But yep, six deuce in the muck. We were told you were asleep. We were lied, Cam. I don't. I don't. I, think so. I mean, they, they like don't limitless. even have a value denomination. They're just okay. like Triton color chips. So. It's limitless. Are we replacing <laughs> Henne Bear with limitless? Potentially. Is there an option to put it on a room charge or something? Yeah, just hold the room. You can just hold the room, right? And then just pay. Just pay when you check out. Yeah. <laughs> so those of you just joining us, yellow chips are worth 500. Red chips are worth 1k. For it. <laughs> Blue chips are worth 5k. This is, I would say, a reasonably interesting flop. I mean, Makita has the ace of diamonds and a nine. I kind of think he can, I mean, he's not folding ever. I think he can come with call or raise. Curious to see how he approaches this spot.
And, I mean, a brilliant card for Makita as Telvi this ace is better for Telvidi's range than his. Sometimes you get your opponent blasting off with little to no equity bluffs there, but Telvidi has a hand that has showdown and checks back. And, I mean, given that he checked back turn, Makita can be, like, very confident that he has the best hand because if he could beat ace-9, he probably bets and even goes two barrels there if he had a hand that this makes a straight such as nine six or nine jack he almost certainly uh barrels the turn so makita's gonna feel pretty good about having the best hand here he might chop um i would actually wonder if he's downsizing here to even try to induce some bluff raises which tavi might consider Ace. Oh, just flicks in the call. Wow, that's an interesting call. I mean, he's literally only beating... Yeah, we'll play a lot in things. Like 6-5 and yeah. diamonds. I think a good one would be watch the And he most has pocket fives with a diamond, so a I, I the think call. he has a bad bluff catcher, frankly. Yeah, I, <laughs> I feel like that number could be real big. <laughs> Here's Makita. Could be. I don't feel like Victor is the nice club in person, though. Yeah, you might be right. He's more just like the... the how, how much is, did he spend in his, like, you know, biggest shopping day? Yeah, there you go. That's a good one. <laughs> probably more than... Probably more than the most expensive item I've ever bought in my life is. Oh, yeah. Like, whatever, like my call or whatever, definitely more. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I don't think so. Uh, my call is not that expensive. <laughs> We're suggesting some I mean, lot of things. I spend like over, you know, 20,000 on shopping. So. And it's hard for your car to be cheaper. So. <laughs> well. I don't know, Brian. I don't think it's that difficult to spend 20k shopping nowadays. Not with some of the, the heat these guys seem to bring to the Triton Super High Roller Series in the form of fashion choice. Yeah. Like you take the girlfriend with you, you know, Chanel bag, that's that's six, seven bills right there. Chuck in a couple of Versace shirts, some Balenciaga t-shirts and whatever. It's 20K. Yeah, they're, and <laughs> they're talking about a lot of things. I was actually, I mean, I'm good friends with Antonio Esfandiari and Phil Locke, who are the creators of that game. Yeah. I've played it quite a bit. I mean, Antonio obviously loves actually playing that game at the poker table. Um, I've played it a lot with him and with other people. It's a fun game. And for those who don't know, it's a game where you essentially ask someone a question. You have that person usually write it down for the integrity. And then uh, you basically, all the other people who are playing bid until going around in a circle till somebody buys. And then um, that line is the over under that's set. If there are more than two people, then everyone else takes over or under at that line. And then you see what the person's answer is. And it's kind of cool because you can ask somebody like, you can say, hey, this question, uh, what's the most Limitless has spent on a shopping spree one day? Uh huh. But it's just whatever Laden thinks the answer is. You don't yeah. need to know the truth. It's yeah. what somebody thinks the answer is. So you can just play with anyone and whatever they think, and it's it's quite fun, fun way to just gamble with friends, acquaintances, people at the poker table on kind of just like random stuff. Questions can actually be quite funny. Even I, there's been plenty of times people have played the game and, and people think other people's answers are so ridiculous they then what do side it? bets uh, on it. <laughs> it's, it's great. <laughs> Almost straight. <laughs> oh, Makita. Hang it off with King High. All right, Bats. Yeah, I've really enjoyed playing a lot of things in the commentary booth when I've done like giveaways on other streams. If not featured, it's a fun way to uh, <laughs> get the chat involved. Easy vote. <laughs> future, future day will always want to be a hero call. No, no. Yeah, King High, no problem. Let's go. Two, 
bad Zierkowski showing some of his quality there. I'm thinking now, like, I always give Victor this chip. Yeah, that, I was so confused with yeah. it. I was like, I was like, I want to see Victor go up and hand the chip to him. Yeah, like, I, I haven't thought about it myself. So I was like, you need chip and then wait. Like, this is, there is not even value. Uh, what if it's so good? Uh. <laughs> I like that. I like that. He just came down here, too. Bravo also, Mikita, by Thank the way, in Barcelona. Oh, yeah, You play you. very good. You call with tense very huge pot. Yeah. Bravo. You see, I always call on TV. Yeah, you <laughs> call very good, really. Bro. You didn't go there? I was oh. been there, but I play main and high roller. Oh, okay. 10K, 5K. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. I would like to go to that one. I love Barcelona. Yeah, Barcelona is nice. Yeah, awesome. big Barcelona fan. Every year is getting bigger and bigger also. Yeah. I post. I just he, like. He put one. He threw one out, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I saw him. Yeah, I saw you put one out. Yeah, I yeah. post. Yeah. He put two times, yeah. yeah. Did post. you grab it back by any chance? Uh, this is from him, Dan. Okay, then I guess, I yeah, I guess you grabbed it back. Okay. Oh, okay, because I didn't have the back. Yeah, I just knew it. I knew he had put one out. Ne vardı onda? 9-9 bende. Papaza var. Alright, slight delay on the Nasıl? Yeah, like, I just like they have all the um like what's just that name Gaudi or whatever, like the big Spanish architect. Mm -hmm. All those buildings are so cool. Yeah. You feel in the power. <laughs> the, you know, it's like so old. Yeah, the ch the church is awesome too. One that they like have been building for two hundred years. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, right. Game is slightly deeper now, Brian. Courtesy of the departure of Hennebier. Came with a hundred and left with nothing. And a couple of rebuys from Makita and Horace. Thank you. Seems to be the only player straddling at the moment. 500 1k with a 1k big blind ante with the optional 2k straddle. three-way pot where we actually see all three hands with almost the same equity, interestingly enough. And a flop where two hands now have all the equity. Queen nine off is uh, dust, although he, Horus is the one who bets at the pot. <laughs> That's the pre-flop raiser, of course, but uh, this is not gonna get through. Paul probably a little uncomfortable with the size. I mean, pot with a call, but just, I think top pair here, too tight to fold, must continue. 
Oh. That's an interesting card because it's one of the few cards which gives Queen Nine some equity. So, you know, will he double barrel when Mir Pot got called by two players? No, he's just going to try to realize. Makita going to be very happy to see that with 7 6. Now, Makita in a spot where he has no showdown value, but Paul overcalling on the flop heavily implies an ace. You are blocking your opponent from having diamonds, which are hands you'd like to bluff out. You're assuming Paul is the most likely to call you. So sometimes you just give up and don't bluff, and Makita decides that, probably deciding that the 7-6 of diamonds is a particularly bad combo to, to bluff with. Although there aren't many other natural draws that probably call pot on the flop mm. that don't have diamonds. Maybe you could say something like 6-7 of spades. Boss man coming for some value with his top pair. A couple of swift folds. Now we got a few 200k stacks out there, Brian. Potential some healthy six-figure pots. Oh, yeah. For all of you just joining us at this fine hour, we are live from the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel and Spa in Northern Cyprus. Try also. <laughs> little bonus cash game for all of you Triton fans. We ended things with Race? the No Limit Hold'em side of things. Penat Punsri taking down the 100k main today for 2.6 million. And it's Tom Duan leading the pack in the first short deck event of the series, coming back tomorrow for coverage of that. He's going to be going for title number three. All right, a little four-way action. Five right in the window. Now this is a spot where, again, Makita and Talvedi are the only two people who flop anything. Okay. Middle set versus a double gutter. The ace ten and queen jack, absolute zero on this, and probably don't have any designs on the pot four ways. And after checking it over, Makita going to be quite happy that someone decided to bet it. Now he has to decide how to proceed. Check raise or call. It's a lot of arguments for both plays. Tavite loves these big sizings. Three quarters pot to three opponents. Let's have a double gut shot. And equity against a set of fives. And Makita has decided check raise. And for a size this small, I don't imagine ace four folding in position. I mean, he's calling 22 immediately with 73 out there, so it's over three to one. There's very likely positive implied odds on this should you hit the straight, especially the deuce, and your, your opponent has a big hand. And if your opponent's bluffing, maybe you get to win the pot on the turn versus a check. Just much too much, much too small. And... The straight wow. got there, so now this pot will surely get even bigger. That card obviously more concerning for Makita than a deuce would be. The deuce only fills in the ace four, whereas this fills in any hand that has a four in it. As well as maybe if Talvidi has pocket sixes. So like the 5-4 suited, the pocket sixes, the 3-4 suited.
That said, there's still a number of hands that Nikita's beating. Any two pair, or one, you know, just a lot. Anything other than a bigger set or a straight. He's still ahead, so he comes with just over quarter pot. Nikita with 10 out swans, currently stuck the most in this game, down around 150. The thing here, though, is that after calling 25K, there'll be 145K in the pot and only 113K behind. So if a straight is good, if the board doesn't change, he can still likely get it on the river. And the board Hello. changed. Hello, three of spades corner pocket. And I would imagine Makita is just going to bet this himself after taking this line. He can, he can really hope to get, and very likely get called by a straight, which is is what Talvidi has, either a four or eight nine. Those things are spall clean. I went my board day, and they just look potential three hundred and fifty thousand dollar pot incoming. Talvita are going to be in a world of pain. Oh, looks like Bats is coming with one third pot. I would be quite surprised to see Talvita fold to one third pot. I think you can really only start considering it versus a shove for the full 113. I mean, this to me. Five. It's pretty easy to imagine your opponent doing this with the same hand as you, you know? He's full. So, yeah. Pretty quick call from Talvita and one of the biggest parts of the night. He has a full house. Five, three, three. Going Badziakowski's way, 235,000. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Interesting decision. Yeah, I was about to say, the river with the thought small process. Bet. Can you try and reverse engineer that for us? Like, does he just think that maybe he's targeting like seven, eight? Seven six yeah, maybe those types maybe of hands. He, he thinks it's especially likely Telvidi has some two pairs, even a hand like eights or nines or tens. Yeah, and uh, would really like those hands to call. That makes a lot of sense. Probably doesn't give him much four x, other than maybe five four, which we block heavily. Yeah, <laughs> ace three four. four is now less likely, and, and then that leaves ace four. Yeah. So we're in a spot where you want to get called by some weaker hands. <laughs> Size down. Very curious size to have bluffs, though, as played. Like, what hands are bluffing there? Yeah, it feels like it would have to be like ace deuce, or you happen to have some eight six overcard hand that had clubs. Yeah, eight six. Something Do you like choose that. that size, though? But yeah. So we do have a new player jumping into seat six. Now my Spanish isn't great, Brian. But I heard him say gracias to whoever it was that he was speaking to. Which would lead me to believe 
that he's from Spain. Oh, this, uh, can't remember his name, but he's, uh, he, I, be, I mean, I've been in the booth, I think, two, at least two times when he's been on the table. Right. I feel like I so. saw him hanging out with, like, Mustafa Kane and Dario Sammartino. I know Mustafa is really good friends with, um, oh, damn. This is embarrassing. Adrian Mateos. Okay. Ah, Brewer getting a cheeky little one through there. The 9 8 of spades. Adrian Mateos. He's a good player. One of the best. I mean, the guy. He, I think he's won like almost 30 million in tournaments. He's 28 years old. Man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he won the what WCP Europe main when he was 18, 19. Oh, did he? Yeah, like just yeah. straight fresh on the scene, just started winning big I, tournaments. I like his game. I'm a big Mateos fan. He, uh, he's an animal too. Like, not afraid to to fire off the big multi street bluffs. Don't know him personally. Haven't really ever hung out with him. But yeah, I would definitely love to talk poker with him someday. Be in the booth with him. You hear his perspective. He's whatever approach he's taking is is a good one. Imagine you just get a phone call at 3 a.m. They're like, yo, seats open, 500, 1K, 7-7 Been live for 6 hours Actually that's not true Live since 2pm local time I believe To kick things off 13 left in The 100k no limit main Crown our champion there at Punsuri from Thailand, taking it down for 2.6 million. They brought you day one coverage of the 30k short deck, the first short deck event of the series. Tom Dwan with a huge chip lead over there, by the way. Going for his third Triton trophy. Going to be crowning our champion in that short deck event tomorrow. But for now, a little late night high stakes poker. I think Ten wasn't what you're looking for. With the boys <laughs> in Cyprus. Shout out to all of you viewers at home. Obviously, they've been keeping us company, showing up. 
to support the series over the last week. If you haven't already, smash that like button. Drop us a follow. We've also been releasing a ton of exclusive footage with some big names like Jungle Man, Ivy, Jason Kuhn over on our Instagram. Really trying to bring you a more unique experience with the content we're putting out from these festivals. And shout out to the players as well. They always seem to be more than happy to sit down with us and Ooh. produce content. <laughs> I was in a big blind, right? Now it's small blind. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think everyone's like a little tired right now. Yeah, I mean, the button was just confusing. <laughs> it, it, it looked like it's on me, but... Right, chat. Some of you seem to know who this gentleman, Chaferro, is. It's my first time calling the action on him, but if you could help me with the pronunciation. So it looks like his first name is <laughs> Ignacio. Am I am I butchering that? So give me a bit of leeway. I am from the UK as we dive back into this hand, featuring yours truly. Ferro flopping trip fours, not kicker. Badziakowski flopping top pair after flatting from the small with the queen 10 0. Let's see what he comes with. They come with check raise here, no heart in hand. Does take it upstairs. Starting off this hand, a hundred big blinds effective. <clears throat> Sounds like I've got it nailed as Ignacio. Comes with the flop three bet. So this was uh, button open, flat, right? Yeah. Small blind flat. Paul folded the big. Check bet raise to seven k. Ignacio with the three bet to seventeen five. Yeah, and I think I queen ten. I mean, I'd imagine Makita calls this. I think his hand is too strong to fold right now. I think the first time you fo consider folding. Generally, it would just be on the turn if you want to get away. And a brutal turn card for Badziakowski. Yep. Undercard to the 10. Some of those hands we kind of mentioned. Some potential ace high, flush draws, over pair range advantage for Ignacio. Pre flop and post flop. And now Ignacio. Is Chavero is going to decide kind of how he wants to geometrically get all the money in. There's 42k, he's got 78 behind, so he'll probably come half potty. Yeah, a little over half pot, which if this is called, that leaves like 94 in the pot, and he's going like 60, B60, river all in. <clears throat> the decision here for Bats isn't as clear cut as calling 26,000, right, Brian? No, definitely not. He he. One of the ways to even think about it is, hey, 78K versus 78 to win what's in the middle almost. And um, 
Yeah, we can see Bad Sikowski just got right away on the turn. Didn't didn't even meal over it too much. A yeah, good fold, Makita. Ignacio Chavero, top online reg. And I don't say that Race. lightly. <coughs> Never had the pleasure of commentating him in the live MTT arena or cash game streets. But here we are, 3 a.m., Northern Cyprus. He's bought in for 100K. Jack 7 4 mono for a top top. Tavitia defending the straddle with the ace eight, eight of clubs to boot. Mm. Elias not going anywhere just yet. As Brewer turns top two. VTA turns a flush. Checks through on the turn. Talvidi wants to get value for the Eight of clubs here, he probably needs to bet it himself. Yeah, Burr slaps him off with top two. Got a nice little 4K value bet on the river from the Finn, who resides in Turkey. Oh, that shows, right? Bringing you guys this coverage for an unknown amount of time, but at least another hour and a half, one would assume. The game ends when they say it ends, kind of thing. Then we'll be back tomorrow. 30k short deck final table. Horace Way has certainly been one of the most active players at this table, kicking things off with an open from under the gun. I remember the first try Two to red the eights. Game. Yeah. For the first couple of them, the stakes were just giant. <laughs> yeah, I watched them, yeah. There was, uh, was like one million, one million wow. nine. Yeah. yeah. Every time. Well, uh, yeah. It's, Flop and uh, nizzles. Kane and Jason play like a 200 big blind pot, and it's like. 1.8 million or 2 million or something. It's outrageous. It was insane. Like the ones in Montenegro. Yeah. Well, Paul yeah. Paul is the huge one against uh, Tom. Oh, he has aces. I straight up. In, Mon yeah. in Montenegro. Yeah. Oh, in Jeju, yeah. 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 Tom. Yes, the game was in uh, like a billion of billions of Korean won. <laughs> yeah. It looks like Tom tanks for like 10 minutes and shoves ace queen and Paul just laughs and puts away his sits. I remember that head. He <laughs> thought I fucked out with him. <laughs> it popped up on my YouTube the other day. I tried. That's <laughs> here with the delayed C-bet. Yeah. Right. 
He meant to call, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's It'll be fine for Yeah, yeah, no, not. yeah, yeah, knowing it. Yeah, Yeah, dude, those games were so, those huge ones were so, like, that was so cool to watch. <laughs> it's such an outrageous amount of money. Yeah. And especially when it's in HKD, it just looks crazy. Yeah. Those are also the ones where JLB got all in with 5-3 seated, right? Sorry? Where JLB got all in with 5-3 seated. Yeah, I Honestly, I haven't watched the ones I didn't play. Uh, JLB gets in like 600k with 5-3 seated against Ace King. He just like six, five bet shoves or something. <laughs> yeah, he calls. That's right. He doesn't shut. Three bet, four bet. I bet all you. Yeah, it's something ridiculous. I bet and uh I didn't get the coin. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. He has ace king actually, so the <laughs> I think. Yeah. It's like a real split. That is yeah. Horace still <laughs> hasn't folded the like two that. red eights yet, Brian. I forget whose face they show. Maybe it's Robles or something. Robles. Yeah, they show Robles face, he's just like <laughs> yeah. He just like can't believe what he just saw. <laughs> It's such a good reaction. Have you seen the legendary Robo hand? The one against Aussie Matt? Yeah. Yeah. It's the best TV hand of all time. Those are the real games, huh? Dude, they have like, the sickest thing is on the tone, they have like a quarter pot left. Mm -hmm. They have no money behind. <laughs> and he managed to bluff him after he bet. <laughs> well, it does eventually fold. That Robo Aussie Mad hand is, that is fucking epic. Insane, hand. mate. Yeah. Insane. Yeah, Robles is a good buddy of mine. That that's a, that's a, like a super cool hand to, to have on there. Yeah. They've uh, him and Aussie. I think that hand and then the one where Scott Siebel gets the guy to fold aces in one drop. Those yeah, are like my two favorite hands. Epic. The one drop one is crazy. <laughs> Well, the aces v aces hand, or no? Oh, when well, Siva gets uh, four, fold four he bet versus, versus yeah, I mean, he aces just flat pre and ends Matt up like one? folding no, no, turn. No, 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 yeah, the Tobias hand. In a no, spot, he, and, and he gets no, like, no, it's they, they're it's like he, ten minutes and Siva's talking to him the and big yeah, yeah, the same. Yes. and then he check call, <laughs> check fold, right? Yeah, yeah. It was like. Siever said something like, Scott has like, like a aces, straight draw. He's like, like if you fold aces here, I'm never swapping like with you again or something. <laughs> he told him. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, and then he had, he had aces without the slot ball level. Yeah, like if you fold aces here, I'm never swapping with you again. The, the Scott's speech play was super good in that, I mean. Talk this, shut up at the right yeah. time. That was really strong. Scott says, because like they had to edit it, so it's on the clip. Scott says, I guess like they used to swap, and like to, uh, he had told him he had aces, and Scott's like saying that and at some point, and then like, the tank was like eight minutes long, and at some point Scott was like, if you fold aces here, I will never swap with you again. <laughs> yeah, that was against uh, Rankmeyer. Yeah. <laughs> Tobias Rankmeyer, one of the best. <laughs> Such an incredible line. <laughs> come out of Germany. <laughs> Only the OG German crew as well. I mean, Scott's just like you played this one, right? One another level, level, anyway. 2012. True legend of the game. No case. Oh, huge that one. Yeah, you were, you you were given team. three million in chips. So, like the first two, three level, I already won one over a million, so I have four million plus. Yeah, I, I played a lot with Scott over the years. Our a, our ages are relatively close. He he's played mix, turn you know tournaments in Bob the tournaments. Bobby's and mix in Bobby's room. Yeah. Other you know mix in general. Yeah, I I played a lot with Scott. When Scott is on his A game, he is uh, 30k. It's very difficult to deal with. Under the gun. Oh, you 30. Very, very, very top A game. Two colors. Okay, and the blinds are what? 10, like 15 or 10, 10, 5, 10, 10? Returning bottom two. 
this. So you you make 30 cold call and he made 600. Yes. Oh, fuck. <laughs> like 60 big blinds. And he just sit down like the third hand or something. What a thing. I mean, I guess, I guess you could fold. Ah. I mean, he would <laughs> he would only do it with aces. Yeah. Like, <laughs> versus and such a big aces. turnover. Yeah. I didn't know who, you know, that time. Yeah. I just, I you know. <laughs> yeah. And they all laugh at me. The other guy. Must be ill. Uh, <laughs> but it was just like your first tournament, right? Yeah. You haven't played much before that. Before they only play. Nasi yeah, does eventually yeah. fold the king high. The with, yeah, one of my favorite sod Is he either hands. has like aces there or he just has like 10 2 off? But There's no in between. <laughs> yeah, but he wouldn't like, you know, in, in yeah. the 2012, I, he was just. I, yeah, I, one million. It is funny though, he is. He like will just sit there and talk about like how everyone should play tight, and then he just three bets every hand, and he only has ten two off. <laughs> and if you if you like if you call up with like Jack, he's like, "What are you doing, kid?" <laughs> it was a special tournament. I remember there was a hand the guy, uh, a guy folded quads. Yeah. Do you remember? Oh, oh John Duranda. Yeah. Was he right? No, this is in like no, the first no, one drop. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, but if you don't. Like the guy is the guy. The this was in the first one drop. Ah, I was in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, if you don't, table. if you don't have quads there, and the guy folds quads and tells you like, how can you not be like, dude, you're an idiot. I got a full house. <laughs> oh, if you bluffed up, you're like, that was. What are you doing? <laughs> I uh, I final tabled the first one drop. Got, got one of the, of the sickest coolers of my like poker so career. Flop the nut flush and trick at river quads. Yeah, yeah. Big I pot, remember. like, he went on to get, get second. Yeah. Quad threes, eh? Oh, trick it. Tricky tricks, though. Tricky trick it. Out in Ibiza now for quite some time. Enjoying life. Casually playing football with the likes of Wayne Rooney and some of the... Top Man U pros. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Kicking it around in the sun. Yeah. Not surprised. Trickett's a, a cool guy. I've run into him here and there over the years, obviously, and always gotten along with him. Sure. Yeah, I had the pleasure of doing commentary with him a couple of times, and... Certainly one of those live pros that has a lot of the soft skills that are needed to oh, get yeah. invited to. I mean, he just has an open seat in any game, and, and there aren't many there aren't many pros that can say that. I mean, Robel, Jason Kuhn come to mind, but... Yeah, where it's like you're good, your reputation is that you're good, and, uh, but somehow you still get Somalia. seats in good games. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, there aren't, there are very few people where <laughs> that it works out like that. Better I I okay. didn't play any live high stakes. Paul continuing with the straddle. Yeah, I was gonna say I was like thinking you'd be under twenty one still in twenty twelve. <laughs> yeah, I was twenty. Yeah. Twenty years old. Twenty years old. 
I, yeah, I, I wouldn't play even if I wanted. That's why I fished 2013, because 2013 is when <laughs> I turned 21. <laughs> You don't have the same age, and he has like five times the amount of poker played. <laughs> yeah, Fish 2013 isn't a screen name you want to see at your table. Paul turning top two. Bats with a double gut shot. again here on the Ten of Spades turn. Boss man not going to go anywhere just yet. 15-5 in the middle. And well, what do you know? That's why you barrel <laughs> with equity. Nine of diamonds. Now I'm straight on board. Has a third time. And Paul at best no, chopping. Yeah, can always... <laughs> Why is the day already? Okay, do me out. I'm going to sleep. Tired. Ah, boss man's going to sleep. Good night. Good night. Good night. Getting some rest in for the short deck events. Yeah, is he still in the short deck tournament? I think he is, actually. Uh, I'll check now over on the Triton Poker Plus app. I actually think he's I'm pretty sure he is in it. So. Yeah, he is, six in chips. Yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, makes sense go to bed, come back, got a tournament to play. Yeah, coming back, nine left, six paid. Yeah. Tomed one with just all the chips. <clears throat> in fact, I don't think any, yeah, no one else in this game is in oh, the tournament. Bye, 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 bye. Isn't Makita yeah. in the tournament? Oh, no, Makita is, yeah. So maybe we don't see Makita stay too late. Although, it we'll doesn't see. restart until, what, 1 p.m., so. Yeah. Still easy to get seven hours in. Wild things I've seen. It was like. A few hands hit, by the way. There is a straddle in play. I was playing like a 5 10 game. Like oh, maybe not. It was like. No straddle. Just by my house. And some guy like tried to bluff me in some like 20k pot on a full flush board. It was like this wild hand. Uh, I had the nuts and I called. And like after he has 2,500 left, and he's like, oh, do you want to flip for it? And I was like, sure. And like we flip. And then he's like, do you want to flip again? And I was like, eh, not really. Like, I don't feel like it. And he's like, okay, no problem, man. And he just takes the 5k and he goes, Yo, Jules, and just hands it to the deal and just walks out of the casino. <laughs> he was like the son of a billionaire, so it was like no money to him. <laughs> it was still like, he was just like, he was, it was like, if I wasn't going to flip before, he was like, well, fuck this money then. <laughs> wow. Must be nice to be that rich. That's a pretty sick story. Jumping back into the wow, action. Do. Just four spades and four guns. Bet, little, raise. little four bet. <laughs> raise all in, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Tabby tit open or or from what? under the gun. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I was like, say that. Like, three bet the seven. It's like triple tech, so I thought like maybe there was a straight flush I didn't see. Mm -hmm. I the like, deer over called out <laughs> of the big blind. And interesting four bet candidate there. Yeah. Queen. queen 10 suited. It gets the ace queen suited to fold, so that worked out. Like a storybook.
with Paul Parr's departure. There is a seat open. If anyone is back in the hotel room. Well, based on the conversation they were having, I guess they should tell Malinowski. Limitless wake, will wake up at any time to play any poker game. I think this qualifies. Playing some 501k. He's somebody I'd like to add to the game. Yeah, it certainly spice things up. Yeah. Just right there, just ravage Badir <laughs> to his left, who's been playing pretty snug. Just open as if he wasn't there. Trying to ravage Badir here. Gonna yeah, work. it's going to be tough. Versus the ace jack. It's hard to imagine what Brewer's other card is. It could get him to keep going in this pot. Oh, he's laying a little rope. If Brewer has a hand like 7-8 suited, maybe he bluffs it here? Nope. Yeah, this hand is over and done with. Back to the stories, please. Although I guess with Kulpa's departure, the table might get a bit quieter now. First on the list, jumped in once the seat opened. As I wonder if there still is a list, because it would appear there is a seat open. Here we go. Battle of the hearts, but King Six mm -hmm. a little too weak, and uh, Talvidi is been pretty aggressive pre-flop. Yeah. About a three betting and just a light four bet just now. The queen 10 suited. He's getting after it. guys must be pretty tired it's been a long old week here in the Holdem streets Here's Badir just said he folded ace queen suited to Talvidi. I'm not sure if he found it. Didn't look like he found out that he got bluffed. 
Unclear. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'd be giving out that kind of information. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's you can find out on stream, but I wouldn't yeah, no, volunteer that. Now. I agree. Yeah, but my whole family. Huh? Lucky yeah, you know, last so five years. I yeah. But my whole family is still in Musk. Just yeah. like, just play what standing do you think about for a few orbits. Very good. Great. I'm thinking about Perfect. I don't know about Istanbul. Very good, but, but you know... Jack 9 Istanbul. off with the 9 of hearts here. Might find a stab. Not easy, bro. Yeah. It's, uh, Market double. It's the you have to either way. live in Istanbul. You have to yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. It's nice Etiler having the 9 of hearts. Suadia, very good. Definite media. Bluff. Equity versus queen and king high. If your opponent has a five or seven, you have two overs. A lot of turn cards such as this. You can keep bluffing and you, you still have no pair. As opposed to the natural draw, straight draws on the flop, which that all fills in. So I think Makita is double barreling this card. A lot. Feels like a turn card where we're going to see a big bet as well. We will see what you have in four bet put. Yeah, like pot. No, yeah, I was about to say, I wonder if like B150 is a thing. Yes. It's bet handed you. So he goes, yeah, B120. <laughs> and Queen six, which probably continues versus some smaller bets. Like this is a dicier proposition. Back to Istanbul tomorrow. Okay, that does get. Ignacio to lay down the queen six. Nice little pick up there from Bats. VTA keeping the straddle going. Unfortunately for Horace Way, not going to get any action. I would have been tempted to gamble with Horace there in position with 5 4 suited. Yeah. It's close because you got to get through all the people behind you, but. Yeah, it's an annoying one. Opens up the door for a three bet squeeze behind. But, but you're pretty deep in position. I think at 100 plus blinds, suited connectors get, get played quite a bit, even in tighter or tighter ranges. So, looks like the straddle is on, ladies and gentlemen. Just firing out a bet and taking it down on the 10 8 tray. It's been pretty quiet. 
A pretty exciting start, a few 3-bet, 4-bet parts for the most part involving Nikita Badziakowski. Chris Brewer with the double, Just six or seven hands into the stream. Outside of that, nothing too dramatic. Sevens. Oh, Nasi have got a flat in position with the ace jack of diamonds. Heads up to a flop. Well, 8-3 deuce. Two diamonds, one over to Brewer's pocket sevens. That's here with the not flush draw. Yeah, a decent flop for both players. Probably a, a a bit better for Shivero, especially playing deep stack. He is drawing to the nuts. Yeah, an interesting bet size from Shubero. Don't know. Wonder if it's big enough to get sevens out. Cruise can cruise control. Ignacio. Since Johnny just casually chipping away. Mm. Sounds like they're gonna play for another hour. players asking and there'll be a rematch
right side, Chevera comes with on the turn, Ace of Hearts rolling off. I just knuckle this one back. Ripper's trips. They managed to squeeze a couple of thousand out of Brewer. Brewer may even block that himself. Slides it on over to the Spaniard. Quarters pot. Feels kind of annoying having an eight. Yeah. Agreed. The story checks out, right? Although, I think a lot of those draw hands that have 8 in it probably double barrel the turn on an ace, like 8, 7, or 8, 9. So, it might not be that bad of a card. But, I mean, I... Yeah, Brewer ends up getting away. I guess he decides that the turn check back range just involves way too much value. Let's go, Horace. Bumping things up to 11k. Nice town beat here. Kind of stick around with the 10 9 of hearts. Flops best on the 10 3 yeah, 3. Couple of diamonds. Uh, first to Vegas. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. So you're gonna play the poker master stuff, you think? Uh, just, just the just the like the the last ones, like the bigger yeah, ones, yeah. 25, 15. Yeah, same thing you did last year then. Yeah. What do you think the chances 300k would be cancelled? Super low, right? It's not, it's not gonna get cancelled. There's no way. Yeah. It's just like I'm thinking, basically that's. It's the only terrible scenario. Like I don't mind to play. Yeah, like, it won't get cancelled. I mean, it could be, it could be not great, but it won't get cancelled. It's like those signature thing. I mean, they ran it last year with 21 people, like injuries or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if the field would be the same, I would totally fine to play. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll get. I think it will get more anyways. Because there was still COVID stuff last year. That was the first tournament we got. Sash just run out. Mm -hmm. Four Tau V8, Queen of Hearts on the turn, three of Spades on the river. Check called flop. Check called turn. Travel, you know, from basically from Europe to US and then to Thailand. That's a crazy, like 25 hours trip or something. Oh, I know it took that long to get to Thailand. How yeah, many I've done trips? that. Uh, just two. But... Heels? So almost everywhere is easy from Vegas. Like, traveling in my experience, except for coming here. Coming here sucks. Because, like, there's no... There's no direct flight from... There's, like, no good flight from Vegas. So you have to go to LAX, and then LAX to... Yeah, nice Istanbul, lay down. And then Istanbul to Cyprus. Our ETA. A lot. Or a swimming. 121k pot. Didn't they had like a private jet for the group? 
They were gonna do that for Sochi, but then Sochi got cancelled. Uh, what about here? They did nobody like. No oh, Ko. Yeah, Ko did do that last time, but like, he told me the amount, and it was something. Oh, we, it was something ridiculous. He was like, "Oh, it's cheap. It's like 10k." I was like, "I'll just." 10k per person. Yeah, so, so it would have been like me and Julie would have been like 20k total or something mm -hmm. like. And also, it's the private jet's not easy because you like you like land at the airport and then have to go to the private airport. So you have to like get go through customs twice. It sucks. Tough life. Oh, Flying private, Brian. <laughs> or in this case, uh, why he didn't fly private, I guess. <laughs> We need something like Jet Suite in Europe. That'd be sick. Jet Suite's pretty, pretty nice. Yeah. I've actually just used it for the first time recently. The Vegas to LA. And Solid, man. It's yeah, solid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's actually like decent value, like all things considered. I, th I think it's great value. I mean, like especially if you're booking, you know, if you do, if you're booking like a couple weeks ahead of time and you get the Southwest like fifty dollar, okay, but like. You can't get that a couple of days before. For sure, It'll yeah. It'll be like 150. I mean, Jet Suite's not even. It's like, it's like 249 or, or something. whatever. Yeah, yeah. whatever. So it's, it's like not even much more. It's like so much faster. Even like we travel with our service dog. Boom, just let's go. This yeah. and done. Like yep. <laughs> I was like, okay. You just walk right up. You're checked in in a couple minutes. Grab a cappuccino. Yeah. It's like. I wonder why that hasn't happened in Europe, I guess, because it's just different borders, right? Whereas in America, yeah. it's all all under one roof. Yeah, shout out Jet Suite. That's with just King High. I mean, he's going to bet it. It's a hand that makes a lot of sense to bluff. Now, Badir, with uh, the kind of interesting all three options on the table spot, you can fold. You can call, or you could take one of these hands where it's kind of one of your better check downs and then turn it into a bluff. You have the king of clubs, which is a, a nice card to have to bluff with. I feel like you'd want to go kind of big here, like make it like 50. It feels like maybe Bedir's having some of the same thoughts we are as he grabbed a healthy stack. Whoa, and it goes with fold. Does eventually bow out. He's been on the edge, taking a lot of chances so far today. I was thinking about this. Yeah, it's cheap 10k, 10K yeah. per person. Dude, he, he does stuff like that all the time. He'll be like, come on, like, why don't you gamble with me in football? And I'll be like, yeah, okay, I'll do something small. He's like, okay, like 25k a week. Oh my God. Wait, is it, is it 10k for a round trip at least? No. <laughs> <laughs> you still pay to get to the. <laughs> I'm on a small blind? Yes. Plus. So, like, for two person, it's 40k trip. It's, that's hard to cover it, you know, like with your EV. I know. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, Julie, you can't come. I, I gotta go in the private chat with Kaylee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but here comes with the check call 10 8 of diamonds, backdoor diamonds, Thanks. and the bottom Mexico. Wrapped around that nine of hearts. Nice. Big poker community? Uh, yep, sometimes traveling Spanish. Mm -hmm. But there are Canadian, French. Uh, so, Soldier lives in Thai, right? Yeah. Yeah, Makita lives just down the road from us. And How Pika. far is it from Vegas? Right from now. Vegas, uh, before half 
directly flight, but now I can you need to make one stop. Ah, uh, yeah. You can get to Miami, right? Seven hours. Miami is so close. Yeah, yeah. One hour and a half. Yeah. Wait, where's that? Costa Rica? I'm not sure. Where, where are they where saying? Actually, no, Costa Rica can't be an hour and a half's flight from Miami. I would have assumed he was talking about going from Spain to Vegas, in but I, in I don't know. No, I want to. Had you, man. Probably <laughs> win some of the streets. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you. So, last round of the night announced. Didn't seem like it. <laughs> it seems like everyone's pretty dialed. <laughs> Chris Brewer, the biggest winner of the night, I would assume. Courtesy of that double up. Right at the start. And his straddle. Horace with the aces, unfortunately. Whereas, I say completely whiffed. Oh, he has a gutter. But I, oh, I guess it's on a monotone board, board, so. Much else, because that one. Turning a pair, Horace okay. snuffling the over pair with the nut flush draw to go with it. Okay. Okay. No! Oh. <laughs> Aces are good, my man. He's out there battling in the 200k coin rivet invitational. I had not many outs. 100k main. Now he's here in the 501k, 1k streets. $250,000 effective. Given that the players know they're going to be wrapping things up in just a few hands, see some more action. Talvita with the three bet has certainly been the most active at this table pre flop in terms of three bets and four bets. Bad's just going to call out of position against the Finn. How much play? One, I have no or? idea. One. 60, 70, How many blues do you have? Is it? I will count please. Thank you. 85 in blues, Talvidi has a hand that might start bluffing that queen. And 
Brad Ziakowski certainly didn't check it on over to fold. Talk about pinging off one of the most entertaining turn cards. Top top for Bads. Tavite, the pre-flop three better. Picking up equity in the form of a gut shot. And with the turn card being mono as well, get to just fold out some of those ace high backdoor flush draw floats that don't pick up equity on the turn. Four spades on the river, Brian. Tavite with just king high. Feels like a tough ask. Given the size of the pot and how deep Tal VTA is to win this one. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, think anything short of a two X pot all in won't work, and even that might not. Tal is gonna go for it, and uh, it looks like half pot, which has no chance of working versus Ace Queen. Just hold for a chop. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was pre-flop three bet. Was there a bet on the flop? I, I yeah. missed that. Yeah, yeah. Pre-flop okay. three bet, bet flop, bet turn, bet river. The bet is what, 35? Yeah. yeah, I mean... Thank Nikita's you very much for the $50,000. <laughs> chop. It's not a chop. <laughs> Can I get... Oh. More chips for the last couple of hands. I mean, that size, is good. honestly, nowhere near the amount that I think chop. Nikita buttons, though. That was not a chop. actually <laughs> considers holding. That was far away from a chop. <laughs> I wish it had been, though. I'm thinking, like, what? Right. That's the, you don't want to hear that when you're bluffing. Is that yeah. maybe, maybe we're chopping? No, pal. No, uh, we are not. I have a hundred more. Feels like Makita got out of the hole. Certainly feels that way. Has 350k in front of him or something now. That's. Don't think he's in that much. the pot being played okay. between Brewer and Ignacio. Seven of spades on the turn. Brewer turning a double gut shot. Trevorrow turning top pair. May see some action. Over the two thirds stab on the turn. A relevant jack of spades on the river, Brewer whiffs.
Just a few more hands here. This special high stakes cash game from Northern Cyprus. We're bringing you the final table coverage of the 30K short deck tomorrow. Ali and Randy are going to be kicking things off in that. Tom Dwan with all the chips Enough. going for title number three. Double. Potentially trouble for Makita. It is slightly deeper, by the way, than 96k. Added on an additional 100. Really bad card for Makita. Yeah, 14 5 in the middle. We do with a relatively small bet. Yeah. 16 into 14 and a half, less than half pot. Maybe likes betting smaller here because Makita has more quads than him, but he has more like strong value. He so has the overpair range, yeah. range advantage, right? And a diamonds. So if there was a world where Tavite had like ace eight suited and was value betting an eight on the turn. Kita now got there. 26-5 in the middle. Am I sick for thinking of turning this into a bluff or <laughs> I think I think so. PLO in my head, Brian, just yeah. like block two top two two boats. Here with the over bet. Like, if I was going to bluff here, I'd want something with the ace of clubs in it. Or five of clubs, like blocking ace four or four or five suited. Right. Like, because those are probably the two ways that Tavidi has quads. Because, I mean, I think a check raise, you're not really representing a boat. You're representing quads. That's Makita. Well, you're not value jamming eights or nines? Oh, yeah. I guess you are. Yeah. Well, yeah, no. Versus Talvidi, I guess you are. Yeah. Eh. Well, maybe. Interesting play, Henry. Maybe. I mean, the difference being, of course, something like ace high or pocket fives with the club. Way less showdown, I think, than maybe 9-8. But maybe you don't have that much showdown versus over more than pot here. This is like, what, nearly B... 26. I mean, this is like B130 or something. Ah, he does just flick in the call. He cut out some racing chips there for a moment, yeah. Brian. 35k looked up on the river and Tafiti wins some of it back on the previous hand against Bats. King Jack v Ace Queen.
Two thousand dollars straddle. About two hands away from wrapping things up here. Rest assured, plenty more action to come from Cyprus. There was a high stakes PLO cash game running alongside this. Uh, Randy is going to be doing commentary on. Kicking things off tomorrow with the 30k short deck final table. He hasn't folded the 10 high yet. The defending the straddle comes with check raise on the 8 4 4. One heart. Not gonna lie, I'm, I'm a fan, Brian. Shavero's gonna get tough here with Queen Jack of Diamonds backdoor flush draw. And we have a absolute brick here. Yeah, Tauvite with the snap give up on that three of clubs. I would assume would have seen him continue to barrel on seven, six or a heart. Just rivers the best hand. Ten of diamonds on the river. Posed as played, he value bets this. And I wonder, I mean, Chavero checked back turn. I wonder if he'll consider calling. I mean, all the gutters didn't get there. I mean, maybe he's only calling flop off of his backdoor straight and flush draw and pair equity. Well, it was kind of slightly big check raise to do it just based off that. It's very interesting. Okay, he ends up letting it go. That's why you add on 100k, even with four hands left. You know, you just uh, give, give yourself a little wiggle room. last hand of the evening it's been a long day has been mate it's 4 30 a.m local time stream went live at two yeah i'm uh i wasn't here 2 p.m so a little 14 hours worth of poker content kick things off by getting down to the final table in that no limit hold a main. And that'll do it. Badir wins the last pot. Let's go, Badir. Get it done. The short deck Good coverage game, Thank of you. the 30k. Brian, I, Brian and I Sleep. are Sleep. piecing Sleep. out for the evening. Okay. And we will see you tomorrow. Five cut. Tom Dwan. Let, let's just deal the board. Like, I mean, the Chip normal leading. Okay. What did you do last week? 30k short deck. Uh, no. Sorry, I need, I need to do this heads okay, up. Okay, okay, okay. I believe. You can do after. They're no, no, doing no, no. a. Do you yeah. want to share with me? Okay. I'll take your axle. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sick. Okay. okay. A little you blind. Yeah. It's just like five I'm card like flip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I understand you. But for but Brian, I think just deal the board. I am the it's button, always fun yeah, to end no? the session with a flip. Okay. okay. Little flip ski. We get to sweat this? Very good. I want to know who wins. Yeah. All right.
Come it's, on. Looks like it's only long range. Ay, ay, ay. ay. Well, all right, guys and Very girls lucky. out there, ladies and gentlemen, good night. Thank you. Henry and I are signing off. Thanks for joining us here. GG's chat. 22 uh, Triton Cypress. Let's go. You want to flip? Fuck, that's love. <laughs> <laughs>